Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome to day two of the inaugural Icon International Photography Awards. Thank you so much, guys. We are live. Fantastic. Uh, and this is uh, the first time we've ever been live, apart from yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so welcome to the Icon Awards. We had such a fantastic time yesterday reviewing and discussing all the prints and determining the winners. So that is very, very exciting. Now, guys, this competition is not just about winning. It's about committing to one's craft. And I truly believe that if you focus on the process, not so much in the result, you'll always win. Now, the process so far, so what happened? How did we get here at this point? So mid last year, we actually offered the digital competition and many of you entered. In fact, we got about 1,800 entries um, and how many, about 356 people involved. We've got 39 countries. Uh, incredibly were entered this year. And once you enter, you get a chance to actually get a score of, um, so we, we score the prints from 80 to 84 is a silver, 85 to 89 is a silver distinction, 90 to 94 is a gold, 95 to 99 is a gold distinction, and a platinum is a rarity, and that is incredible, that is a platinum. So what happens then? After that, we, you actually have the option to critique the images. So if you'd like to, in your checkout process, you are offered to get a critique. And for the very first time, we've offered video critique. The judges will actually be able to review the images on a personal device and all the annotations in terms of circling, being able to point to different things, being able to crop certain ways, all of those critiques were done. 400 critiques are done out of those 1,800 images, and we're floored about that. And the cool thing about that is that that is going to be live very, very soon for all to learn from. So it's a public critique. Your name will not be attached to it. And it's going to be a fantastic learning experience. And the great thing is this, this will outlive us all. Now, this critique engine and the actual website was created by a company called Critique. That's without the U and the E. So we want to thank those guys for an incredible job. Also, thanks to b and we'll also be critiquing more images on the trade show floor. So if you go to the trade show, uh, booth 1401, that's where we'll be doing all the critiques. And we'll be focusing on how we actually make the images better. Therefore, images that actually scored a 79 or under. Now, what you'll be seeing today are the finalists. So when you enter digitally and you get the top 10 scoring entry or equal scoring 10th of your particular category, you're invited to enter a physical print. We had about 98% enter the physical print. And we're actually seeing 240 odd shots being judged yesterday, and of course, and today. And we're very excited about that process. So there is so much education out there that we've offered about how we can actually improve on images. And today, we are celebrating the finalists on what they did well, what got them there in the first place. And Tony will discuss this process in a little bit more. So what's going to happen, you'll see a compelling discussion um, about two minutes each or something like that. And the cool thing is, at the end of that process, you are going to see and witness the judging of the finals. So we've never done that before. Traditionally, what happens is we critique the images and they score, and then you don't get to see the process of actually choosing the winners. So after they're all judged in physical print, they're gonna come over here and we're gonna see that process. Uh, and it is very, very exciting. And between the two days, we've had 22 categories and five divisions. Now, the judges will not know what score each print received during the online competition, nor will they know who the creator is. The scores are now irrelevant. They're asked to, the re to re basically review the images in a fresh way, and of course, the extra element of print is involved as well. So when the calculations are made, the winners are chosen, then we'll announce the winners at the awards ceremony, Tuesday, March 5th at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Of course, if you're here in person, we'd love to see you. Uh, we have an incredible after party actually being supported by Lead Savage. And of course, Nikon is bringing us the broadcast as well. So make sure you come, dress to impress, have some fun. And if you're online, you can tune in at 8 p.m. Pacific time, Tuesday, March 5th to actually see that as well. And speaking of an incredible iconic person, um, she's really, the absolute true backbone of this competition. She is a beast, an absolute savage at what she does. I can't imagine this competition running without her. 
Um, I come up with an idea and she just enforces it, she actions it, and we've got an army of volunteers which we'll speak about. But I am so proud of what she's done for this community and I'm in awe every single day. Melissa is what it means to be truly iconic. So everyone, please welcome my incredible wife, <laughs> Melissa Guiones. <laughs> Yay, we're here! I feel like this has been such a long time in coming, you guys. It's been months and months of working with you guys and emailing you and talking to you and seeing your images come in online for the digital competition and chatting with you about what categories they go in and answering questions and then later on seeing all your prints come in from all the finalists and seeing them in person and that whole process and getting to connect with you is really a privilege that I do not take for granted. Getting to see all of your work up close throughout the whole year is something special that not many people get to witness and I understand how big that honor is because I get to see such a variety of work and I'm so grateful that you guys trust us with your beautiful images and you submitted it this year into the Icon Awards and I'm just so excited for you guys to see this whole process. So thank you so much for trusting us and for entering your work into the Icon competition and for being here, being here in person and then also everyone joining us online. As you can imagine, the last year was uh, a growing year for us when Jerry and I decided to take on the Icon Awards and be solely responsible for it, that was definitely not an easy decision for us to make. It took us a long time to make the decision and if I'm being completely honest, if I said that I jumped in with both feet right away, I'd be lying to you. I was a bit hesitant. Um, but I have to say, I have to give credit where credit is due. Jerry never wavered. Jerry knew instantly that this is what needed to be done. We were all very sad when we heard that the print competition was not being continued at WPPI. We were all devastated by it. And Jerry said, you know, it's too valuable to let it go. And if no one is going to do it, we have to do it. There was a lot of implications to that though, and we knew that. Financial implications, implications for our time, how much time it would take up, our, we, our working photographers, we'd have to do that in between. And I still think we probably grossly underestimated how much time it took, <laughs> but we did it. And as you can tell from where Jerry was just speaking, like that, his passion, he's so passionate about what the competition is. He understands how important it is for photographers to have a place to learn and to grow and to get that feedback and to take that feedback and try new things. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But it's also equally important to have a platform to celebrate your successes when it does work. And so these ideas, you're gonna see a lot of things that have changed, a lot of things that have been made better, all these new features, things, ideas that Jerry has had for years and we've now implemented them. And I need to give credit where credit is due because Jerry came up with these ideas. I'm not an ideas person. He, he said it best, I'm a good doer, I'm a good executor, but I'm not a good visionary. These ideas that you see, the way we're gonna be judging the finals, everything that happens throughout the week, these, that's Jerry's brainchild. His mind is just amazing. And I just admire him so much for his ability to just see it and know how to get there. So if you enjoy all these new features that we have this week, please thank Jerry for them because they were his brainchild and we just helped make it happen. So I'm really excited that you guys here, we are in for such a big treat. You know, one thing that we really appreciate is the support that we got from everyone in the photography community, including so many companies and people that just came forward and said, we want to help you in whatever way we can. We're going to talk a lot about uh, the different companies and the different people that really helped to make this week happen. One of them, for example, is Graphy Studio. You guys would have walked in and seen all those beautiful prints. They're our in-room sponsor for yesterday and today. Graphy Studio is known for all of their beautiful fine art prints, their beautiful albums that are all handcrafted in Italy. And so they've set up some of their images and, and albums and wall art in the back so you can take a closer look at them. So I definitely encourage you to go do that. And thank you to Graphy for, for being here for both days. 
And then for everyone who's watching us online, like we've been hearing about this from you guys for years. People who couldn't make it to Vegas, like can we just have it online? And we wanted to so badly. So many years we wanted to do it. It was just so cost prohibitive. It just was not possible to make happen. But this year it is because Nikon incredibly generously offered to sponsor the live broadcast. We broadcast yesterday, we broadcast today, and we're broadcasting the award ceremony. So if you guys are enjoying this online, that is all thanks to Nikon, and we're super grateful for them to make that happen. All right, well, let's get into our first category, hey? We are gonna start with the portrait division today. Um, the portrait division is being sponsored by Westcott, which is amazing. Westcott as most of us know, leads the industry in manufacturing lighting products. They're based right here in the United States and they offer a variety of different lighting products for professional photographers. So this is the portrait category that we'll be in for the next several hours. Our first category, portrait division, the first category is the maternity category and that's what we're gonna start with. The maternity category celebrates pregnant people, whether it's individually or within a group. So you'll see a bit of mix of both. The important thing to note is that in post-production, photographers that entered this category were allowed to beautify, correct, or finesse the original capture, but they weren't allowed to enter composites. So everything that you see here is done as a single capture, and so then that you can keep that in mind as you're looking at all the images. The maternity category is sponsored by Homespun Heart. And I, if you guys have are familiar with what they do, it is absolutely stunning. They create beautiful angel wings. If you guys go out on the trade show floor, you see those big, amazing pieces of art. And they're angel wings that are created for your shoots as props. They're stunning. And so Homespun Heart is sponsoring the maternity category and we're so grateful that they've done that for us and now I'm going to turn everything over to Tony Hewitt who is our icon grandmaster he's going to be chairing the in the panel for the entire day but more than that Tony is an core member of the Icon Awards team. For the last year, Tony has spent so many hours with Jerry and I brainstorming, coming up with ideas, spending hours on the phone trying to figure out the best way to execute them. So we are so grateful for what we have built together. And so without further ado, I'm gonna send it on over to you, Tony. Thank you, Melissa. Hi, everybody. And I'd love to come and just have a coffee and talk about it. It's just a little bit too far. Even the phone takes about a three minute lag to get around the world. But it's, it's, yesterday was fantastic. Who was here yesterday? You guys enjoyed yesterday? Well, we got more of the same and even better. Yeah, thank you. And, and thank you, the judges. They did a great job. For those who weren't here yesterday, or maybe just to refresh your memory, that's talking to you, Scott, over in the UK, because I know you're drinking Guinness, so we better refresh what this is all about. This is a little bit of a different pro process. We've flipped the script. And just going back, if you go back 20 or 30 years, which most of you in this room can't do, but I can, Jerry can, maybe. Um, and when I first entered awards, you would go to this expensive, sort of put your print together, get it all matted, send it off. And, and my first print uh, that I entered, I didn't know anything. And I, someone said, take it to this guy, he knows what to do. And they matted my prints in purple and green. Yes, purple and green. And this guy said, these look beautiful. His name was Amanda, I remember that. Anyway, they, I submitted my prints and stood at the back of the room and they all bombed badly. And every single one of them, the judges, all, the only comment that was made was, you know, do something about those mats. And I slunk away and, yeah, anyway. The point is, back in those days, all you got was one comment. That was it. If you were lucky, many people would enter and get nothing except a score and if it was a 65 or a 70, you just had no idea. Fast forward a couple, you know, maybe a decade or so and we started to say, well, you've got to get a comment. Well, we've gone so much further than that now. We've taken it to the point where every image gets a, gets a comment. Most of the bigger competitions do it. But Icon, being at the forefront of all of these changes, what we've done is we've taken another step beyond all the other competitions. And what you're going to witness today, as we did yesterday, is our judges are going to share with you the secret sauce. What makes an image win an award? Why do they get to the finals? Historically, at most of these panel-type uh, judging, the judges will sit there almost adversarial. We don't ask them to beat each other up, but they go sort of pros and cons, negatives and positives. But what we've asked the judges to do here is say, these ones have already made the finals. This is the cream of the crop. Now, most of the people sitting out there and those of you in the audience at home, you're wondering, well, what makes an image get to this level? 
That's what the judges are here to share. We're very privileged to have judges come in from all over the world and give their time and their experience and expertise. We cover a, a diversity in lots of different ways. And I'd it's my proud and, and uh, immense honour to be able to work with these guys and the people that are going to join us through the day. But the panel that we're going to start off the first category with is Natalie Lassini from New York. We've got Andrew Yort from Canada. I knew it was not going to be US. Someone told me yesterday, look, I was a Kiwi. And I said, no, I'm not. They said, yeah, you're a Kiwi. No. Candace Kaushagen, was that right? Oh, there you go, practiced all night. Uh, Candace is from uh, Florida. Gary Hughes from Florida. And Nick Procredes, we had to bring someone in from Europe. Nick has come all the way from Greece. Greece. And he moved out because he was in the middle and we were talking about Greek roles. But anyway, that's another story. So just to break down the process, what you're going to hear that might be a little bit different to a normal judging process or session, there's going to be three comments normally. Not always, so don't sit there going, you didn't do the third one. Sometimes we won't need to. But essentially, the first judge that's going to speak, I'm going to hit them pretty quickly. They're going to get a chance to see a print and I want them to tell us what's the first thing that hit them. One of the things I've learned about award prints is that the the impact on a judge in that first few seconds goes a long way towards what that, that print or that image will score. And what we want to see is, okay, judges, you haven't seen this, here it comes, bang. What's the first thing that went through your head? What's the first thing you saw? Because you need to know what a judge is noticing first. You're so wedded to the image, you're so invested in what you've taken, it, one of the hardest things when assessing your own work is to be able to break down and go, okay, what is the first thing people notice? You've been looking at it for weeks, months, years. So let's get a chance to see what they, they see first. Then we're going to also ask the judges to tell us what are the strengths of this image? Why did it make the finals? And as Jerry alluded to, we're in a print process. We're now getting the chance to celebrate the print. And Jerry and I are huge advocates of print, as are all our judges as well. So seeing the print instead of what's up there, that's going to be great because they're finalists. This is going to be brilliant. And these guys get the priv privilege of looking at it, so you have to do yourself a big favour and make sure you go out into the galleries in the trade show floor and look at them later, because the print is perfect. So the second uh, judge will be opening up and telling us a little bit more about the craftsmanship, what went into this image. Was it the composition that makes it strong? Is it the lighting? Is it the emotion, the energy, the gesture, the posture? What is it? And the third judge is going to say, well, there's a few things you guys still didn't mention because there's a lot of good things and I want to add one or two more. So that's how we're going to do it. You guys ready for this? You ready at home? Scott, you got a new Guinness? All right. We're doing portrait division. We're starting with the maternity subcategory or category in that division. And I'm going to ask for the first print. Thank you. All right, Gary, you're first off the bat. What's the first thing that hit you? Hi, yeah, the first thing I'm noticing in this, the thing that impacts me the most is this incredible use of this eclectic color palette. And it almost makes no sense in the way that you've got a mix of certain types of tones, but ultimately as you look at it and it's one collected image, the colors all really work together and it immediately makes you want to lean forward and look into it. So I think the color is used very powerfully here. Thank you, Gary. Andrew. Tell us a bit more about what are the strengths of this image and why it's in the finals. I think it's a fresh take on the category, you know, bringing it into more of a fashion sense, you know, kind of a very commercial type of look. Um, you don't often see um, images in the maturity category you know, as a grouping. Um, so I think it's, it's a beautiful story about, you know, this collective of women who are going through this journey together. And I think that's, you know, something that is, is very impactful. Can you tell me a bit more about the lighting and the composition of this image? Yeah, I, I think uh, typically you know we see a lot of soft lighting in this category. I think the the use of a hard light here and 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 giving it more of a fashion vibe, you know, as opposed to kind of like just you know holding the belly and nice soft light and that ethereal feel. This goes to a nice high fashion, high key. This is about you know a woman and her body and and celebrating that versus just kind of holding a tummy in, in, in you know, something that you normally see. So I really like the, in, in, enjoy the, the psych you know, effect and, and kind of just going into the high, high, key fa high fashion. Thanks, mate. Natalie, anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, I just, I love the balance of the image. I love the placement of the individuals. Um, and, you know, as, as we said before, the color, I think it, it's really beautifully done. Thanks, judges. Let's have the next print, please. 
And a reminder, as Jerry mentioned earlier, that every image or print that you'll see today scored an 80 or above, because the only way you can make the finals was A, you had to actually win an award first, and that was to get an 80 or a silver or higher, and B, you had to be in the top 10. So it's not easy to make it. Candice, you went up really close. What's, what's hitting you first? So the first thing that um, really impresses me about this image is um, the really thoughtful placement of the lighting and how you know it brings you right into her eye and then it just kind of circled down and then you hit her belly. So those those two um, you know points that have um, the the highest bit of brightness it helps focus you to exactly where you need to look and that's really challenging to do well. Thank you, Candy. Nick, can you tell us a bit more about the lighting on this? Because it looks yeah, so, such a beautiful way of uh, lit the, the subject, the maker using the soft light to create the uh, highlights on the face, on the, the belly. Uh, but what this makes me even more um, uh, amazed about the image is the print quality. All the the black and white has uh, all the range from totally black to gray scales and uh, highlights with a Perfect toning and perfect editing. It's a good choice of paper, isn't it? Really suits the, the print. Thank you, judges. Next print, please. Andrew, what hit you first? The styling, <clears throat> the styling here just hits you. Like it's just so, you know, ethereal. It's just so, you know, vivid and bold. I, I really appreciate, you know, this kind of concept you, know, that you don't typically see in the maternity category. Um, beautiful from, from the headdress right through to the neck piece. I mean, that neck piece just makes me, like, give me that feel of stretching and, you know, which is, is I, I kind of interesting because that's how you feel like, you know, I would imagine how you feel when you're pregnant, you're just stretching from all sides, and I just love how that kind of pulls you into that. Gary, can you break the image down a bit for us? Yeah, sure. <coughs> What's really striking about this image is the direct position of the main subject, the squared shoulders, the straight on face, even the belly is very nearly straight on, and so creating strength in a maternity portrait like this and also adding to that styling. But what I really think is interesting is a, a very unusual use of lighting. So even though you have a straight on essentially subject where you almost always see maternity from the side, like to show the shape of the belly. What the creator's done here is they've used a very harsh kind of almost edge overhead light that's coming from like top camera left that's accenting the hair on the subject's right camera left and creating a really cool accent light around the belly. And if that weren't there, she might not even look pregnant. And so it's a really clever use of lighting in order to be able to pull off this straight on powerful pose while also accenting the maternity nature of the photo. So I think it's very, very cleverly done in a really subtle way. Thanks, great comments. Candace? I just wanted to touch on the use of yellow here. Um, it, yellow is very difficult to handle um, both in the camera and in print um, without you know skin tones going really sideways on you. And this is very well done in the yellow tonal range. Thanks, guys. Great. Do you want to add something? Yeah, just quickly. Okay. Thank you. Um, for me, when I see it the first time, it, I felt like a Wonder Woman, like an ancient god. So this is the, the gold glow. It's an add-on create the, that godness feeling of, and the expression is matching with all this presentation that she's feeling so proud, like a god, because she's on maternity. Like a goddess, yep. Next print, please. Great comments, guys. What did you notice, Natalie? What, what hit you first? Uh, the framing. The framing is, is beautiful, and the subject, her looking down, the composition, I just, I love the, the, heart, the vertical lines. It was the framing for me. Candice, tell us a bit more about the construction of an image like this. 
Um, this is just so beautifully planned uh, with the different layers of texture that are happening. You've got that soft layer of her gown that's mimicked by the soft layers of her hair. Um, and then just that little bit of color behind her to separate her from the other layer that's behind her. Um, I really feel like it, it brings a textural quality to softness, which is a, a really unique combination. Gary, anything to add to that? Oh yeah, there is a, a deviously uh, clever use of light and dark in a nearly monochromatic color palette. From the outside in, light, dark, light to the dress, dark to the hair, light to the face. So it's essentially a bullseye that goes right to your subject. It's very clever design as in, and just deceptively simple. I was going to say, sometimes simple, simplicity is perfection, isn't it? Just keeping it simple. Next print, please. Andrew, what's the first thing that impacted you? Uh, the, the, the question in my mind is what's the story? You know, are these, you know, reminiscence memories of previous, you know, pregnancies, births, or miscarriages? Um, I just, I'm really drawn to the story here. I think it's, it's really um, intriguing and well executed. Natalie, how, how would an image like that come together? Oh gosh, I'm curious. I'm wondering how the maker put this together, if they had a reflection. I mean, I don't think, I don't know. I'm sort of like mesmerized a little bit by the composition. Um, the lighting, I think, is really beautifully done. You see the center image and, you know, when we look to the right, we see like anguish in her expression. And, and you're wondering like what she's experiencing, what she's suffering. Um, the image on the left is clearly a joyous expression, so I, I love the, the, the trio of emotions, it really makes you wonder what the story is, as Andrew mentioned. Um, and I think that the print quality, I mean, if you look really closely, um, there's this interesting texture over uh, the right and left, but it's left off of uh, the middle. And I'm, you know, a deliberate choice, but I think it was really beautifully, beautifully done. Nick, maybe a closing comment? Yeah, what, I agree with everything that they've been said already. It's about the expressions of for the three different uh, phases of the, um, on the maternity. And it shows how important expression can be to narrative as well as the posing, you know, and just in her face. Next print, please. Gary. Your first first thoughts? Well, I think I'm enjoying the thing that in, is impacting me is it took me a second to figure out what it was. And it's got an almost impressionistic kind of design to it. And so it's an image that I feel like you could look at a long time and keep pulling out little details that you like. It's such a great use of color and form where you could walk by it on the wall and not realize it's a maternity portrait. And I think that that's a really incredible use of abstraction in order to do that. Thank you, Gary. Nick, just tell us a bit um, about this image. Such a beautiful and creative way of presenting a maternity picture. Underwater, and uh, it's difficult already, but create a pose like this and combine the presentation like this, create an X going from the top compositionally, from the top left, top right to, to bottom left. Uh, this is really, really great and difficult task for the maker. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, anything to add? Yeah, I, I want to speak to the tonality of this. I just, it's all these earthy, t uh, um, this, these blue tones, this, you know, the, the deep water feeling. I just get a sense of wonder throughout. And the tonality of this is so well executed. Um, and the way they've, they've kind of created this, you know, uh, almost Monet effect in the sense of, of how it's kind of blending together. It, it's, it's so well handled and well done. Well done to the creator and good luck with your the finals. Um, next print, please. And when I say finals, of course, this is the finals and we've let you into the, in, into the back room to watch the judges as they're going over these last prints, these ones that are at the top of the tree, to, to tell you this is the sort of things that we're thinking about. This is what's hitting us. This is why they're at the top of that, that category. And of course, straight after this, they'll be over there judging. First thoughts, Candice? 
Um, my first thoughts are actually about the, the paper choice here. It's, um, it's really interesting and unique. It holds um, the color very well, um, and as much shine as there is on the subject, the paper is kind of the opposite, so it doesn't take away from that. Um, it actually adds to it in kind of an opposite way. Gary? I think there's a really powerful use of color and texture here. Anytime you take cool and warm tones from opposite sides of the color wheel and put them together, you take what could be a standard portrait and automatically use that to create a lot of depth. In addition, I like the, the positioning of the face up into a blue light and then the belly into that magenta. And I think that's a really like clever use of those opposing colors to let you go back and forth between the subjects that are the dominant element and subdominant element. And the belly with those hot colors draw the eye a little bit more than the cool tone. So it's clearly, you're gonna end up enjoying this as a maternity portrait. But it, there's a lot really to unpack and enjoy in this. Can I ask you, what are you drawing from the posing in this and the gesture in her face? How does that add to the image? I think that if you look at the way that the, the leg comes in, you actually kind of create several, it's like an S curve going up diagonally through the image, and so you visually get to enjoy it as you read it across the image. So it's, it's really nicely designed in, in the way that it tells you what to look at and in what order. And I think that shows a really like well-ordered well mind and a trained hand, a great artist made it. Thank you. Natalie? Um, I was going to say I really love her expression. I keep going right back up to her face, and uh, I think that she's just exquisite. So I think the maker um, really prompted her. I, I love this image. It's, it's, it's like a piece of art to me. Yeah, it's so important that you connect with your subject, isn't it, to get that out. Next print, please. This image has a title, Bumps, Bumps, Baby Bump. Candice, you got a smile on your face. What was the smile brought on by? This just has all the impact that I personally love. <laughs> um, there's uh, the tonality of it, um, and then the mix of whimsy, just thinking of bringing in that topsy-turvy lamp. Um, it all just works so well together. Um, it's got a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of uh, history to it. It's, it's just, it's got so many fun things going on, but it's not overwhelming. You still get the point. Andrew, tell us a bit more. Yeah, I, I think uh, f the the you know putting this together is is very difficult. You know, managing these very two ends of the spectrum with the contrast of tones from from the light to the dark, um, managing the skin tone so beautifully. You know, and and these whites they're they're not blown out. They're just you know they're it's so well well refined and and the the drawing this into almost this Alice in, it's like if somebody in Alice, in the Alice in Wonderland world had a baby, this is what their portrait would look like. like fantastic. Yeah, well picked up. You've got the Cheshire cat there. Natalie. I, I really enjoy the position of the subject between like the round like objects. I think it's just, she's really well placed and it, it's so complicated but yet harmonious at the same time. I love it. Yeah, great eye contact in that too. Next print please. Nick, you're smiling, your eyes are going round. What, what what's yeah, hitting you? Yeah, I mean, like, this is such a great example of how creative you can be even on this simple subject, like, not simple in the terms of, uh, of the maternity. We have seen so many maternity images all these years, but the presentation of such a different fashion, color, great impact image of the maternity, it's amazing. Gary, can you unpack this one for us? Yeah, I think that this has quite a lot going for it as a, just a graphical piece. This is almost a commercial photograph rather than a maternity portrait. And I think that you have a really interesting mix of colors with the, you know, the orange, yellow, red, and black. And what's crazy is, is the contrast level of this, the, the wardrobe design. You never forget that as a, as a portrait photographer, if you're not stuck with, 
you don't go, the client didn't bring good clothes. Like you work your way up to that and wardrobe design is just such a high level of finishing your portraits. And this is very cleverly designed here where you've got bright yellow, bright orange, bright red. And so what's the logical thing to sort of make that curve of that body stand out so this is clearly a maternity portrait? It's black because it's the only thing that's going to be higher contrast and draw your attention more than everything else in the image. So just the wardrobe design of this, in addition to the lighting and the composition, is just made so that you're going to go past a bright red hat and bright red boots and a bright orange background and go straight to that body. It's just a really clever little way to make sure you know exactly what this image is about, and then you get to enjoy the rest of it. Really clever. Thank you. Andrew, finishing comment? Yeah, I just want to commend the maker on, on seeing this. Um, you know, we, we you know, always wish for, you know, better sets and better opportunities and, and, you know, they probably drove by this, saw this slice of light and said, I'm going to take a chance on something new and bold and different. Yeah, I was going to say, this could be a wall in a construction site, yep. you know, sand. I think everybody's thinking of a place they've driven by a bunch of times yeah. and haven't used yeah. yet. Yeah. 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 It's, it's all up in there. Next print, please. Natalie? Well, you have to just see her eyes and her lips and her expression. You go right in and you kind of just like love her. Um, you know, I, I kind of went right in for that expression. It drew me in. I mean, you really got to see her face and the eyes are sparkly. Um, that's, that's what got me right off the bat. Candice, tell us a bit more about how you make an image like this. I can hear you. How, how you make an image like this. Like um, well, uh, it's a great discussion with a client about who she is and what she wants and how she wants to appear. Um, and she's obviously very happy with that, leading back to what Natalie said. Um, the use of the chinoiserie in the background, um, pulling together with the dress is all just very cohesive. Um, it's lit beautifully. You still focus right on her face, but you don't lose anything all the way right down to her toe where you hit the little white shoe. Um, so just all perfectly placed and very calculated. Nick, maybe a last comment? I would like to comment the maker about the excellent use of paper choice for the print presentation, uh, plus uh, his uh, retouching and editing skills. It's his amazing. or hers or they, yeah. Yeah, quickly, Andrew. I, I need to call out the, the story here, the, you know, just the, the use of the chinoiserie, which is a new word I've learned today, thank you so much. Um, the, the fragileness of this, like I'm, I'm typically a bull in a china shop kind of guy myself. So um, the, the story and of how, if, if, if I can call to the shapes of all these artistic pieces and then how she's a shape in itself, but how as they're so fragile, so is she. So is she. I think that's brilliant yeah. from, from the maker's perspective. Yeah, good well pick done. Up. Good pick up. Next print, please. Candice, first thoughts. Um, so my first thoughts are, again, um, it's the uh, mark of an incredible portrait photographer when you sit down and actually plan this out to this degree before you ever get started. Um, this, the framing of it, um, I'm not even, you know, sure how that was done exactly. I mean, is it a mirror or is, I don't think it's a doorway, um, but we're kind of looking into, oh, see, I see that there's a camera now um, in the center. So I think it's supposed to be a reflection, but we're looking into their life. We're looking through a window into their life um, and that it's kind of leading us to the time um, on the newspaper, and that's actually probably the brightest thing in the frame, so I think that's what we're supposed to read first. Um, but it's a really unique story, old Hollywood glamour, um, lots of detail, and uh, very well handled all the way through the shadows. Natalie, tell us a bit more about making an image like this. Uh, gosh, I, I must say, I, I absolutely love this. My eye is moving from her to the camera, to the gentleman, to, her, to the husband. Um, but the placement, I mean, I believe this to be a mirror and perhaps, uh, you know, they used a remote, I'm not even sure, but I absolutely love the, the balance of the, gentle, the husband on the right and then the table on the left. Um, everything is sort of carefully placed 
the um, incredible uh, post-production to uh, bring up all the detail, like subtle highlights, framing, I guess, the fireplace behind. Your eye sort of just moves around. Um, she's posed beautifully. The hands are, 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 are lovely. Um, the S-curve in, in her placement, I think the entire composition is, is so thoughtfully put together. Andrew? Thank you, Natalie. Yeah, I'm, I, I, to, to add to that, I think the story here to me is this is, this is a self-portrait of a photographer in the 20s and 30s. She is you know, clearly setting up the stage while her partner is kind of doing his thing. I like the, you know, the, the ambience of him having a cigar and just kind of reading the paper while she's capturing the most beautiful and precious moment of her life. And you can't see this on the digital, but in, in the print, which I, I, I implore you to, to look at at the gallery, you see that this is a portrait, a self-portrait in a mirror, and the scene is so, be well, so well beautifully lit. Well done. Thank you, Andrew. Next print, please. First thoughts, Nick. Energy, impact. Such a beautiful uh, way to present the maternity image uh, with a different approach, like a fashion, uh, like a singer, like a so proud using uh, the colors at the same time, and the pose is so unusual. Even the, the way that the hair floating by the air, uh, so creative. Gary, can you unpack it for us? Because it looks like some pretty cool lighting. I, I would be happy to, because uh, the degree of difficulty on this is, is pretty impressive. Because gels alone are hard to work with, because once you start doing that, you're like, what's wrong with my camera? There's nothing. It's you suck. That's what's wrong with your camera. <laughs> um, you don't know what you're doing. So this is really, really cleverly designed. And I believe this is called a triad color palette, where it's like they're in these corners of the color wheel. And so that's done with really beautiful precision, where you've got the, the magenta and the indigo and the blue. And there's a lot really just to enjoy just with the color. And then I'm looking at it for a minute and go, oh, there's a, there's a woman in this. Let me talk about that. And I think, again, it's a great example of a very strong, unusual pose that's done really, really well. You have lots of triangles and straight on composition in order to create this really dynamic vision that brings you all the way up and back ultimately to that bold expression on her face. And then the accent light on the belly, because again, we're straight around. We don't want to lose the roundness of that belly. And so that's managed really well. And ultimately, you could have done really well with this image. And then the creator of this image goes, you know what? Let's blow that hair. It's like that last little flourish that just puts a bow on the whole technical little masterpiece here. And I'm, I'm enjoying it very, very much. And also, the paper choice in this is like the second character in this composition. It's just perfect for this to where you get to enjoy the colors, just the right amount of contrast without making anything blown out or blocked up. Just really enjoy it. Thank you, Gary. Natalie, last comment? Oh, the lighting, it's so complicated. I'm like wondering, is it three lights, seven lights? It's so beautifully done. The highlights, framing her. Oh, wow. I mean, it's the lighting all day long. What a brilliant, brilliant maker. I understand why this print is here. It is extraordinary. Thank you, judges. And that is the end of that category. So not, <clears throat> not the end completely. Yep, that's quite, yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna hand over to the beautiful Melissa and our judges are gonna get ready to actually start scoring. Thank you, Melissa. Yay, congratulations. Thank you so much, you guys. Did you guys enjoy that conversation about the maternity category? Thank you to our judges for participating in that. Uh, and thank you to Homespun Heart for uh, sponsoring this category. I noticed that, and she's going to probably kill me for doing this, but Barbie from Homespun Heart is here. Barbie, can you just wave? Guys, this is the creator of these amazing, stunning, beautiful angel wings. So uh, if you please go say hello to her and talk to her and ask her questions about these artistic creations that she creates for your shoots and for props. So thank you so much for sponsoring this category. Um, all right, guys, so as Tony mentioned, we're going to get the judges ready. What's going to happen now is we're going to take a quick break. It's going to be just a couple of minutes. We just got to get them logged into their judging consoles. Then we're going to reset over here to our print gallery. They're going to take one more look at all of the images, and then they're going to decide who they would like to have win the category. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. It's very, very quick, and we'll see you soon.
The Z8 is a camera that can do literally everything. Accuracy, precision, speed. I had the power of my Z9 in a smaller body. The new Z8 makes no compromises. Powerful. Magical. Perfect. Cinematic. If I had to sum up this camera in one word, what would it be? Effortless. The Z8 is absolutely essential for me as a wildlife photographer. It was easier to hold for long periods of time. It was easier to get to locations with. I love everything about how it renders skin tones. You can see every single eyelash. With filmmaking, it's fantastic. You can use it on a small gimbal and held. I can actually film 8K raw internally. This camera is packed with the technology of the Z9 and more. The Z8 totally revolutionized the way that I make my images. It's everything any filmmaker could ask for. The Nikon Z8 is the most phenomenal camera that Nikon has ever launched, and I think it's going to be a huge moment in Nikon's history. Thank you so much, everybody. I love feeling this energy so early in the morning. I don't know about you guys, but you probably... Uh, Maybe you went to bed early. I don't know what's going on. You guys got lots of energy, or perhaps it was a compelling discussion. Thank you so much, guys. Nice and quiet. We want to respect the prints in front of us. This is an important process. We are going to pick the winners that represent the maternity category. And uh, what a choice you guys have to make right now, because I'm looking at these, and I'm like, this is some of the strongest maternity photographs I have ever seen. And I've been doing this for 30 years. So judges. Take your time, take a deep breath. Remember, what do you want to see represent the maternity category right now? So go for it, take your time, look at the prints, have fun. Where we're at and how do we, how do we get here? So these images had to score 80 and above and the top 10 scoring entries of the category in the equal scoring 10th to be eligible for these finals. It's not mandatory, mandatory to enter, but when you, if you want to, certainly you enter the print. And now we have these on display and the judges will actually choose. There we go. The judges will choose and rank the images in the order in which they want them to win. And then we'll get a definitive score. The reason why there's three of us here right now is because we want to do an integrity check. We want to make sure that we've got the winners clearly on our screen. We're all checking it and life is good. Another thing too, guys, you might notice that the lighting, you might look at that lighting and it might appear cold to you, as in bluish. It's because you're seeing all the warmth and the ambience all around. Get your eyes adjusted if you're in that peripheral vision there. But that's a daylight balanced and it gives us a, a, a pretty good understanding of what it looks like. Certainly it's not as good as that print viewer, but it's pretty damn close. Right, two judges are in. Looks like three. Thank you, Gary. The drama of it all. I love it. Andrew, you're not Instagramming right now, are you? <laughs> Poor Andrew. <laughs> I just want to do a story. <laughs> All right, fantastic guys. Uh, wouldn't you love to know what I'm seeing right now? So right now, why don't they know? say it again. Why aren't you telling them? 
Yes. <laughs> Guys, uh, obviously we're not telling you who won first, second, third place because on the awards night, March 5th, that's Tuesday, that's tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, you're welcome to come and have some fun with us and uh, celebrate the winners. And if you're online watching at home, certainly you can log in like you're logging in right now and check that out. So we are going to do a screenshot of the winners here so we can triple verify what we're doing. This category makes me uh, want to try for a baby, babe. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, would I would really love to. Wouldn't that be nice? What do you think? What do you think? Just so we can get a portrait of a, a maternity portrait. <laughs> we'll do a fake belly. We'll make it AI. It'll be totally fun. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, so that concludes the maternity category, everybody. So thank you so much. And of course, don't forget the awards. The awards night. Thank you so much, Barbie from Homespun Art. You're in the room, you make incredible stuff, and please do yourself a favor, go to the trade show, check her stuff out. I actually have the wings as well, they're amazing, so please do that. And thank you to Westcott for sponsoring the portrait division. So we're gonna have a little bit of a break and transition to the next category. So make yourself comfortable, back shortly. Thanks guys. I'm Lindsay Adler. My name is John Sun Wee. My name is Luna Hao. I'm Malva Soleya. My name is Joseph. My name is Sean Moore. My, my name is Ruth. I am Kelly Deezer and I'm a kid. Hello, I'm Loris Romano. And as you may hear from my terrible accent, I'm French. I used to run away from Flash. It was confusing, it was just extra stuff to carry around, and I never really got the results that I wanted. Off camera flash can seem intimidating, but with Profoto, there's just three buttons on the back. Time is precious, especially on a wedding day. Profoto's intuitive design and user-friendly interface allow me to focus more on creativity and less on my equipment. I have never had an easier system for controlling my flash than this beautiful dial. And whether I'm using eight lights on set or two, I can change all of the settings right from my camera. When I decided to turn professional, I wanted to get some gear which would follow me for longer. On set, I need to be able to rely on lights that are gonna fire at the exact same color temperature and power every single time. And this is where reliability is so important. This is where Profoto doesn't let me down. So they're lights that, that work when you need them to work, that trigger when you need them to work. It's just so fast, so accurate. I just can totally rely on it. I shoot quickly, I shoot often, I shoot high frame rates, and Profoto always keeps up. As a light shaper myself, I love having gear available to shape light exactly how I want. I also work on a lot of commercial sets, so it's really important that the lights that I use have lots of different options when it comes to modifiers. And even the system as a whole is so well thought out. There's no like weird adapters and clunky things. Like, no, everything fits. Whether you're on an A-series light or a B-series light, all the controls are gonna be all the same and they're really easy to use. There's virtually no learning curve whatsoever. Also, I like the extras to the A10. You have gels, diffuser, and the click softbox. It's magnetic, simple, and awesome. To be able to work with the speed at which I move, the only light I trust is Profoto. And it's an equipment that we cannot leave home without. And they're the only brand that I trust. I know our clients expect a lot out of us, and in turn, we expect a lot out of the companies that make our jobs possible. That's why we use Profoto. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to ask everyone to take their seats, please, before we get there to the next category. 
Uh, we are ready to get right into it. If you're watching us online, welcome back as well. That is thanks to Nikon, who sponsored our live broadcast today. So huge thank you to them for making that happen. Uh, we are currently looking at images in the portrait division, which is being sponsored by Westcott. And the next category that we have in this division is the newborn and baby category. So we're about to see a whole lot of cuteness right now, which is very exciting. Okay, so all of the images in this category, as the name suggests, uh, are children and babies under one years old. So that's the age requirement to be in this category, everyone that's under one. Uh, the photographers, just like in the last category, when it came to post-production, were only allowed to beautify, correct, or finesse the original capture. No composites are allowed in this category. Uh, the newborn and baby category is sponsored by ProSelect, which seems very appropriate for a portrait category. Uh, ProSelect offers an incredibly powerful software that allows you to show and sell images to your clients. If you're doing in-person sales at your studio or with your clients, you need to have ProSelect because it's the easiest way to do it. So we are now going to turn everything on over to the capable hands of Tony Hewitt and our panel of judges as they start our conversation on the newborn and baby category. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, everybody. Welcome back. How are you going there, Scott? How's the Guinness? Okay, we have three of our judges have stayed on the panel, but we've now been joined by Michael Novo from Illinois and also Michelle Salentano from Arizona. So we do have, yep, yep, give them a clap. Welcome back, guys. That's great. Are uh, we going to get straight into it? You guys out in the audience know pretty much what's happening now, and those at home will know. Our judges are going to share with you some of that sort of uh, secret source, what is it that gets in, what's behind a great image, what, what allows an image or what causes judges to want to push an image up to the top of the scoring range, why did it end up in the finals. Uh, and I also want to add, I didn't say this earlier, uh, we missed a title on, on an image and I apologise for that. We've spoken to the judges, they know about that and we'll try to make sure we don't miss it. So there's, every now and then someone's got a title in their image, I'll make sure we don't miss it any further. With that, let's get straight into it. Remember, a reminder, we're doing newborn and baby in the portrait division sponsored by ProSelect. Thank you. Natalie, what hits you first? Gosh, I, I love the composition and framing of the chair and the image and that beautiful cherub little face. I just want to Keep that baby for myself. Love that baby. Beautiful. Michael, let's unpack this one. Tell us how this was put together. What's, what's good about it? Yeah, the, the, let, let's start with the chair actually first. And the, I love the fact that, that the texture is all there right at the bottom and plays off of kind of the, the busyness that's happening towards the bottom of the frame when you're looking at the actual sitting portion of the chair. And then as you climb up towards the top, it lightens uh, just to sort of get the subject to truly glow and then really pulls you there. Uh, the fabric, the texture, the way that, that, it's, that it's been printed has uh, not just an, like it has such a natural painterly quality to it that that part is really uh, what fascinates me and keeps my eye there the entire time. Thank you, Michael. Michelle, maybe you got something to add to that that hasn't been mentioned? Really well done on this image. Sorry, and can you start again because we didn't get the first Sorry, the, it, it's, the symmetry is really well done on this. The fact that on the bottom left, the leaves are a little bit heavier, and then on the top right, the leaves are a little bit heavier. Um, it's really well done and planned out. And it's also really, um, it, it's not always easy when something is as busy and as much texture as this is to pull out just the one most important part of that image, which is the face and highlight it without it being overdone. So this is just really, really well done and well executed. Thank you, Michelle. Next print, please. Candace, first thoughts. Yes, my First thoughts on this is um, the impact of the infinity symbol and wondering what that could mean. Um, this is, you know, an infinite loop and you've got this perfect little newborn at the bottom. You know, is this the completion of a family? Or um, I'm, I'm really curious about the story, about the execution as well. Uh, Gary's going to help you with that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's totally my area of expertise. Yeah, I do have, I do have four. Uh, I do like babies quite a lot. Um, I, I think that, you know, I'm unpacking this from a design standpoint because there, there's a, there's a tendency in in newborn portraiture to go kind of warm and fuzzy, and the style here is completely flies in the face of that. This almost has like a, imagine you walk into like a German art, you know, modern art museum kind of thing, and it's got a really interesting. So right off the bat, I love how different it is, and just despite being completely ignorant of if there's any meaning behind the symbol, just as a visual element, it runs you through the image over and over and over again and back to that baby. And so, yes, there is a clever design here, but the bones of this are also really phenomenal lighting and posing and file fidelity, tonal quality of the subject. It's like it's all there. But again, these creators that make these images end up in the finals go, what can I do that is going to make this stand out, that's going to tell a story, that's going to make this unusual. And uh, in, in a sea of images of babies, this one just stands out as, as unique. And I think that's why it's sitting here in the finals. Thank you, Gary. Do you want to close this one? You know, what I love about this is that, you know, we're photographers, but we're artists, and the maker made this or had this made. I mean, how many times do we create something from scratch, whether it's her vision and by her hand or his hand? Or um, it was absolutely uh, brilliant. And so I commend the maker for creating something that didn't exist from his or her hand. Or um, theirs. And this, yeah. They. <laughs> Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Thank you. Next print, please. All right, Michelle, you were first up, so tell us what's, what's the, f the first thing that hit you? Wow. Okay, what's the wow for? Wow. And what's the second one for? Um, and the foof. This is, you know, you have to think first, this is non-composite. Everything in that image has been crafted by hand. The scale of the books, um, the baby that is wrapped in that cocoon, the, the writing, the paper that is in the book, the butterfly, ev everything has been created by hand, and the impact is extraordinary. This is, in my mind, like near perfection, if not perfection. Thank you, so it's obviously impacted you. Candace, tell us a bit more about the construction of this. Um, well, this little bookworm um, is just perfectly lit. Uh, even though uh, they're in this little hole in the book, they're still not affected by any of the shadows that could have come into play here. Um, so I feel like this is very precise lighting. Um, and I mean, just so much, There's there's gotta be a story here. Maybe the parent is, you know, a librarian or something. I mean, this is something you come to an expert to have done, to commission. Um, and I can appreciate that there was just so much depth to the whole story. Michael, anything to add to that? Yeah, I really love the fact of how <clears throat> the, the softness shifts, the contrast. You've got a little bit of soft glow from the light that's happening on the left side, and that actually extends into that first butterfly that's on the left where it's a little bit on the softer side. But then, even though this has a little bit of sort of a painterly quality, it still goes to a good amount of contrast and sharpness as you approach the right side and, and especially get to the subject and butterfly and that kind of side. So that transition is very lovely. And mastery. Can we just talk about the, all the titles of the book? I mean, Ready to Launch, 10 Steps to Living Your Best Life. Like, I, I mean, the, the detail and the imagination when we talk about high scoring prints and award winners, we talk about imagination, innovation, technique, detail, this just has, the, uh, it's everything. Anyway, I'm done. Yeah, well picked up. Next print, please. First thoughts, Natalie? This really striking color palette. Uh, it's, 
you know, it's carried throughout the image really well. I love the um, opposing colors, the purple, the greens. You know, if you look around, it kind of moves you through the image because you're kind of following some of the purple, the magenta, the, the deep pink. Um, so for me, it was the color palette. Candice, a little bit more about how it's structured. Um, so structure, uh, the, the, you know, they're twins, obviously they're facing in towards each other. It's like, you know, two sides to a story. Um, their, their little faces are just so perfectly positioned. The posing is excellent. Um, I also just want to compliment the skin tones. I feel like in this category, the masters that we have in this category have just beyond mastered skin tone and some of us in the other categories could learn from that. This image also has a title from Mother Earth herself. Uh, Michael, can you add to that? Yeah, I, th I think it's similar to a point that I made is, is just the play on texture that not everything is, is soft and it's so easy to take an image and simply make it soft from corner to corner and there's softness and a lot of um, depth in, in the center and then you get out to the edges and it becomes a lot more textured and so you have this kind of almost cocoon where, I don't know if these are siblings, uh, and they have their own warmth and softness and as the, you, know, you get further from them out into the world, it gets a little bit harsher. So I really enjoyed that part. Thank you, Michael. Next print. Candice, first thoughts? Uh, my first thoughts are, I mean, there's, there's so much to see here. There's, um, there's some um, hints to what's taking place. It's partially a flower and reminiscent of an umbilical cord coming from the earth. It's about growth and about blooming, um, about, you know, giving life. Um, so I, I really, you know, love the way the whole thing was structured to give us all of those points to think about beyond just, hey, here's a picture of a baby. So the narrative sort of hits you mm -hmm. first, yeah. Gary, can you um, maybe step this one apart a bit for us? Yeah, I guess, you, you know, Candace covered a lot of the, the big picture, you know, emotional stuff about it and, and really well, well caught. And I think that while she was doing that, I was kind of going into the cleverness of the perspective. Because once your brain clicks into a certain position, then it, does, it looks vertical. But it's literally on the ground over top. So it's really cleverly done to give a, you, you can't do that much with a newborn baby, right? You have to build something interesting around them because they're mostly asleep. And so you kind of get really creative as, as graphic designers, as set builders to create these really powerful, you know, newborn portraits. And the level that it's gotten to is absurd at the highest level when you get to these finalists. And this one is just something that I haven't seen a bunch. This is, and so I love the idea that once your brain goes, oh, and then it's growing up. It's literally a vertical portrait done overhead, and I love that. And from the lighting perspective, my initial, uh, my initial thought was to go like, oh, you know, the lighting's a little low. And then as Candace was talking about the earth and about life and, and birth, I was like, it's, it's like a sunrise. And it's, it's really cleverly put together, like that's just rising on the subject, and that's where that light would be coming from. And so that, the soft color palette, there's just a ton to enjoy. Thank you, Gary. Michelle, maybe a closing comment? I just really love the perspective of it as well. When you see it at first, it, it's a vertical flower, and there's a baby, and then it's, it's just really hats off to the maker because it's so well done in the perspective. Thank you. Next print, please. This one has a title as well, Fast Friends. Candace, there's a smile on your face as you saw this one. What's it's that about? just so sweet. I mean, and this, these parents, you know, I'm, the little puppy is probably their first love, um, <laughs> joined by the newest. Uh, and the, the two of them just look so snug. Uh, you can feel it, and anytime you can feel something when you see an image, like you can be there and it takes you there, that makes it really powerful and that's something that, you know, a finalist image um, should bring to the table. Michael, maybe unpack this one for us a little, please. Yeah, the one thing to keep in mind, and this does not, um, you know, you can't save a 
low scoring image with this, uh, but the, the technical difficulty of, of achieving something. So this isn't just a single subject that's sleeping, but, but two, and one that doesn't always necessarily, well, I don't think either one of them may, would comply. Um, so you, you're taking two of the most difficult subjects to photograph and then saying like, yeah, let's just go ahead and, and, and make an image that's worthy of being eligible for, for an award. So just that difficulty, I would like to, uh, uh, you know, acknowledge the, what the maker faces, even though it appears so simple. Um, of course, the, the, the pattern work here is just absolutely excellent, the repetition of it. Again, simple, uh, but complex at the same time. Just maybe expand a little bit on lighting something like this, if you will. Sure. The, the, to get the, the evenness of the light, there's no shadows. I can see that there's almost like little posts coming out from the bed, yet it all remains absolutely so, so soft. Um, the, the, I'll call it the, the, the puppy subject, um, ha, ha, does go a, a little bit brighter, and that's natural to us, and then immediately just points us into the, the main subject, who is so beautifully and softly lit. Thank you. Gary, closing comment? Yeah, just to quickly to close, there's so many tiny little decisions that make this delicious, from the angle and using the posts of the crib to come up to the corners of the image. But what really, once I got there, this just knocked me out of my chair. Uh, oh, not literally, guys, I'm okay. Um, is everything is vintage in this. This is all, everything is vintage in this, is the rattle in the baby's hand. And the little touch there is like, that's how the baby fell asleep, playing until they pass out, because that's what babies do, and that's what puppies do. They play until they pass out. And it's just to imagine that rattle wasn't there, and it's just not as good. So I love that little last flourish that tells the story. Spoken like a man with four kids. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Next print, please. What are you smiling at, Natalie? What's, what's caught your attention? What was it you noticed? Oh gosh, this presentation is exquisite. You don't see an oval mat, but this needed an oval mat, and what a brilliant choice to use the oval mat. Just the direction of the leaf at the top. Um, so the presentation, I mean, there's so much more to talk about, but I'm gonna pass the mic. You can <laughs> add one more little thing. Oh gosh, I could add a, the lighting, and, and I love the color palette as well. Okay. Thank you. Michelle, maybe you can unpack this even further. Um, just in terms of degree of difficulty in making this set um, and the way that the flower almost has a butterfly feel to it and how well those butterfly wings or petals are lit, um, the shadow from the top of the petals coming down into the highlight is so perfect. And just the angle of it. and just that you can, the baby's hands are so perfectly placed on on the baby's leg and you can still see the baby's face. But nothing is so overwhelming about it that it takes away from the infant, yet it all adds to the infant. And then there's this incredible texture in the background, which is really hard to see on that screen. This is one you really need to get up close and see that gorgeous texture in the background beyond the flower and the petals. So I just think it's so well done. Michelle, with these types of images, how challenging or how important is it to get that balance between prop and baby right? When we're talking about newborns, I think it's critical because we don't want to lose the baby in this. I mean, it is about the baby, but this lends itself to the birth, right? This flower, this butterfly opening, and this little baby being in the center of it. And I also think that the use of sort of the yellow on the, the wrap up on top of the pink, on top of the blue, on top of the green, really just makes that, like that little seed in the center just pop open for you. Yeah, and yeah. That, that slightly subdued color palette, it yeah. just softens the whole thing down, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you've got blues and pinks and greens, and then that burst of, like, yellow against the perfect pink and yellow skin tone. So it all just comes together in the center. So it's so well balanced. Perfect. Thank you. Good comments. Next print, please. <laughs> I 
All right. Now, you're all laughing at that one. Gary, I'm going to get you first up. You, you, had this, you chuckled at that one. Yeah, you know, you open your big stupid mouth and then a creator shows you what a, what a dummy you are. I was like, oh, it's just, you know, they're laying there and you just build stuff around them. But this is just such a creative thing. And I love that occasionally, occasionally with newborns, you can get what can be quantified as an expression. And so whatever causes it, really the expression is in the mind of the person viewing it. And I think that really makes it for me here. But this, to me, is something that reflects the ideals and the, um, the desires and the values of the parents. And I think, you know what I mean? So it, th this baby doesn't have opinions or anything yet. So th this, is, this, is, this is probably mom, you know? <laughs> and so this is a really, really beautifully crafted image on an artistic level, but something that we all love you could sell the absolute crap out of this to the parents. <laughs> so and, and, it, and it does have a title, <laughs> Anticipation of the Future, I apologize. For yeah. And as a dad, this makes me really nervous. Yeah. I was Good. just going to ask, is that why you were chuckling? How many, how many girls do you have? It's Target. Oh, what's that? How many daughters do you have? Three daughters, yeah. <laughs> no wonder yeah. you chuckled. Mm -hmm. um, Natalie, can you add to that, please? Well, you know, to me, like the degree of difficulty to get the infant to pose upright and hold a Chanel purse with it, an expression, I mean, the amount of time and patience to, to achieve this position, this shot, and then happen to get this a, adorable expression. Um, you know, the placement of the, I guess, the light and dark balance. You know, I, I love the placement of the Chanel items. Um, I love the balance of the shapes of the items. I feel like it really creates a harmony. Um, your eye kind of moves around the image, but um, you know, I thought it was really well handled. The lighting um, is well done as well, because you have a lot of white in this and dark. And I think the shadows, there's a lot of detail in the shadows, and I think the highlights are, are well handled. So I think the maker did an excellent job. Michael, closing comment? Yeah, one, one other point, and, and I can uh, talk about this from previous personal struggles, is placement of the the background elements. and the And I love the fact that they're, they're they're there they're there for the play, but it's okay to cut them off. And, and that that bottom Chanel, that box being cut off is is wonderful. It would be it this image would not work as well if everything was in frame, especially that bottom box, the top right, the all you 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 just get the idea that it's all there. It's not that important, and it's perfectly wonderful to cut it off. Thank you, Michael, and um, Gary. Just to I have two daughters. The secret is the, old, the youngest one now works as the head of marketing for a top jeweler. That's how you get out of it. <laughs> Next print, please. Talk to me later. <laughs> Natalie, smile, smiling and nodding. Oh, gosh, I want to squish this baby. I, I love the expression. I love those little the pouty lips and the clenched fists. Oh. Gosh, I want to kidnap this baby if it wasn't illegal. I, I, you know, one of the things I've noticed with you, Natalie, is that often it's the emotional impact that grabs you first. Yeah. I mean, judges are different. And, and in this first comment, we're talking about what's the first thing that grabs your attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some judges, it is very much about that emotional yeah. impact. Uh, I noticed that's <laughs> one of the strongest things with you. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Michael, maybe to unpack the... The, uh, the, the construction. Yeah, uh, and and I just want to. I know that we've we've discussed from the top down shooting, but you know, with a subject such as this, and we're holding I don't know how many pounds of camera equipment over or, or the mount, and and I certainly am not going to guess, but um, you know, I that's a huge element to to overcome. Aside from that, just the softness of everything in the frame, everything play each element plays plays off of each other, the, the texture, the, the softness, you, it, it all then points you so, st like right into the subject. They are almost kind of mini, not leading lines, but these kind of like elements that are kind of the bunnies like looking over and saying, hey, you kind of want to, you should look over here. And the little birdie at the bottom is also, hey, like, I think you should be looking up there. And then you follow the string up and then you just get to the subject whose um, skin and texture and everything is handled just beautifully. And it has a title, The Rainbow After the Storm. Okay, so be aware of that. Michelle, a closing comment? 
I think it hasn't been said enough how difficult it can be to light an infant face because they're so tiny and not overlight the rest of the image. So I think it takes a certain amount of mastery to be able to light that little face so perfectly and not overlight the rest of the image. So there is craftsmanship in the lighting here so that really, I mean, the light is coming from you know camera right, slightly overhead, just a beautiful highlight, fall off on the baby's face without it over lighting anything else. So hats off to the maker for really executing well lit baby. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, judges. Great comments. That's the end of the Portrait Division Newborn Baby category. Well done. I'm now going to hand back to the indefatigable, I get that word oh. right again, Melissa. <laughs> Over to you. Amazing. Uh, congrats. Thank you so much to Tony and to our panel of judges for that awesome conversation. Um, and by the way, guys, if you are enjoying these images, keep in mind, I, if, in case some of you may have missed our announcement, we announced it a little while ago that part of this, the competition this year is there's going to be a Pro Photo Luminance Award. And Pro Photo has generously offered to sponsor this award. And there's been a separate panel of judges who have looked at all the images that were entered in the competition to find which image they felt made the best use of light. It doesn't have to be artificial light, it doesn't have, it can be natural light, any light source. But what image made the best use of light? They've made their decision and Tuesday night, tomorrow night at the awards ceremony, we're gonna find out who the winner of the Pro Photo Luminance Award is and the winner of that award gets to go home with $10,000 worth of Pro Photo gear. So it's a huge prize. It's really, really awesome. So all I'm saying is keep an eye out, see who your favorite is, and see if it matches up with what, who the winner is tomorrow night. So it'll be kind of fun. OK, so we're going to take another quick short break, and we're just going to get the judges set up on their judging console. Won't take long at all. Then we're going to reset them in front of the gallery here, let them have another look at all the images, and then they'll decide who they like to choose for all the winners in this category. So sit tight. We'll be right back. Thank you so much everybody, um, great to have you back with us also online. Uh, it's a cycle of life. We had the maternity category and now the babies have, ha have happened. I love this and soon they're going to grow up, it's going to be amazing. So judges, we have incredible images in front of us, we've had a compelling discussion. Now with no discussion, take your time and proceed to rank who you'd like to see win first, second and third place and so on.
a really fun process uh, that you perhaps haven't witnessed before. Traditionally, the, the, the choosing of these finals would normally happen behind closed doors. Melissa and I decided on our team uh, to basically lift the veil off and let you to be privy to how these are chosen. So this discussion would traditionally happen behind closed doors and we choose the winners accordingly. We're all about transparency, but you are not going to know who's going to win first, second and third until tomorrow night. So make sure you join us at 8 o'clock tomorrow night uh, and also for an incredible after party as well. So just so you know, these guys aren't Instagramming or going on stories or Facebook or anything like that. On their device, they have the thumbnails. Obviously, no name is associated with each of the images. And then they tap on the photograph that they sort of prioritize to be the winner. And then they'll progressively go down and rank them. With our system, mathematically, there is no chance of a tie. We have a definitive answer as to who's going to win first, second, third, and so on. All right, Michael's not afraid. Candace is uh, ready to rock. Gary's good, Michelle's good. Natalie's FaceTiming her children. <laughs> no, no, she's all good. <laughs> it's an important process. When you're proud of a genre that you're invested in, you want to see beautiful images up there representing the genre that you love, and certainly we have that. Let's refresh. We all love this moment. Do you guys love this moment? Yeah, we do okay. One second. Are we? Yeah. Um, one, so third. one of the one of the judges, guys. Can you judges? just judges? Judges. Can you guys check? Can you look at your um, your device? Just one of you probably haven't pressed submit. So you rank the images. You press submit. Okay, you're good. You got it. All right. There we go. I'm just letting you know, a baby won the category, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I am going to screenshot this. And again, for full transparency, for those of you who just joined us, we, three of us are here to, to, to check, make sure we're all doing the right thing. So none of us can cheat. So none of us can cheat. <laughs> That's funny. All right, fantastic. Okay, so now that we've chosen the winners, this concludes the newborn and baby category. Thank you again to ProSelect for sponsoring the category and to Westcott for sponsoring the portrait division. We're going to transition now to the next category. There's been maternity, we got pregnant, we had children, the babies, now they're growing up, and next we're going to judge the children and teenager categories. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Thanks for your patience, guys. How amazing would it be to get image critiques on demand? What about the chance of learning from industry leaders in a genre that you're most interested in? And learning from someone say like Kelly Brown, Susan Stripling, Roberto Valenzuela, Peter Hurley, or maybe even your favorite Australian. 
Hi, my name is Jerry Gionis, Nikon Ambassador, Portrait, Fashion and Wedding Photographer and co-founder of the Icon International Photography Awards. When I look back at my career so far, I can clearly see that the most valuable education I've received has come from feedback on my images. Well, now there's an even easier way for you to receive such priceless video feedback from industry experts reviewing and critiquing your work. Now, check this out, here's how it works. When you submit your photo for a critique, your mentor will record a video where you can watch as they zoom into your photo using annotation tools, pointers, cropping tools to provide detailed insights. All the while, you can see their face and listen to their passion and feedback in their own words. You can get your own image critique on demand at critique.com. That's critique without the U and the E. Or when you enter the Icon Awards, make sure to add a critique for the best learning experience you've ever had. All right, welcome back everybody. We are ready to begin our next category. So thank you guys for staying with us while we got everything ready and got our prints ready for the next category. Just as a reminder, we are currently in the portrait division, which is being sponsored by Westcott. And our next category is the children and teenagers category. So in this category, the age limit, the age restriction to be in this category is anyone from the ages of one years old to 19 years old. So that is the age range that we're gonna see now in these next few images. Just like in the last two images, the photographers in post-production were allowed to beautify, correct, or finesse the original capture, but no composites are allowed in this category either. The children and teenagers category is sponsored by Interactive Images, uh, which is a really cool app that you guys are going to get to experience a lot this week. Basically, they make your printed image come to life through this app where you can scan an image and a video pops up. We use it for our clients. We've been using it for several years. We'll use it in uh, albums, for example, some of their images, you can get some behind the scenes footage and it just gives your clients a little extra, little extra bonus that they can have. We even have uh, some clients that do save the dates and when they send it to their friends and when their friends scan the image, it's a video of the couple that pop up and say, hey, we're getting married. Really cool, so many different ways you can use it. But how you guys can use it this week is in the trade show, at the trade show, when you walk through the print gallery, You'll see a QR code where you can just download this free app to your phone and any image that has a blue dot on the gallery card means that it has additional content for you to lock, unlock. So you scan that image in the print gallery with this app and a video pops up from the maker. Sometimes it's behind the scenes footage, sometimes it's the maker telling you about how they created that image. So as you're watching these, go find those images on the print gallery because you may get a whole bunch of behind the scenes information on how that was created. It's so cool and I'm so excited that over half of the images in the gallery have that content. So it's super cool, really excited that they con the Interactive Images sponsored this category as well, but you have to go check it out because it's really awesome. Okay, really excited about that little feature, but now we're gonna see some images in the children and teenagers category. We'll turn it back over to Tony Hewitt and to our panel of judges. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> Do you like my t-shirt? <laughs> you can have one. <laughs> children and teenagers, welcome to the panel, Nick Procritus and Andrew's got about five little things adding to his things. He's a judge, he's iconic, he's a future this and a future... We are so, we are so privileged to have you with us, Andrew Yort. And of, course, and of course, we've got Candace, Michelle and Michael still with us. We're doing Children and Teenager. And let's have a look at the first print and hear why it's in the finals. Candice, first thoughts. My first impression of this is just brave. It's brave on part of the subject. It's brave on the part of the photographer. Um, just the you know process of sitting down and thinking, hey, let's make this. Let's do this while you know we can. And um, and and the composition specifically, which I'll leave that to the next person to go in depth about. But it's very impactful when you first see it. Michael, perhaps you can unpack that. 
Yeah, I'll actually just take off right on the composition point, and this, is, this isn't just using rule of thirds, but now we're pushing past uh, like one of the nodal points that we would typically use, and really uh, on, this, on this stark background, uh, just allowing a lot of focus on the subject. And then in that bottom corner where it just goes off to almost a complete black that, that would typically be a flaw, but, but works so well here, almost like creating like a hole or, or cavern. And so one of the, to tie it all together, it's not just the emotion or mood of, of the image that, that pulls us with the subject, but the ability to put all of the elements of the story together as well is what brings the true strength out in it. Thank you. Um, let's go to Andrew to finish that one. I'll speak to the tonality of this, just um, using, um, sometimes using the, the, the temperature and, and balance in an image to help portray feeling and emotion, just that cool tone. It's a little bit more, um, it's opposite of the, the, the warm, fuzzy feelings we see in warmer tones. The cool tone here just helps emulate that mood. And uh, I think that was uh, a, a really strong creative choice. Mm, and a couple of you mentioned that strength in an image and the, the bravery, and I think the eye contact really helps with that as well because they're obviously owning, owning the experience. Next print, please. <coughs> Michelle, what's the first thing that sort of impacts you? The overall tonality and the... Uh, color balance between the green and the blue and I just feel like I'm in a little moment of the sound of music but I just feel storytelling. Is the title The Little Girl That Lives in the Moorland or Moorland. Andrew can you unpack that for us? Yeah absolutely I think uh, you know we've got a lot of depth here with you know the foreground the background and beyond um, I think uh, the you know the you know taking a you know a, a portrait like this you know, you're using a, a you know a, a soft box like a, a very soft light source for the subject, uh, while controlling you know this subdued background, this you know overcast, foggy, hazy day. Um, very challenging to do, and and to bring that light to really make that subject pop. You know, with the tonality of the blue across the green, I think that's that's really well handled. Nick. Yeah, what I'd like to mention is about the excellent use of. Um, of uh, paper choice for the presentation and uh, plus the editing skills of the maker who creates these 3D dimensional images uh, on with uh, so many layers on top. Thank you, thank you. Next print please. This has the title Kafka-esque. Kafka-esque. Candace had a smile. What does that smile mean? What's the first thing? I think this is so beautiful. Um, the choice of blue in this uh, is really striking. Uh, the initial impact of um, the bugs, <laughs> uh, it kind of gives you this uh, tension, this weird feeling of, wow, this is so pretty, but it's so gross at the same time. Um, I feel like it really tells us something about her. Um, it, 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 it really just, the whole thing pops. Michelle, putting an image like this together, tell us a bit more about the construction. Yeah, this takes a lot of time. <laughs> thought process and um, set design. I mean, all of all of those bugs, again, none of this is composite. I always think of that first. It's like, this is not composite. Someone had to build this, um, you know, by hand. Also, the lighting on her face is so beautiful. It is classic beauty butterfly lighting on her face that is so well done. The fall off is perfect. Um, you know, I, I think that's a hard balance to strike sometimes, getting that beautiful light with the right fall off and it comes from the top down all the way to the darkness at the bottom of the frames like the lighting of the background matches the lighting of her face which is just beautiful thank you michelle andrew maybe an additional comment yeah i, I like the the storytelling here i mean thinking of a teenage girl and dark and moody and emo and you know, as opposed to the juxtaposition of the, the light, fluffy, airy, beauty stuff that we typically see. I like the storytelling behind the bugs, and I think it was a really cool use of the, 
the, the set design to add it onto the, um, the costume, the outfit itself to kind of tie it all together. I think that was really cool. Thank you. Next print, please. This one has a title, Natural Beauty. Okay, Andrew, you're nodding your head and smiling. What's the first thing that grabbed you? This texture is so luscious. I just want to, like, reach out and scrunch her hair and just, you, you, it just pops off the print. You know, and it, it, and it doesn't, it's not even over shattered or overpowered by the flowers in here. Like, I just, what an, what an immediate impact to just have that texture to just draw you in. And the eye contact here is just so stunning. Um, the, the break in her lip just really adds to the vitality of the portrait. It's not just a closed lip. There's breath and, and life coming through there. It's beautiful. Michael? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to just focus in uh, on one point briefly, and that is uh, the shadows. When you have such a soft light that's coming in, one of the things that can often happen is that the darker areas, the shadows, begin to fall off a little bit too much. When you try to bring them back, they begin to wash out and kind of do a th like this thing where they don't really come together. And the way that the, that the shadows, I'm allowed to go into the shadows and then come back out to the highlights and it's all there uh, so close to one another that I think that that was ab absolutely beautifully done. The other thing is just there's this hint of this, this pinkish red and it goes through, it's in every single element in the image from the skin to the dress to the background and to the hair. And this one color is just there, but it variates so much, so beautifully done there. Thank you. Candice, maybe a final comment? Uh, I just want to comment on uh, the excellent retouching. Uh, her skin retouching is so beautiful. She still feels real, so it's not been overdone. Um, but it, it's got that somewhat porcelain quality um, while maintaining texture. So difficult to do. Thank you, guys. Great comment. Next print, please. Michelle, first thoughts? My first thought is this has so much impact simply because of the flat-footedness of this ballerina that normally we see ballet dancers up on point um, enjoying that on-point moment, demonstrating what they can do. There's um, something so somber about her and her flat-footedness and her hands behind her back and the roll of her shoulder and her chin down, um, that really, it's very thought provoking. Um, in addition to all of the other things someone else is gonna talk about, but that's the first thing that hits me, so. Candice is smiling when you said that. Candice, tell us about all the other Gee, things. Gee, I don't know, what would we talk about? <laughs> um, our artists gonna art, um, it's, uh, really well executed. I mean, obviously she's, she's fully painted. Uh, her outfit is painted, her body is painted, her hair is painted. Every aspect it, of it is physically painted because again, this is not composited. This isn't heavily edited. This is, um, it, it's just super unique. Um, the, and the way that the shadow was painted to match um, to give us the illusion of it being a painting, um, super well executed. Michael? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna reference back when this image was, when I, when I uh, judged it way back when, and the only reason is because I actually paused on this one to review the, the category and the rules just to make sure that, that this wasn't a, a composite, and so I had to, the, it just, it pulled me in a direction that, that I com was completely unexpected. And it's one of those images that you go out afterwards and you have a discussion with the maker and you're kind of like, so can you tell me a little bit about how you did that or you talk about it at the 
at the bar afterwards with other photographers and you're like, so like, let's figure this out because it's, I'm looking for the flaws in it and it's so difficult to see them that, that it, the impact was just amazing. Yeah, great comments, thanks judges. Next print please. Title, Into the Forest I Go to Lose My Mind and Find My Soul. Nick, your first thoughts on this one? Um, softness, nostalgia. This is what brings my mind immediately when I see the image. So pure, natural softness. And um, so well executed on the terms of... Uh, color tonality and color palette. Thank you, Nick. Michelle, can you unpack how you go about putting an image like this together, perhaps? Well, I mean, it's finding that perfect location, I think, to start with, and the time of day that you want to make this happen so that you get that soft light and the lens choice that goes into this so that you're really getting that beautiful bokeh in the background. Um, I just think that the maker did a good job in making sure that the placement of the trees did not come out of her head um, and that th her face was perfectly placed in that rectangle um, so that you could move along the image and then just end up at her face. But then we still have that beautiful modeling light on her face where the, you know, the light comes from above and it lights the mask of her face and then just falls off so beautifully. And then the expression, I mean, you know, it all comes down when we're, photographing people to that soft, believable expression that she really is, you know, finding her, her, losing her mind to find her soul. Like you can feel that in her face, so. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Candy, you got anything to add to that? Um, I just wanted to compliment the, the posing of her face and neck. Um, the maker used her best feature and posed it in a way that, um, just really brings even more excellence to um, the whole pose overall. It's just the perfect angle on her and seeing that on her and using it effectively. Thanks, judges. Great comments. Next print, please. A title, we're, we're the same, as in we are the same. We're the same. First thoughts, Michael? Yeah, just the, um, the seamless blending of, of making the two, the two subjects come together, I think was, was just brilliantly done. And for it to, you know, if I, if I squint, I'm seeing um, essentially one subject. Uh, so it, it is so well done in that. Candice, can you? Tell us a bit more about how you'd make an image like this or how, how you think this has been done. So, because this is a single capture category, um, we're not looking at uh, Photoshop. So if we step back and think about the steps that had to be completed to do this, I am going to assume that the photographer actually shot the boy on the left first, um, had it printed. Uh, I, I don't know if this is an actual book, I'm not privy to that, um, but I'm guessing that they actually photographed the first child, made the book cover, and then used that to photograph the second child holding the book. Um, this is multi-steps, um, and like Michael was saying, it's just really, really well executed with all of the perfect proportions. Um, it's, it's really unique. Okay, thank you. Andrew, final comment? Yeah, I'd like to call to the storytelling. If, if you can see the, the teardrop coming down the boy's face, the element of story here in, in where the youth of our day are capable of, of taking in information and understanding the pain and, and you know the lack of luxury that other children have, I think that's a beautiful way to kind of tie that together. And I, I'd like to commend the maker on the storytelling and the juxtaposition of someone who may seem privileged versus the stories of others. As you can see, the portrait of the boy in the book um, you know how how you know downgraded his clothing is, and, and um, it's it's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, there are some really interesting things going on here because this is so extraordinarily done. And I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive, but you know, 
um, and all the racial tensions that we experience, you know, they always talk about the little black boy in the hoodie, and the hoodie is on the little white boy, and the the side of the face of the little black boy he has on a regular shirt. There's dual stories being told here, from the hair to the clothing to the tear of the, the young white boy. It's the detail in the hair and the highlight. It This is absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the most powerful narratives are the ones that are very subtle and understated, but once you get them, yeah. that you don't forget them. Next print, please. Good comments. Thanks, Judge. Judges? Nick, what's your first thoughts on this one? Excellent use of uh, presentation for a storytelling again. Um, talking maybe about obesity, um, or about uh, how the, the world looking for a young woman to be there in the future. But such a great and powerful way to present the problem. OK. Um, Andrew. Have you got something to add to that? Can you, or do you want me to pass? Yeah. I, uh, I get a lot of emotion from this story. You know, having a, a daughter, you know, uh, that's just coming into her teenage years myself, and just knowing the trials and tribulations that she's going to go through just through societal standards. And I, I commend the maker on piecing this together to unpack this a little bit. You know, this beautiful, soft light, you know, well controlled. Uh, large light source, you know, putting this together as a, a, a piece. I mean, you, she, the maker had to create this, you know, kind of wrap and structure, and, and that's a, an incredible attention to detail and the measuring and, and everything. So, I mean, but that this narrative is just, I, it's, it's, for me, it's so hard, it's, it's heart wrenching. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for sharing. Candice, you would like to find us? I just wanted to point out, um, I think there's a little even extra thought that went into this. If you'll notice, the two most prominent numbers on her body are 13 and 18. Yeah, yeah great point. Great point. Uh, next print, please. We're very privileged to be able to see such great images, don't you think, guys? You know? This image has a title, Tell Me Your Story. Michael, what's what's the first thing that sort of impacts you? Yeah, the uh, if you told me that this was a, a uh, still frame taken from a, from a like a decent sized budget movie, like it's it's completely believable in how the lighting comes together, the expression. I could believe that it's a professional uh, actors actress that's uh, that's sitting there. Um, the elements all tie in beautifully together, and along with the tones, I won't go into detail. I'll let other folks talk about that. Michelle, perhaps you can unpack some of those details. I mean, yeah, there's so much to talk about in detail. The lighting on her face is extraordinary. The the separation between her hair and the background is perfect. The highlights on the feathers sitting on top of the books, um, even the highlights on her fingers are so just so well done. And her eyes are beautifully handled in post. They're not overly whitened, they're not overly bright, they're perfect for what this portrait calls for. So it feels like everything in this image was so expertly crafted and done with such precision and detail. It's really, really beautiful. Thank you, Michelle. Nick, maybe a final comment? Yeah, I would like to mention also for the maker who chose this kind of color tonality. The brownies gives me that retro vintage style of 20s or maybe 30s, which is matches perfectly with the presentation. Yeah, making sure that the technique and the presentation and the narrative all complement each other is so important, isn't it, to strengthen the message. Great, judges, good, good comments. Let's have the next print, please. Candice, your first thoughts? My first thoughts are what excellent use of styling to um, 
just reiterate the elongation of everything. Um, so we've got the elongated hairstyle that's been done, um, the elongated makeup in her eye, um, the uh, treatment of her cheeks and her jawline to elongate, and then down through her neck using that earring to signify that drop. So it's just like length on length on length. And I feel like that's what the maker is trying to tell us about this. Michael? obviously an exquisitely put together image. How, how, can you add some sort of comment for the, uh, the viewers yeah. as to how? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the first word as soon as this image came around is timeless. And, and it's, a, it's a classic portrait. It's not attempting uh, any of the extremely modern things that would first come to my mind. It simply gives me wonderful tones in the, in the, in the face. So you go from the highlights to the shadows. And then, and then my eye goes up to the hair and I just get lost in the in the light shadow light and that that play in in giving me enough to go into from the highlights and shadows is really what keeps that viewer's eye there and so i think that that is so beautifully done thank you michael andrew maybe a closing comment the the paper choice here is is incredible you know, I, I need to speak to the the maker's decision to to print it on this kind of um uh fiber or rag I mean it just it just brings out the texture so beautifully um, in the um, in, in the texture of the the background and the hair is just it's so this is so crisp this is so so crisp and, and the different tones of the texture between you know the the hardness of the hair and the softness of the the sweater you know right through the uh, the texture of the skin like this the retouching on this is flawless in the sense that we haven't tried to over retouch the skin, the, the the pores out of it. This is such a, it's beautifully well done. Thanks, mate. Thanks, judges. Great comments. You know, it, you're probably picking up, or I hope you're picking up, you know, in the audience here and back home, the subtle details that make something worthy of being an award-winning image. Uh, sometimes the obvious isn't as obvious as you think, and sometimes something done simply well, but you know, perfectly well, can it can stay simple and still have incredible impact. Judges, great comments, really insightful and in allowing us to get an understanding of what makes an award-winning image, what puts an image into the finals and gives it the chance to win. And that's what your next job's going to be because we just finished that category. I'll swing back over to Melissa now and then we'll take you forward from there. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you to our judges. Thank you guys for that amazing conversation. So as Tony said, that concludes the children and teenager category, um, but I have a very exciting announcement and we were going to save this for the awards night and then Jerry and I just talked and we're like, you know what, why not share it with you guys first? So um, we are always looking at what you guys support and what gets the most amount of support in the competition and what doesn't. So if, for example, if there's a category where there just isn't much support, we're not getting much entries, you guys are telling us that that maybe is not of interest to you and maybe we'll take some of those categories away. With the children and teenagers category, it's actually had the opposite thing. So we have had so much support over the last couple of years. This category is massive. So I first want to acknowledge that the finalist that you see here was one of the most difficult categories, categories to be a finalist in just because of the sheer number of amazing entries that were entered into it. And we only had the top 10 scoring images. So I'm very excited to tell you that starting next year, this is now going to be split into two categories, <laughs> children and teenagers. Yay! So that'll be awesome. It'll be um, any, everyone from one years old to 12 years old, and then 13 to 19 in, in the teenager category. So we're very, very excited. And it's thanks to you guys. You guys told us. You guys told us by how much you supported this category. So there you go. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break so we can get the judges logged into their judging console. Then we'll reset over here in front of the gallery and let them do their thing. So we'll be back in just a couple minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. Lots of excitement in the room. I love this energy. Um, again, cycle of life. We, uh, we were pregnant. We've had babies. And now they're, they're, our babies are growing up, children and teenager. So judges, I know that you're staring at these photographs. They're incredible. What an incredible range and diversity we have in front of us. Take your time. Soak them in. Work out who you want to win, first, second, and third, and representing the genre that you guys love. Go for it. So as you'd appreciate, guys, that when the photographs come up in front of the print viewer there, we're looking at everything independently, individually. We're not about comparing any images to anything else. Right now, certainly everything has been discussed at its own merits, appreciated, respected. Now it's time to work out who should represent this category. That extra element of print certainly comes into place. We always think about it this way. Let's say you have a Ferrari, beautiful engine, great paint job, but there's a dent in it. Then that's going to adversely affect perhaps the way judges may see something. In this case, they're all certainly exquisitely printed, but the power of print and the importance of print comes into play. Right, Nick Pacritus is done, Candice is done, Michael's feeling good, Andrew seems to always be the one flagging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to rush you, you take your time. <laughs> Michelle's good. The way we've determined the scores and the mathematical equation that goes into this, there's no possible way that there's actually a, a tie. And the only way that will happen is if every judge judged everything the exact same way, which would never happen. All right, let's have a look. Okay. We're very good. Man, that was a tough one. Yeah. All right, fantastic. All right, everybody, thank you so much. That concludes the children and teenager category. Thank you to Interactive Images for supporting this category. Uh, we're very, very excited about walking the trade show gallery, downloading the I am iconic app and getting some more content out of these images and learning how these were created. Also a big thank you to Westcott for sponsoring the portrait division. Uh, we thank you for your ongoing support to the industry as well. Uh, we're going to take a short little break and come back and uh, make yourself comfortable. We'll see you shortly. Thank you so much. I'm Sarah Edmonds, and I'm so proud to be ambassador for Canson Infinity, a brand with a heritage spanning over 500 years. Taking the leap from digital photographer to printed artist is quite a scary one, but when you print, that's what you are. I've spent 10 years dedicated to learning how to produce the very best print of my work, and let me tell you, not all papers are created equal. For this piece, I chose Arsh 88. It's a fine art paper with a very smooth finish, deep rich tones, and naturally white whites. 
and it's from the same mill that produced paper for Henri Matisse, Pablo Picasso and Salvador Dali. Canson produces a huge range of papers, so the real question is, what will you choose for your next masterpiece? All right, welcome back everybody. We'll get everyone to take their seats so we can start the uh, next category. And welcome back to everyone who's watching us online. Thanks to Nikon for sponsoring our live broadcast. Just before we begin our next category, I just want to give a very big thank you to our panel of judges. I know that we've been thanking them after every category and we have a panel that's seated now, but you'll notice that our panel of judges will change uh, very frequently throughout the two days. So we have this panel of judges, but we also have several panel of judges rotating through over the entire two days. And they've been chosen because they're experts in our industry. They're leaders in our industry. They already spend so much time teaching fellow photographers what they know and sharing their expertise with the rest of our community and that's what we're trying to do here. These are photographers that come from all over the country, all over the world at their own expense to be here with you guys to share feedback on these images to help us all learn and grow. So I'd just like to everyone to give a really big thank you to all of our panel of judges for being here. Also, um, we're here at WPPI, but it didn't have to happen. Uh, when Jerry and I took over the Icon Awards, there was a chance that the Icon Awards would be somewhere else. It wasn't a given that it would be here at WPPI, but I have to say that the WPPI team has been absolutely amazing and so welcoming of the Icon Awards. We've especially worked with George and Arlene and Manir and Adam and Kellen, and they have been absolutely amazing. And when I say it's been hours of brainstorming a way to make it work, to allow us to still be here at the convention, they made it work for us. And they didn't have to do that. And they've been so helpful and we're so grateful to them that we still have a home here at WPPI. So huge thank you to the WPPI team as well. And last but not least, I have to save this last because this is one that's especially close to my heart. This week, entire week, is filled with experiences that Jerry and I just can't do on our own. We have a team of over 40 volunteers that stepped up and said, we will not go to classes on these days. We will come and help you. We will volunteer our time. We'll come out to WPPI at our own expense because we want to be a part of it. 40 people, you guys. You've seen Michelle and Keith running around. You've seen our camera operators, Jeff and Ivy and Ed. These are all volunteers, you guys. You've seen our print handlers who have been on their feet for two days straight. And there's entire teams of people that you don't see that aren't in this room. They're right now on the trade show floor putting together the entire print gallery so that by the time you walk in on Tuesday, everything is perfect and you can just see everything beautifully. They're doing that for you and no one sees them. No one gives them any credit because they don't even know they're there. There is an army of people that have made up the backbone of this entire competition this week. And from a personal note, because we have been working together so hard over the last two weeks, meeting together over Zoom, coming up with plans so that everything runs smoothly, these volunteers are my life because they're the only reason why this is all running so efficiently. So guys, thank you so much for what you've done. If you see anyone with an Icon volunteer ribbon on their badge, please thank them and thank them hard. <laughs> okay, just had to say that. That is so grateful for, that, for this team that we have together. All right, just as a reminder, we are still in the portrait division. The portrait division is being sponsored by Westcott. Uh, the next category that we have in this division is the individual category. So this features people that were photographed on their own and they have to be from the age of 20 upwards. So we've done all the other ages. This is specifically people photographed on their own from the age of 20 upwards. 
Uh, this category is sponsored by Level Up Imaging. They have created an incredible all-in-one portrait system that you can set up very easily that provides you with consistent lighting to take portraits super easily. You guys are going to see them in action at the awards ceremony tomorrow night. So Level Up Imaging, remember that name, and then look at their setup because you can actually own that for your own studio. And it is so easy to set up, and it creates beautiful lighting and consistent lighting every single time. It's amazing. It's like no, you don't have to think about it. It just gets it all done. So thank you to Level Up Imaging for sponsoring this category. Uh, and now we're going to turn it over to Tony and our panel of judges as we look at the next set of images. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, Melissa was just thanking those, apart from everybody else, she mentioned the judges. One of the things you don't get the privilege of seeing, which I do, is their faces when images come around. And one of the most warming things is to realise that after years in the industry, maybe not that many for some of you, but for people like me, a long time. I'm trying to be kind here for some of you guys. Um, to see the passion that's still in their faces. So when they talk about the print, when they share their experiences and their knowledge and their skill sets to you, it's coming from a place of real love of what they're doing. And that's what this community is about. You know, it's often said to me, uh, what's the best seminar to go to? You know, you come to a conference, which one should I see? I've always said and find most of these people say one of the best presentations or seminars you can ever attend is a live print commentary. That's what you're getting here. It's one of the best seminars you could do. And again, I want to thank the judges for their passion because they come here every now and then. You won't see it. I'll see a tear in an eye. We've seen it a few times. We've seen a few people say, that one hits me, that affects me. This is real judges. This is what happens when your print comes up in front of people. And a print needs to communicate more than just what you saw. It's there to communicate why, why you took it and what you felt. And what is it about? That's the secret. And that's what we're here to find out from these judges, how those secrets are embedded in the prints that made the finals. Why are these images deemed to be so good? So let's get on with the last, or the last one in this little section, Portrait Individual. Thanks, judges. And thank Thank you, let's have our first print. We have Andrew, Michelle, Gary, Natalie and Michael. And Natalie's going to tell us what's the first thing that struck her as she looked at this image. I think it's, it's the pose. I mean, there's a lot that I love about it. But for me, it's the pose. I mean, it's an unexpected placement of the arms, but I am so intrigued. I love it. Thank you. Gary, do you want to unpack the construction of this image? Yeah, there's a lot to unpack. I uh, only got a couple minutes, so let's, <laughs> let's stick to the big stuff. First of all, um, the, the color choice here is red is almost always going to be the thing you look at first. And so it's very, very bold and striking. And... But as, and obviously that takes up a lot of your attention immediately, but what I love is the orientation. I love that kind of inception. It's like, let's just turn everything on its side and it creates something completely different. And it's done so well that I'm not really thinking about that the subject is likely on the ground. And so I think that that is all cleverly handled. What I really love about the lighting from a technical standpoint is it's relatively soft, right? The contrast ratio isn't very high, but the, the creator of this image has also managed to highlight the musculature really, really well, even with that soft light. So there's a lot going there. And somehow, the, the motion of it is just really, really compelling. There's a lot to really love about this image. And from a technical standpoint, it's brilliant. And, and, and finally, the paper that this was printed on is absolutely perfect for, to manage the level of contrast. And when you get to this high level of print, you actually pick the paper before you print the image. And then you have to know how to adjust the image so that you get the right level of contrast in the paper. Is it gonna soak up a lot of black? Then you need to bring your black point up so that it doesn't block up. And so the, all the way to the final version of this is just masterful and really well done. And I wish I had taken it. Just quickly, you just mentioned, you know, it might soak up a lot of black. Just give us a very quick example of the paper and, sure. and when that happens. Okay, if you've got a textured matte fine art paper, uh, it takes a lot more ink to lay down to make something present there. And so if you've got really dark, contrasty blacks in an image, um, it's going to just not show. The dynamic range of that type of paper is much smaller than your screen. So it'll look great on your screen. You print it and you go, oh, that looks awful. And so you have to really, and I learned this actually from the great Cheryl Walsh over here, is that you start by picking the paper 
and then you tailor the image to the paper. And I even know artists who pick the paper before they design the image. They design an image to print on a specific paper, and that's some like high level stuff. And I think that's kind of real. It's nerdy as hell, but it's really cool to be at that level. And and this is the perfect paper to get contrast without losing anything, and it's not so uh, saturated with color that it overwhelms the rest of the image. It's just really beautifully chosen. Thanks, Gary. Michelle, just a quick closing comment. At, at first glance, you're like, you think, is that a jump? And then you realize it's, it's almost too graceful to be a jump, so then you, like, you have to really think about it because the placement of the feet are so perfect, the knees, the detail in the, in the muscle, and then you realize that, yes, she's holding that pose, and then it gets even more complicated, like, and the hair is falling, and then the fabric is so beautiful, and so when you have to stop and think about, how was that done? And then you think, I wish I did that. You know it's really good. Yeah. yeah. It's a great example of the of the energy of the dance. Yeah. yeah. Next print, please. <coughs> this has a title, Miss Mandarin. Andrew, first thought. Connection is is so striking. Um, I, I just I can't take my my eyes away from it. The secondary to that is is these these colors are very difficult to manage and handle. Um, not even in post production, but in camera itself, um, it's so beautifully well done. I'm just looking up to look at the texture and and the detail and everything. Um, there's nothing out of gamut when it comes to these colors, and I think that is um, really well handled. But but the impact is is that gaze, like wow. Thank you, Michael. Maybe a bit more detail on that. Yeah, um, <coughs> it's so uh, an, a, a, so much to go over. Um, a, almost a shadowy vignette that kind of follows the subject. It's very heavy on the bottom, and then it appears again just behind the shoulders, which is. It's just, it took me a minute, and then, and then I got there, and then again, the, it, the vignette completes up top. Just absolutely magical. That's uh, almost a first for me, seeing something like that. And then the handling of the wardrobe itself, the, the outfit, uh, it's not perfect without, without any wrinkles, but it just, they just kind of complement it. You see one on the other side, it, it's kind of there on the other side, and, and it almost becomes a, a mildly symmetrical, handling of that and so even that part was just so well done in such a simple image. Michelle, just a closing comment. I actually really enjoy the roundness of the headpiece with the roundness of her hips and that it mimics that mandarin orange. Like I just think it really works. Yeah. Thank you. Great comments. Next print please. Take the microphone, Gary, because when you're laughing like that, we all want to. We all want to know why. <laughs> oh man, um, God, we get so caught up in being moody and, and emotional sometimes that every once in a while, a, a good bit of, of whimsy is just what just what the doctor ordered. And so, um, my first impression of this is, I, I really love how the expression just makes it. And everything in the image from the leading lines to the level of contrast that is handled on the subject background relationship, you just go end up on that person's face. And then, and that's when I just burst. I lean, I was like, what is this all about? Oh, and then it hits you. <laughs> it's just brilliantly designed. Good, good, good design. Thank you. Andrew, tell us a bit more about the construction. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, thought and detail that goes into the lighting here. Um, that light source um, would provide a nice soft light, but not enough to handle the entire room. The shadows are handled so delicately on the left hand, left uh, hand of the frame, uh, the detail and, and you know throughout. So obviously, kind of possibly a nice fill behind the the, the maker using that light as an access point and, and controlling that really well. Um, I'd like to call to the story a little bit. This is 
obviously, you know, a very entertaining and, and laughable image, but on the juxtap juxtaposition side, you see that there's a coat on that left side, so somebody's missing. There's two chairs, there's coats, she's wearing one, there's one hanging, you know, so she's been waiting for somebody for a long time to come home, and it may never happen, and which may cause that deliriousness over time, and um, that's, that's well thought out. Yeah, no, nice pick up. Natalie, final comment? Yeah, when you really look up close, there is a portrait in the back suitcase that's really worth looking at. And I, it's easy to miss, but now that you see it, can't unsee it, it's magnificent and it's masterfully composed. Well, jo well done, it, it really deserves to be here. Thanks, Natalie. And for those who are fairly new to panel judging, you'll notice how often the judges are walking up to it. And it's not just to check on the editing or the print quality, but it's also to look for any subtle breadcrumbs or little little pieces of symbolism or, or detail that's going to contribute to the overall narrative and take away from the image. It's Quick like she's gone it. mad waiting for him to come home. <laughs> Maybe she's mad because he hasn't come home yet. <laughs> Next print, please. Thank you, judges. This has a title, After a Billion Rooftops. And I'll get your first impressions, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, um, you know, this is sort of the, the behind the scenes, right? We, we have the, the story of Santa and it's always so magical and, you know, he's tireless and he comes around year after year, but then, you know, it's like, what if Santa was, was, was not an imaginary? And there's, there's so much weight and, and heaviness, and you can only imagine like everything that, that he's had to go through in, in such a short period of time. That what a brilliant way to tell uh, an amazing little story. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Gary, do you want to tell us a bit more about how this is done? Yeah, um, I had a, one of my first teachers told me that a great portrait artist can make one light look like ten and make ten lights look like one, and this is exactly what that's about, and you can't for sure tell how this was lit, but it's got just the right amount of separation from the background. The, the positioning of the key light is a little high to cast those shadows down, not to light the eyes, but to accentuate the lines in the face. And there's just, just a really simply and beautifully done the, the, what is supposed to be snowy white on the, on, the, on the fringes of Santa's outfit, it matches the gray hair. Um, and I, I didn't even need the title, you know what I mean? And that's how strong this is. It's just, you just don't need the title because Santa tired, man. <laughs> like, he, <laughs> you like to think he puts on a Hawaiian shirt and hits Disney World after, but no, he very sits in a room and cries. And, uh, and this is just, it's powerful. It's, it's a great foil to the traditional whimsy of the Santa Claus story. So I love this very much. Thank you, Gary. Andrew, a closing comment? I think the, the best points have been covered. I, I, I really akin this story to, you know, the spirit of Christmas and how it is just, you know, muddying over time and, and losing its, its, its brightness. And it's, this is so, this is so intriguing. Yeah, well, I, well, well done to the maker. I just wanted to compliment the narrative detail that is the soot that seems to be on the hands and the jacket. All the whites have been sullied by that climbing down all those chimneys. <laughs> Time for a dry cleaner. Okay, next print, please. Yeah, <laughs> throw it away, start again. <laughs> We'll have a first impression from you, Michelle, please. But I feel like, like, like there's a coolness to this. There's the, those blues and then the simplicity of this, you know, white wrap and her eyes are closed. Like, it, it's just really interesting. The white hair, the, and then that pop of red lip. This is just a really interesting, wow portrait that makes you kind of shiver. So maybe the impact has got a lot to do with the intrigue. Yeah, 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 for sure. Let's see if we can unpack that intrigue, Michael. Yeah, it's it's very uh, like it. There's there's softness and a little bit of curve that's happening just in the hairline, and then all of a sudden you just get to this almost stark figure. Uh, no limbs or anything of, of that nature. I love the 
the subtlety of, uh, I'll call it, I don't know if it's paper, but the, the outfit, the way, the way that it wraps in, it doesn't connect absolutely perfectly. At the bottom, it's giving me a little bit of shadow that, that kind of is, is playing in there. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those that you really need to sit almost for a few minutes and collect your thoughts and then say like, all right, let's have a conversation because essentially there's, there's nothing to it, but yet there's so much to it. So I'll, I'll let somebody else cover that as well. Natalie. Yeah, what a brilliant maker. Uh, I can't imagine waking up as this maker and making this decision to create it. I'm really, really wowed by the thought and creativity and creating an image that doesn't exist in the world. That's what I love to see. Really, really beautifully done. I just wanted to add that the simplicity of the styling tells us so much about somebody who we can hardly see anything of apart from that face. Uh, next print, please. We're seeing some great uh, prints here today. And again, just a reminder that what you're seeing is the cream of the competition. These are the images that made the finals and were then, in, then invited to submit a print into the finals to be assessed by our panel of uh, judges. And you, as an audience here and, and online at home, have now had the privilege of coming into that inner sanctum from the past and listening to why these images got here, why these prints have made this level, and then watching as these judges move towards a final decision, which we'll see them do a little bit later. First thoughts, Andrew. I mean, the styling in this is sublime. The detail in, in everything that we see here this isn't just an everyday costume. This is something that's been pieced together with a lot of thought. Um, and the, the emotion and the tension in holding this sword and drawing it out, I almost, I almost wonder where we're at in life when we're, we're at this point. Brilliant. Thank you. Michelle, can you tell us a bit more about how you go about doing these sorts of images? Yeah, I'm, I think for any maker, it's you know designing the concept in your mind first, finding the inspiration, then designing the costume and then the lighting that would go with a period piece like this. There's so much to, to, to light and accent here. I, I think even that the hair is not perfect is so purposeful. Um, there's, you know, loops of hair on the shoulder. Like it hasn't been made so perfect. Like it's not supposed to be perfect. And I think those are all decisions that are made in, prior to even constructing this. And then, you know, lighting a face with a hat like that in that direction is not easy um, because that light has to come from almost underneath that hat yet still cast a shadow to define that cheekbone, which is not easy to do. So everything in here is just so carefully thought out. Closing comment, Gary? Yeah. Oh. Happy to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's been well covered. It's obviously, you know, fantastic. I want to bring the attention to two small things in particular. One is all of these subdominant elements could distract from the subject. And the creator here has used um, burning, dodging, toning, and depth of field to really control that to where you just still go straight to the eye and to that highlight on, on the cheekbone. And the depth of field, whether in camera or also enhanced in post-production, almost simulates like kind of a large format wonkiness to it that you would get with a larger format camera. And so uh, I think it's all done to give it kind of this timeless piece. In addition, this is a really phenomenal example of a cinematic color grade. And the, the, it's generally, they call that the 90-10 rule. 90% 90 one color, 10% all the other colors as accents. And so this is a really like pro level cinematic color grade that just enhances the, the mood of this. To a, to, it's a good example of something really technical, adding a lot of emotion to it. Thank you, great comments. Just learned something new sitting next to you. <laughs> next print, Subdominant please. color grade. This has a title, Despair. I'm gonna go back to you, Gary, because you, as soon as the image came around, you, you made a comment and obviously hit you like that. Uh, yeah. There's a, there's a ton of technical stuff that makes this good, but what a subject and what an emotion and the, the, the ability to convey such a, like my heart beat faster when I saw it, and the person's face isn't even in it. That's, 
that's that's craftsmanship. That's that's just beautiful. So I'll I'll let somebody else unpack it. But that's I was feeling it like it just the hands, the body. It says it all. You don't even need to see the expression, and that's very unusual. Natalie, I'm struggling not to cry. <laughs> that's why I picked you. Michael, you give us a bit, and then I'm going to come back to Natalie, give her a chance. But I yeah. just want to point out, that's why these people judge. I said it earlier. There's a passion in these judges, and you've got that passion in you when you create, and that's why these people can give you something that's valuable to take away and come back with better images, whether it's for awards or just for your clients or for yourself. And that's why this is such a great space to be for the moment. Thank you, Michael. If you unpack, and I'll come back to Nat. Yeah, um... <laughs> Uh, and, and I'll, I'll leave the bulk then to her. Uh, uh, I, I love that, that the story is, is not in the face. Here we are in the portrait division. Uh, the, uh, the Sure, there's the hand on the face, but I, you spend your entire time just looking around the subject's body, looking at sort of like the striations, everything, the outfit, the attire. The imperfection of sitting on one stool with a little specular highlight versus the other stool, it's just like, oh, these are the two that, that were here right now and and that that imperfection is absolutely what's making it perfect all all of these flaws the hairs that are that are flying away that there's there's one tiny one in, in going up in the top of the print that could have easily been removed but but it's there and and it's the story is is in the subject and not in the face and it's amazing that we have zero connection to them but we absolutely understand it and that it's emotionally resonating with everybody Thank you very much. You okay, Natalie? Yeah. Thank you. Just think about the hardship of, of life and the struggles. And you could see her body, I mean, up close, and you see, gosh, uh, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to see, like, her torso, and you could just feel everything. I mean, I'm, I'm shaking. That. Thank it's just such a powerful image and I connect with it so well from having friends with struggles and I think the maker did an incredible job with no expression and, and you just feel everything that she's gone through. And I love the, the muted like black and white, the warm black and white. I think it, everything was handled so well. I, I, I just can't even collect my thoughts. So someone can give the final. I cut. think I think you did a great job. Okay. <laughs> you really did. We 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 are not in and we're not in an industry or a medium that's designed to impress our friends. We're dealing with an industry and a medium that's designed to communicate. And when you can communicate emotion and feeling, then you're starting to move forward to a higher place. Well done. Next print, please. Can, can, do you want to? Can oh, I just sorry, have, did you want to add I something? Just yeah, put that back. Sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, the story in this comes from a, a story I read recently about um, an anorexic woman who was given permission by her doctors for um, assisted suicide. And it was a huge controversy because um, it's allowed for people who are terminal and been battling diseases for such a long time. And when I first read the story, um, I really resonated with that level of despair that this particular person had been in and out of rehab for anorexia her entire life and was still suffering and just was in despair and wanted to be done. And that image connected me so deeply to that story. And I feel like that's that story. I'm done, I'm done fighting. The despair is too great. I just wanna be done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Next print, please. Andrew, first comments. Uh, to me, this seems like a nice little story of, of someone writing a love letter, letter in the morning, you know, and, and um, the use of the, the, the background and just having all of the lines kind of just systematically leading into our subject um, is, is, is very powerful. It just, no matter where I, I start, 
I'm ending up with that subject right into the expression of what she's doing. Thank you. Uh, Gary, can you tell us a bit more about this construction of an image? Like yeah, I, I'm always delighted by a something in the portrait category that was taken with a wide-angle lens, because I think that that sort of just flies in the face of you know, uh, gatekeeperism. <laughs> so I just, but it also brings a lot of challenges because you become responsible for every element in the view of the camera as the photographer, as the creator with control. And so just to draw attention to a couple of neat things, the color is managed so beautifully as it goes away from the light into a cooler temperature and gets warmer as you get towards the window, which is the light source there, which I really enjoy. And there are all kinds of lovely little details, like you've got the tea service over here on the left, and it's a really cool sort of cultural time capsule of how well ordered everything is. And as I look through it, I'm just looking at little things to enjoy. And then I really started to smile when I was like, look at the books back there. The books are even lined up in height order and pointing right at your subject, the leading lines from the window. So this is a beautifully designed portrait and, and masterfully executed, enjoying it very much the more I look at it. Thank you, Gary. A final comment, Michael? Final comment. Yeah, I, I love the, the, this image. If you told me that, oh, you know, I just was walking by and took a candid shot of a slice of life, that it's, that it's completely believable in, in that sense that, that this could be 100% reality. I could see this happening in a movie scene and um, not know or care, like is that a strobe from the outside or is that real sun? I, I just love the fact that I'm getting just a, a quick glimpse into somebody's life for a brief moment. Thank you. Next print, please. Thanks, judges. Great comments. Okay, Natalie, I'm going to get you to go first. I, I want to I want to flip this every which way. I want to see it vertical, and then I want to flip it the other way. Um, I love that I want to see this three ways, not four, three. <laughs> so uh, to me, it's the maker's decision to uh, present it like this that that was the most impactful for me initially. Okay, um, Michelle, want to unpack this a little for us? Yeah, there's so much. Um there's so much to look at here. I mean, th it's almost like a double or triple reflection going on in the water, like the reflection right next to her eye, and then it's again repeated. Um, yeah, and at first you do kind of do one of these because it feels like it should be vertical, but it really, it isn't. And just, you know, all the lighting details on the the fan around her face and the little details around her head and just how even in the water, um, the reflection it's not it's not too hot it like your face just keeps coming back to that to that place where it actually meets the water next to that right eye right eye yeah that's the right eye um, it's just it's it's really interesting uh, Andrew no Natalie no I, I really really love the lighting I love the lighting on her eyes her nose her her right side cheek, her arm, the lighting is exquisite. I mean, I'm really, really curious how the maker lit this because of me wanting to look at it three different directions. I'm trying to, I can't figure out where the lighting is and it's just masterfully retouched. Um, I, I love this, this is like a piece of art. I wish I looked like this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm enjoying a narrative here. Look, it, this is, feels like it's flipped and we're being forced to feel like, we see, how do I put this? If it, living, in, living in Australia, one of the things you sometimes find is every now and then someone produces a map where Australia's in the top half and you guys are down the bottom, whereas you guys always pr put us down under. And, and like when you look at this, I look at it and it's like, okay, if I lived in the water, if my world was water, for me, my world is water. So one way for you to understand and come into my world is I'm going to put, put my world above your world. It's being lit by your world where the sun is. It's coming up from underneath. But even that ball of water that seems more struck concrete that she's holding onto, she is in control of that world. That's her world, the water. Everything about all the details on her um, styling is all coral and shell-like. Even the earrings, it's, it's all about uh, a marine person. And I think that's just a, a bit of a narrative that's coming through and being done very well. 
Next, next print, please. That's okay. <laughs> This, <laughs> this has a title, COVID in style. Michelle, what's your first thoughts on this one? Into the microphone. Sorry. Um, just the impact of the black and white and then, like, all these gloves coming out of our head. Like, it It makes me feel awkward. Like, in, in not a bad way, like, a, a good way that makes you go, huh, like, wh what does this all mean? Like, it's, it's sometimes it's a awkward that pushes you to a point where you have to examine it more, which is what good art is supposed to do. So I think that's what it's doing. Um, I do think, overall... It's well done. The lighting on her face is really well done. Um, the lighting on, you know, the gloves. It's it's interesting because it's well done. I mean, I don't I don't ever even know if I've ever seen like black gloves. So they must have been painted. Um, I don't know. Do they make black gloves? So that's, they do? that's what's hitting yeah. you first. Is yeah, I'm like that, questioning. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Andrew, can you maybe unpack a little bit further for us? Yeah, so I, I, I'm looking at this and, and kind of, you know, how, how, how are we lighting this? There's obviously a, a main fill light, and then we have a, a light back there to just give us some texture, some backlight to texture her spine and her back. I think that's well executed. Um, the highlights are, are beautifully handled, um, con considering you know, the brightness of these gloves and, and um, the shadow and the detail in the, in the black gloves, like what a contrast and, and how masterfully, yeah, like how masterfully um, executed that is from a control standpoint. Well done. Thanks, Andrew. And Natalie, do you want to finish this one off for us? Me, I mean, I, I love her long neck and shoulders. I love the highlight down the back of her neck. So as much as it's very intriguing and like kind of um, unexpected, the gloves. I'm really drawn to how elegant and long and, and sexy the shoulder and neck is. So I think that is beautifully done at the bottom also. Thank you, judges. Great comments. Again, you've been looking at some outstanding work. These are the finalists. And, you know, if it's one of your prints that you've seen over the last 20 minutes or so, or even all day, just remember, to make this is an achievement. You've, you've had to beat some very good work to get here, and to move the judges the way they're being moved today is testament to the quality of the work that you're putting in, and that's what we're here to do, for, the, for these judges to share why it's made it, so that those others who are looking to get to this standard have half a chance and can get some of that secret sauce. Melissa, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you, thank you to our judges. Did you guys enjoy that category, Portrait Individual? All right, well now we just need a few minutes just to get our judges set up in the judging console and then as usual, we will reset over to be in front of this print gallery so the judges can take one more look at all of the images all together and we'll decide who they would like to have win this category. Uh, so give us just a couple of minutes to get set up and we'll be right back. Managing your business can be overwhelming. At Lead Savage, we make it easier by helping you get more leads, book more clients, and make more money. With Lead Savage, you'll have all the tools you need to get more leads. 
our drag and drop system helps you quickly build funnels, landing pages, and marketing emails to attract new clients, while our social media scheduler helps you be seen everywhere. Follow-up is key to booking more clients. Our all-in-one inbox lets you see and respond to inquiries no matter where they came from. Automated workflows can send personalized follow-ups and reminders, ensuring no leads slip through the cracks. You'll turn more inquiries into bookings, increasing your client base and revenue. Lead Savage helps you streamline your business, saving you time. Our analytics provide valuable insights into your marketing strategies, helping you make informed decisions that will drive your business forward. It's like having your own marketing team. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your business to the next level, Lead Savage is your all-in-one solution to getting more leads, booking more clients, and making more money. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us online. Uh, how compelling was that conversation? I have never seen such diversity in one genre uh, ever. And um, I would not want to be you guys right now. And don't, don't forget, this is the top 10 scoring images and equal scoring 10th of this particular category. So we just happen to have such a different variety of images in front of us. So I wish you, wish you luck here, guys. This is a tough one. So take your time. Take your time. When you're ready, please proceed. So for those of you who have just joined us, uh, what the uh, judges are doing now, right now, they're going to be ranking the images, what their favourite photograph is, and then working sort of downwards. Certainly every, everyone deserves to be there, but we have, they have to make a choice. So on their device, they'll see the images, they'll press on the images they, they prioritise, they'll go down, and then slowly, slowly will determine a definitive winner. As you'd appreciate too, if you've been to previous judgings and things like that that happened the last couple of years or actually the last couple of decades really, this process is usually done behind closed doors. We thought we'd lift the veil and show you, oh, Andrew's first, look at you. <laughs> he's like, he's off and running, I love that. Um, usually this is done behind closed doors. We want to be transparent about the process and um, enjoy the conversation about what leads the judges to really be compelled to rank these images accordingly. Remind everybody always that we keep it a surprise. Yeah. So guys, the one thing that of course we don't reveal right now, we want to be transparent, but that transparency of who came first, second and third, and eventually the grand will be determined obviously progressively, and we'll share those results tomorrow night at awards night, so 8 p.m. tomorrow night. And for those of you watching online, you can actually join us like you're joining us right now. Let's refresh. Okay, so we have our rankings. I don't know about you guys, but are you like shrug the person next to you and sort of say, hey, I think this one is going to win and you sort of do your own little bets and stuff like that. Fantastic. <laughs> well, it's Vegas, I guess. <laughs> All right, fantastic, guys. We've determined the winners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Level Up Imaging, for sponsoring this category. And don't forget to take it, check out the winners in the award ceremony, as we just discussed. And that will be in the Grand Ballroom down the hall there on the left-hand side. So now we, we're going to continue on the next particular um, category. I want to acknowledge someone in the house right now. I haven't seen her for several years. Um, there's a legend in this room. Bambi Cantrell is in the house. And if you don't know who Bambi Cantrell is, yes, round of applause. <laughs> I haven't seen Bambi for several years, but if you are in the wedding and portrait industry, you either have indirectly or directly been influenced by her. She's a powerhouse. She's incredible. So thank you so much, Bambi, for supporting us. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to be um, taking a short little break and back to the ne next category very shortly. Thank you so much.
Making someone feel beautiful is the power we have at the camera. That's the power of a good photographer, is what you can give back to your subject, which may be the first time in their life that they view themselves as beautiful. So you wanna be a better visual storyteller. This class is about storytelling portraiture, and I'm gonna guide you in the facets of doing effective portraits of another human being. How to speak with light. Light is our language. It's how we describe to the rest of the world that which we are seeing in front of us. Light is a very human thing. I use terminology that I, you could pull right from a bodice-ripping romance novel. I describe light as slashing, as angry, as baroque, as sensual, as voluptuous, as beautiful, as cuddly, as fierce or evil. Light has all of the qualities of written or spoken language. We just use it to speak with a camera. So I'm gonna run through all of these facets. Getting a location, assessing that location, getting permits, permission. Always remember this, access is everything. You can have the fanciest camera in the world. If they don't let you in, you can't use them. Lessons learned as a young photographer are lessons retained as an older photographer. I got assigned to a job. I did so poorly on this job, he reassigned another photographer to go out and shoot it again while I was in transit back to the office. When I came back to the office, he had taken the three rolls that I had shipped in and he stood up in the middle of the newsroom and he threw it at me and he hit me in the chest. And he said, what is this with this garbage? He goes, when will you learn how to use a flash? Big moment for me, I harked back to that and I thought, light. I really have to learn how to use light better. Nowadays, in this amazing digital world that we live in, I revel in it. If you can get somebody to stop, if you can get somebody intrigued, if you can get somebody to tilt their head and say, what's going on here? As a photographer, you've done your job. And so in a world full of rules, cameras give us a potential to break a rule beautifully. And yes, I have done large production work, but what this class will tackle in straightforward terms is how effective you can be with available light, with one light, two lights, minimum kit, basic approaches, camera, lens, light, at its simplest, most directed aspects. This is what we're about. This is our mission. No matter our equipment, big or small, expensive or not, this course will teach you how to make an effective picture of another human being. Photography is not something you do. Photography is who you are. Hi, I'm Nikon Ambassador, photographer, author, director, Joe McNally, and I will be your mentor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the live judging here at the Icon Awards and to everyone watching us online, thanks to Nikon. Uh, this is the first year we've been able to broadcast live and we're very excited about that. So we hope that all of you guys that are watching online are also enjoying it. Um, also, as you guys walk in and out of the room, you've probably noticed those amazing prints in the back of the room, and I encourage you to take an even closer look at them. Graphy Studio is our in-room sponsor, and they produce amazing wall portraits in albums, and they've brought some of them here where it's a nice, relaxed environment where you can take a closer look at some of those offerings that they have, and if you see the team back there, you can ask them questions. So huge thank you for them bringing all of that stuff over here just so you guys can take a look at it nice and in a nice relaxed atmosphere. So that's really nice. Uh, we are in the portrait division, as a reminder, portrait division sponsored by Westcott. We are about to begin the groups and families category. Uh, we are, we have, this is half the halfway point for the portrait division. There's eight categories in the portrait division. We're right in the middle. So we're very excited about getting started into this one. This category is sponsored by Aftershoot. Um, they provide an AI-based calling and editing software, which makes it super easy for you to do all of those jobs and tasks that you don't want to do and you can keep on shooting. So Aftershoot sponsored this category. I want to say a huge thank you to them for that. 
Now I'm going to turn it over to Tony Hewitt, who you have been seeing all day today and all day yesterday. He is an Icon Grandmaster and also a core part of the Icon Awards team. And he has been doing a tremendous job. I hope you guys have been enjoying all of his additional comments as much as we have, all those little gems that I always want to just record as sound bites so I can be inspired later on. So huge thank you to Tony. And we will now turn it over to you and your, your panel of judges. Thank you, Melissa. Always dress so well, don't you? Look at you. I feel like I'm on a morning show or an afternoon show. Uh, just a little reminder of the process. So what we're seeing here today, our judges are being invited to look at the positives, look at why these prints, which were originally just images that entered a digital competition, how did they get to the finals? What was it that judges who gave them a high enough score so they reached the top 10, what did they see in the image? What, what was it that they were rewarding? And so the process today is about our judges sharing from their background and experience the type of things that are grabbing their attention and causing them to give high scores. The other side of that, of course, is those images who don't get an award. They get 79 or below. And the beauty of the Icon Awards is that we're actually including that in a big part, and that is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at the trade show, you'll have the opportunity to go in there for about a four or five hour stint each day, uh, chaired by myself and Michelle Salantano over there, and we'll be sitting down with two judges or two people who are judges, and some of them will be from these panels, some that haven't been on the panels, and they'll sit down and we're going to look at a handful of prints that didn't make, or a handful of images that didn't make the finals, and they will unpack and dissect these images and look at what the flaws or the, or the, the weaknesses were, and give you some ideas on how those weaknesses can be addressed, what could be done better, what could be done different, and how you can elevate those images and those ideas to a higher standard. Now, I also want to just, again, reflect on the incredible passion and energy that your judges are giving to this process. And sitting in the room, you might hear the voices. Sometimes you can hear the emotion in the voice. Sometimes it's just because they had a late night like me, but not really. But you hear that, you can hear it, and you can see them touch their heart. This is why these people are judging, because they come to this with passion and energy. There's judges that are, or people in the room that have judged before. That energy is the same energy that's driven their photography through their career, and they've just brought it to this process. So when you feel passionate about an image, that's the... That's the battery, that's the charge, that's the source of energy that's going to take your photography to the next level when you combine it with the information that's available in a process as amazing as the Icon Award. So let's get on with the next category, which is groups and families. We are blessed to have another couple of amazing photographers and judges join us all the way from Australia. We have Kelly Brown, the amazing Kelly Brown, who's joined us. We're just lucky she's in this part of the world at the moment and she happened to drop in. And of course, equally as amazing is the incredibly talented Cheryl Walsh all the way from LA. So from two different parts of the world, they've joined us here. We have Nick from Greece, we have Sanjay from the UK, and we have Michael all the way from Illinois. Is that right? Chicago, Illinois. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, let's get on with it. We're going to look at groups and families and let's hear why these prints made the finals. So a reminder, our first judge that I'm going to hit, which is Nick, is going to tell us what was the first thing that grabbed his attention. And then I'm going to ask another judge to unpack the image, give us some information about the construction, the technique, and things like that. And a third judge will add some, some final comments. So Nick, what hit you first? Ah, celebration. I mean, that uh, this uh, happiness, joyful, even that is a hundred years club, full of energy, full passion for life. This is what impacts me first. Thank you, Nick. Sanjay. Let's break this up a bit. What, what's going on here? How do they make this work? I'm just, I'm just imagining this thing as though they were in their 30s <laughs> and then having the 30s club party. And, you know, the, the energy is the same. Probably what's inside of each of these people is the same. Um, and it's just that narrative. You know, what I love about this is that energy. And you can just kind of imagine. You can change that number and just imagine it at different stages. And I think in terms of the story, that's what I love about this. But there's a simplicity to it. You know, you've got the connections uh, with the, the ladies on the, on the, on the left-hand side of the image. You've got the lady in the middle just doing her thing. There's the one cheering with the cupcake, which was probably the drinker when she was 30. Um, it's, it's, there's a timelessness to this, even though there's a number attached to it. And that's 
what I love about this image. But you know, technically, uh, as well, there's a there's a there's a lovely softness to it, and um, with the lighting, with the posing, with just the energy, and the presentation as well. It's just a very um, light-hearted presentation to go with a light-hearted feel to the image. Okay, thank you. Michael, just a closing comment? Yeah, uh, just quick notes. I, I love the fact that the tablecloths and the background have wrinkles in them that, you know, <laughs> let's not worry about that stuff. Um, the expressions are genuinely believable. And then the story, I think, uh, at least for me, begins to come together. You know, it's joyous and it's humorous, but then I, I do keep looking over at that one empty chair all the way on the right. And so that kind of, that kind of pulls my eye to, to really take me, I think, through a little bit of an emotional gamut. Thank you, Michael. And I know with every print, all of these judges want to say things and they want to keep saying things. We're going to keep moving. But uh, we're trying to pull out some of those highlights for you. And when the judges have to go and rank these, they'll be able to take into consideration those comments and also other things that they might have been thinking about themselves. We're going to move on to the next print. Thank you. So Kelly, first impact, what's the first thing that hits you with this image? Wow. And the like, wow is there is, there's a lot to this. There's, there's a whole movie here laid out in front of us in a single capture and it's very hard to do. The photographer has created a scene that's captured a moment that's that is very uncomfortable. But as judges, we are pushed to obviously read into to stories like this and sit with that level of, of uncomfortableness and, and feel it. And this is one of those that has all the feels. There's so much in it. And I keep going back to that little girl in the background who has been lit beautifully on purpose so that we are seeing her take on this. What is she seeing? What What is normal to her? She's in a little pink outfit holding a little pink bag. And I can relate to this little girl because I grew up in a, in a family environment very similar to this. So, you know, it, it is difficult to look at. But I think the photographer has captured it very well. The, the placement of the subjects off to the left-hand side um, you know, creates a whole other story to the right-hand side with the brooms and, and what the expectations are of this woman. And, you know, maybe she hasn't done her job and that's why she's in trouble. I don't understand. There's, there's obviously many reasons why um, the physical abuse happens in, in certain relationships, but I think that the placement of the subjects in terms of the technical aspects of, this, of them off to that hand, that right, let, sorry, left-hand side creates more of a story within the right-hand side of the frame. There's just a lot going on here and a lot to take in, and, you know, it's been handled really, really well. Thanks, Kelly. Let's just move on to that technical aspect. Michael, I'll get you to tell us a bit more about, you know, lighting something like this because some little tricks going on here. Yeah, lighting. Um, so the first thing that that pops out in terms of that is the the specular highlights. So the subjects, you know, they are sweat. There's there's wetness there, and that is that is not hidden at all. Um, uh, you've got light obviously coming from two two different uh, locations. Camera left essentially on the on the subjects in the foreground. Camera right on the subject that's in the background. Um, and then what what kind of struck me the most is that this isn't really a home environment this almost feels just something like that that was sought out but the beauty of it is that I can almost envision it being in a home environment but then in the imagination this is what it feels like so the the maker has sort of taken us to in that direction of giving us the literal representation of what would normally be in the subject's mind. Cheryl maybe a closing comment for us? Um, I'm really struck by the vulnerability here that woman is straight on to us. She's not looking at us. She's looking away, but um, her her body is straight on to us, and there's a vulnerability there. And then, as Kelly said, that that compositional decision, that whole right side being empty and yet so full, 
Um, and then the color. There is a green color cast. It's almost sickening to this um, scene. And then you get that little pop of pink in the back. And, um, and very well printed, beautifully done. And you would know. <laughs> you didn't hear that, did you? <laughs> I said, you said good printing, and I said, and you would know. <laughs> printing master. Next print, please. Thank you, judges. Great comments. <clears throat> this has a title, Nourish. And I'm going to go to Shell first. Shell, just tell us, what's the impact? What's the first thing that hits you on this image? That little face, that little face, and that connection, the hands, the mother's hands, the baby's hand, um, just completely leaning into her mother, that connection there, the colors, the warmth of them, and that green, um, that sort of Mother Earth feeling to it, again, beautifully printed, um, you know, the relaxation of the mother, her shoulders are down. She's not holding that baby tightly. She's just cradling. And, and it's just so well done. It's beautiful. Nick, just break this down a little bit for us. Yeah, I would like to mention about the softness of the light. But what is attracts me more is the expression of the baby and the eye contact with the viewer. And at the same time, we can see the mother She's looking down, she's feeling relaxed about the, this moment, that happiness that have, she feed, she give life to the baby. So all this uh, approach of, of uh, the, the, the timing of uh, the maker, it's stunning. Uh, Sanjay, maybe a closing comment for us? Yeah, I, th I think that all the comments have been made. It is about the connection. It's about that nourishing. The, the color palette just suits the narrative perfectly. Um, you know, what looks like a single large soft light on there just to kind of add to the softness of the, the skin tone, the feel, but even the mother's expression of just that kind of contentment, um, you know, and just satisfied that she, she's just being, they're just being. And uh, it's just a wonderful scene. Thank you. Well done. Next print, please. Okay, Michael, maybe a, what's your first thoughts in terms of what impacts you? Yeah, the, the, the first thing that, that really pulls me is just wondering, what their personal story is. So, for example, is is the is this uh, mother daughter or, uh, and or grandmother and and she is now the dancer and so she's kind of giving her the embrace of like what mom or grandma used to be and so I, I really love that that connection. Uh, there's so many beautiful elements to the actual image, and I can like my eye can wander around those for a very, very long time, but instead I just really love that in my mind I begin telling myself a story. Kelly, can you unpack the, the construction of this for us a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoy Michael's comments here in, in terms of the relationship. I love this proud mother, grandmother scenario and, um, and the placement of all the elements within this frame and how it's been brought together. It's been lit beautifully to, to be able to light both of those faces that are on completely different angles has been handled very well. Uh, the leading lines, the way that the hair f has been, you know, purposely led down the, the length of the leg there with those beautiful straight lines take you straight up into her face. And then all of the arms and hands have been, been purposely placed here to, to draw you back around within this composition. It's been set up really well as I said, the light um, has got amazing impact, especially for uh, the black and white tones that are in this image. Thanks, Kelly. Nick, a final comment? Um, uh, yeah, I would like to mention about uh, the, the print presentation, the choice of paper, plus uh, all these um, full spectrum of grayscale from pure black to pure white, uh, perfectly handled. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Next print, please. It says a title, Sisters by Heart.
first thought, Sanjay, you're moving your head and you've got that frown on your face. So what's going through your head? Tell us. I guess just with the title as well, Sisters by Heart. So does that mean they're not actually biological sisters, but they're just very good friends, almost like sisters, or are they actually sisters? But the, the harmony um, and that symmetry just in the form of the shoulders, and it's kind of they're trying to create something that visually appears like a heart, the link in the fingers, but just the interconnection between the faces. This is a really beautiful geometry to this. Um, and that lighting that kind of just pulls it in together. It's beautified, but it's anchoring, and it's kind of helping to really coalesce physically um, the two subjects there as well. But I think the more I look at it, the more I'm just eking out something in the narrative. And I think it's just one of these images I'd love to just sit and stare at for a while and try and understand. Nick, can you pack a, unpack a bit? Yeah, I would like to mention about the, the posing. It's so unusual and at the same time it's so symmetrical. And uh, the way that they created all these small triangles uh, between the elbows and the hands and the connection with the fingers, it makes me attract, uh, attract the viewer's attention so much on the, getting to the, to the point. Thank you. Michael, maybe a final, final comment? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's one of those where it's like, how many triangles do you see? Um, I, I love the beauty of the, of the frame, not just of the subjects, but the, there's, there's the highlight that goes kind of all the way around. So in the shoulder, goes on the arm, goes to the other subject's arm, curls back around. So you're being led multiple times round and round the image. And then the, the last point that I'll make is that while this is a beautiful and touching image, what I would love to see is a little behind the scenes shot of what the actual like pose looks like with all the lights on and everything because it's amazing at what it like, looks completely different, no doubt, just to get this beautiful shot in camera. Thank you, Michael. Next print, please. Thanks, judges. It's good. This has a title. Family portrait. Kelly, what's the, the impact? What's the first thing that hits you? Colours. They're so, they're so rich. They're so beautiful. The, the choice of garments in this, is it's been styled really well. But those faces on the dogs, are, I mean, the faces on the humans are, are beautiful. Um, they've been lit really well. But I keep being drawn down to those two little faces in the dogs. Um, so I think that it's got a really great story here in terms of the family aspect um, and the way that they've been placed and positioned within the frame. But I love the texture and the richness throughout this. Thank you, Kelly. Cheryl, tell us, unpack this a little bit in terms of the, the finishing and the printing. That. Yeah, there's a flatness um, to, the, you know, the monochrome colors, and then a flatness, yet a dimensionality. Um, the lighting is handled really well, but really, yeah, keep coming back to those dogs, those faces. <laughs> like, who's important in this family? <laughs> there is no doubt that those dogs um, hold, a, hold a high place of honor. But I really appreciate the amount of effort that went into the styling here. Every little detail um, has really been thought through and, um, and, and just handled so well overall. It's beautifully done. Thank you. Nick, final comment? Yeah, I would like to mention about the overall posing and um, the overall presentation. It looks like it's coming like 100 years ago when the photography we discover and could be um, a restoration from an old photo with this kind of vintage editing that the maker made. Thank you very much. Next print, please. Okay, sure, I'm gonna go back to you for impact because your hand went straight to your heart. Uh, so just tell us, what I want you to talk about is, is the impact. What's the first thing that hit you? The connection, immediately. Oh, it's all right. I can see it on your face. It's yeah, great. yeah. I mean, this is this is love. This is love. There's a, a strength and a delicacy. There, you know, the hands are touching, intertwined, but yet soft. There's a relaxation in their bodies. Just that touch to the forehead of the face, 
the colors. It's just handled so beautifully. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Cheryl. Michael, can you take us down the road of the, the construction of this image? Like yeah, and, and, and I think as, as folks view this, either online or, or in the audience, it's so easy to start coming up with your own concepts that are extremely complicated and have tremendous detail and set and things like that. But at the end of the day, uh, what really pulls us to all of the images that you see is, is emotion. And I think that what the maker did here essentially was to do something extremely simple, but very uh, well done in terms of the storytelling and just simply capturing our attention. And you don't have to go over the top. And there doesn't have to be a thousand different elements in the shot. It can just be simplicity, and that's where the beauty lies. Sanjay, a final, final comment? Yeah, I mean, this definitely deserves to be there. An image, an image I think that um, can move somebody so instantly um, <clears throat> embodies a certain simplicity to it. And there are facial micro expressions that you can't control. And this portrays that perfectly. Just a little tension around the mouth on the, the upper subject's face, a little tension around the eyes on the lower subject's face, just a little lift in the corner of the mouth. And you could break this image down just to show, just to frame the eyes and the mouth, and it tells you everything. And the hand, that part of the image just reinforces the whole thing. So it's. The power in this image is the simplicity of just those parts of the connection, I think. Yeah. Thank you, judges. Great comments. Next print, please. <coughs> Kelly, first impact, first thoughts? The connection here is really quite striking. Uh, the choice of of the jeans and then both of them without their, their shirts on, you know, he's beside her 100%. He's gone through and lived this um, breast cancer survivor's story with her. He's experienced every minute of it and you can see that in the embrace and the way that they're, they're connected with their noses touching there. I love the, the way that they've been posed. Um, the light from above lights them both beautifully but it's the, the placement of the arms that, um, you know, really draw you into that beautiful, intimate embrace. Thank you. Michael, can you take us a bit further into it? Yeah. Um, I, I love that, that there's, there's multiple images here. This, this is one of those, if you're looking at it in a movie, it starts zoomed in, so what you see is essentially the, like, upper arm and the, them touching foreheads, and then as the camera slowly backs out, it begins to reveal the true story. And, and so it's a layered story uh, within the image. Um, from a technical side, I love that the light is not this this complete beauty. It's it's a light that that kind of almost con confuses me a little bit. There's a little bit of the beauty light and a, and a little bit of the fill light, and so it it both makes you feel a, a little bit uncomfortable, but also to feel their love and connection as well. Thank you, Michael. Nick, maybe a closing comment. Yeah, for me, this. Uh this is a powerful message it's about survive, it's about life, it's about supporting. So this is what I, I got immediately when I see the image. Uh, the power of love and life. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, judges. Next print, please. Okay, Shell, first thoughts, impact. You were smiling as soon as that one was put up. Oh, just his body language. I mean, this is, is a very busy image, and yet my eye immediately went to him and then to her and her. I mean, you'd have to see this print up close. There's so much detail going on here. And the way she's looking at him, it's just, you know, there's humor, astonishment, the color is so subdued, and yet it's such a colorful image. It really is. Yeah, very Thank well done. You. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, Sanjay, let's unpack this one a bit more. Yeah, I think that also what Cheryl was saying, just following her from that, it is a colorful image, but it's colorful in its 
narrative and its story. And I think, again, it's one of these when you, you need to kind of just sit, sit with it for a while. Um, on the face of it, it looks like a, a simple complex, with two, uh, a, sim a simple concept with just two people. You've got kind of the Charlie Chaplin character, wh wh whoever he's supposed to be, and that just connection between them. But th as Cheryl was saying, the complexity of the environment as well, I think, kind of lends itself to um, d it, the structure um, of, of the image and the storytelling as well. I think the more I'm looking at it as well, I'm just trying to understand the environment, who she is, who they are to each other, why he's there, what he's looking up at, what he's reacting to, what he's responding to. Um, but technically, you know, it's, it's so nat it feels so natural and effortless. Uh, and I think that's, that's the beauty of this image as well. But, you know, I'm sh it wasn't because she's standing in the shade. So whilst there's probably a lot of daylight coming in there, it feels like it's been augmented slightly just to lift them too. So um, I think it's just that effortlessness, that visual effortlessness that, that kind of really gives this image its impact. Thank you, Sanjay. Kelly, busting to say a final comment. Uh, it's the, you know, she's selling cigarettes and he's miming, he's pretending to smoke a cigarette and she's, the expression on her face is priceless. She's like, just buy a damn cigarette. <laughs> Um, stop pretending and just come and buy a cigarette. You know, the, the story here is fun. The photographer has placed all of these, you know, incredible leading lines perfectly within the, the composition of this frame and the little pops of colour and, and the actions and the expression of what make this so colourful, like you said, Sanjay. I think the photographer's done a great job. Thank you, Kelly. Next print, please. Title, We Are Made of Stories. What impacts you first, Michael? Yeah, the, the simple yet complexity of setting up the, the background to make sure that everything is perfectly in alignment, which, which they've pretty much nailed here. And then on top of that, now go ahead and, and pose your subjects perfectly and then go ahead and light them perfectly after that. So just, just do all of those things perfectly and then you've got your image here. Okay, Shell, you mentioned a few things there, lighting and construction of the image. Yeah, the, the color harmony, the warmth, um, the warmth of the books and their skin and then that green, that beautiful green. Um, the styling is all very well put together and the lighting ha is handled very well that um, lighter color dress could really have overpowered um, the image and so it was handled very well. Can you, just on the lighting, you said it's been handled well, can you just maybe expand on what makes it, what, what makes you say it's handled well? In what way has it been handled well? Well, it's a large, soft light source, seemingly, and yet the shadows say so much. So, um, it easily could have been overpowered with light. There's details in the shadows, um, and yet the highlights on their face, and without blowing out those books in the back, mm. um, the direction of the light, yes. and then the control of the light. Yeah, very well done. Yeah, that direction of the light is actually bringing out so yeah. much textual information that's important. Yeah, it's to the easy narrative. just to, you know, light everything, and then yeah. you don't get those. Um, the story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, final comment, Nick? Um, yeah, the, the, the retouching of the maker and also the, the way that he's uh, editing the photo. Uh, or so her, or they. Or, or they, they. Uh, so um, you can see the softness on uh, the dresses, on the flowers, on the background, and also at the same time the softness of the faces. So it's very, very well handled of the final product. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Good comment. Next print, please. What's the first thing that hits you, Sanjay? The two expressions. Um, 
just the pride and the power in the mother's expression and that gentle delicacy in the, in the young girl's expression, but the connection as well. And you can almost imagine this little girl growing up to be her mother, you know, that kind of, she's going to grow from this gentle, delicate, you know, little human to this big, powerful, um, nurturing, nourishing, protecting um, being on the left-hand side of the image, but just with so much beauty and poise as well. I think that's, that's the biggest impact for me, is that poise. Thank you. Um, Nick, can you unpack this one a little bit further for us? Yeah, um, the, the posing, the posing of the, of the mother. And, uh, she's, uh, we can realize that she's uh, in pregnancy, so, and for me, the expression of the, the small little kid gives me more information, something like, um, do you know that it's someone coming, maybe became the replacement of me, or is gonna be the new queen instead of me? And I, ha I can see the smile of the, of the proud mother and the, the, the small fear on the little girl. So this makes me create the story in my mind about the image. Excellent. Cheryl, you have a, a, last, a last comment? <coughs> The longer I look at this, the more I see the secondary story here, which is this mother, she's got this. She has this strength, this comfort. She's holding this little girl who, who does, who has a sense of fear and trepidation, and she is quite literally sitting on her sibling. Um, it's hard to see, but you know, there's definitely a, a, another baby coming. Um, so the confidence of that mother, uh, She's got this covered. She's taking care of this and the strength and yet delicate. And I love that balance. Thank you, Cheryl. Let's have the next print, please. <laughs> okay, Kelly, you smiled straight away. What's going on? What did you notice? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> What mother doesn't feel like she's being pulled in a million directions? Um, she's juggling it all and she's doing it, I'm not going to say effortlessly, but she's doing it. And she's standing her ground, that one solid leg anchoring her down there. I think the, the hands coming in from both sides of the frame and pulling her have been placed, you know, really strategically. And it's been lit really well so that it draws us into the expression on her face. You know, the way that she's embracing that child across her chest and it's covering all the bits. You know, she's a woman, like, what do they say? I am woman, hear me roar. She's, she's roaring on the inside here and she's just going about her day um, I, this, yeah, I love the colour of the background. It works really well here. And the, the placement of her in the middle of this frame, it just creates this beautiful balance. Michael? Yeah. Um, one of the, the, the best parts, once, once I go from the expression in the arms, is the, the like, a baby that's being posed and how awkward that is, that, that neck that's completely turned in this arm that's, that's sticking out. And it's like, this is fine. This is totally fine. I got, we got all this. And baby's good. I'm good. We're all good. Go ahead. Take whatever you need. I'm picking up too that there's, the expression in this image is coming completely from the body and there's nothing in the face. And I've got to tell you, I looked at that face and I saw my daughter with her three kids where she has that blank look on her face and can't wait till 7.01 in the evening. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a lasting impact on it. But it's, again, and a good example of simplicity having impact. Next print, please. <coughs> Sanjay, what uh, grabs you first? What grabs me is the, um, the interplay between the architecture and the hierarchy in the image. You know, you've, you've got this beautiful young woman coming up the stairs. Um, I'm, I'm guessing what's on the start of uh, a wedding event or something like that. Um, and, you know, the, 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 two, the two maternal figures standing at the top of the stairs. Um, 
looking down with sort of uh, with pride, but also a certain amount of trepidation towards what's coming in life, kind of moving forward as she's climbing the stairs of life, you know. Um, but it's, it's so beautifully presented. And just like life, there's more than one way to go. Um, and, and she has two ways that she can climb up. You know, and there's two directions, there's two people waiting. Uh, it's just, I think the, the metaphoric structure of the image is really the thing that's kind of pulling me in and you know, slowly revealing different possible narratives in the image, you know? Yeah, well said. Michael, can you unpack this in terms of the construction of the image a bit more, please? Yeah, and, and one thing to keep in mind is that this isn't just a, a like studio backdrop where we can have our lights and it's a piece of cake to, to have them not be in the frame, but here you're lighting subjects that are a decent amount apart, and uh, so there's a, a colossal amount of control of the light that has to happen along with the ambient light as well. It does change a little bit, so it's, it's a little bit flatter on the subjects up top and you kind of start there. That is actually where I land first. Then what I love is that the staircase comes in towards the camera, so the image comes towards you, but then the subject, then those rails lead you right back down. So you start back, you come forward, and then right back into the second subject that's at the bottom. And so I think that that was absolutely beautifully handled. Thank you, Michael. Cheryl, maybe a last comment? What a beautiful piece of artwork to have. This is timeless and, and a fair family heirloom immediately. And, and the value of this print, it's just stunning. Thank you, Cheryl. You know, watching you, you, the way the judges are talking, and we've got three comments most of the time, and it's replicating, it's hoping, hoping, hope, let me start again. I hope it helps you get in the heads of judges because the first comment that we're asking from our judges is what's your first impact? What's the first thing? And that replicates the action that a judge often takes to move in towards the print, to sort of follow in what is dragging me in? What's important? What's the first thing that's hitting me? The second judge is opening up the story, breaking down the image, looking at its quality. And that replicates the judge having a little bit more time once they've been drawn in to go, right, why have I been drawn in? What works? What works really well? Is it a strong image? And the third judge replicates the chance the judge has had when they sit back and they assess and process all of that information and they start to sum up their, their final thoughts. So that's why you judges are doing that in that order to help our audience both here and at, at home. Uh, how's that Guinness going, Scott? Um, <clears throat> to understand when you create an image or a print for competition, what is the process that judges are going to go through and how can I make sure that my, my images uh, are complementary to that process and have their best chance? Judges, awesome job, great commentary and, and, and I'm sure there's so much information that's going to help our uh, photographers and, and entrants in the future create award-winning images because, again, everything we're seeing today is a finalist. It had to get to the top. And in these categories here, it's a big pool of images and prints that had to be, uh, you had to get to the top of. Melissa, we're going great. This is great stuff. Over to you. How did you guys enjoy that category, you guys? Is that good? Thank you so much to our judges in the groups and families category. We are going to take a very quick break. We're just going to get our judges set up uh, in their judging console. They're going to log in, and then they're going to reset and head on over to our print gallery, where they'll take one last look at all of the images, take their time, look at them all together, and then decide who they would like to see win in this category. As a reminder, uh, this is the first time that we've allowed you into that process. Normally, we empty the room, and we we close all the doors and we thought there's no reason not to so we're keeping the whole thing open so that you guys can see the entire process from beginning to end the only thing we're not telling you is we're not going to tell you who wins for a second or third um, and that's just to save the surprise because it makes it that much more exciting tomorrow night at the award ceremony so no one's going to know the judges don't even know uh, it's just the admin team that will know who gets it so you guys have to find out tomorrow night with everyone else in the meantime sit tight we're going to just get set up very quickly we'll be back in two seconds
This is a real B&H birthday story. We've been known for our customer service since 1973. Looking good, fellas. And today we're 50. In five decades, we've watched creativity transform from 8mm to 8K, from dark rooms to digital, from BHS to YouTube, from 34th Street to bhphoto.com. From now to the future, we're here for you. B&H, your creative partner since 1973. Thank you so much. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much. Kelly, we'll just get you back there for a moment. Almost there. <laughs> Thank you. What a compelling conversation. I, I, I love this industry. I've been, in, I've been doing it for three decades, and it never ceases to excite me about when I see beautiful photographs and I see the community just rally around us like they have and just sharing these beautiful works. So, guys, judges, what I'd like you to do, take your time, have a look at them. What would you like to see represent this category? Go for it. Nice and close, take your time. And just as a reminder, I know we're dying to all see these up close. Um, we've been taking them down pretty quickly so that we can get ready for the next category um, because they're being hung right now in the print gallery. But just a reminder, you can see these up close all week in the print gallery that's on the trade show floor. And what the guys have done this year that are working really hard over these last two days is they're actually different from previous years. They're grouping all the images by category. So if you remember, if you've ever walked in the print gallery before, it's just kind of all mixed up and you just kind of walk through and try to see what you see. Um, the images will now be grouped by category. So you can see what you're seeing here all together on the print gallery. And that took a lot more work for them to do. And they had to you know, do all the math and figure out how much space they needed. But they've done it all and they're working on it now. So it's pretty cool. Greeks pioneer again. We invented everything, and you're right. You're right there with me. That's it. I'm Greek Australian. I can say that. It's all good. <laughs> but I wouldn't go. But I wouldn't go. Kelly, thank you, Michael. Wouldn't you love to be one of us three right now? Oh, that's really sad. <laughs> it's not sad, it's really true. It's Everyone's just wanting to see what's happening here. Tomorrow night, we'll let everybody know. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, guys. Uh, if you're here in the room right now, we have uh, an incredible awards night planned and an after party, which is really exciting. And certainly for those of you at home, can join us online as you're doing right now. Our after party features one of my favorite performers here in Vegas. Um, we were really lucky to get her and her band, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm very excited. You guys have to make sure you stay. All right, we have our placings. There's always a few of us here, so we can verify the winners. Can I tell them who won? No. <laughs> a group or a family won. Oh. I'm just letting you know. You see what I did there? Yeah, I did. All right, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you again to, for, um, <laughs> to Aftershoot for sponsoring this category. Thank you so much for your support. We're going to transition now to the next category, which is boudoir and fine art nude. Just give us a couple of minutes. We'll be back in a second. Thank you so much. Thank you.
All right, now welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Jerry was just talking about uh, the book, the Icon Awards book that is going to that is available for purchase, and how if you scored an 80 or above, you're going to be in that book. Little side note: uh, we are going to have a our own copy the the book that we got for ourselves available at our booth. If you're in the book, we'd love for you to sign it for us. So if you come by our booth, which is the Icon Awards booth at 1401, we'll have it set up. We'll have some pens there, and it would be our honor if you would sign where your photo is in the book. We would love to have that. So please come on by if you're in there, so that you can do that. Okay, we're back everyone. This is the portrait division sponsored by Westcott. Uh, the next category that we have in here is the boudoir and fine art nude category. Uh, what we're going to see now is a series of images that feature nude people, uh, or it can be couples as well, or multiple people. It can be semi-nudes, implied nudes, stylized nudes. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that no composites are allowed in this category. We're in the portrait division. No composites are allowed in the portrait division, so likewise in this category. The boudoir and fine art nude category is sponsored by Lead Savage. Lead Savage is an amazingly powerful tool that you guys should check out. It's an all-in-one marketing and automation platform for photographers. They created it for photographers to make it so easy for you to get leads, find leads, follow up with them, book your clients, manage your clients. It's incredibly powerful. You might have heard their name because they are also sponsoring the after party at the awards ceremony tomorrow night after the awards ceremony. Uh, so huge thank you to Lead Savage for also sponsoring this category. Now we have our panel of judges ready to go. They're ready to look at this next set of images, so we'll turn it over to Tony Hewitt. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Melissa. Okay, we have Michelle, Sanjay, Kelly, Natalie, and Michael, and we're ready to get into this next one, Boudoir and Fine Art Nude. Let's see what they're gonna tell us about why these images made the finals. First print, please. This has a title, Queen. What impact did you first, Kelly? This has a lot of impact, but the beautiful colours in the lighting on the sides of the face there, I'm just drawn in. It's definitely hit the, the wow factor for me and just the way that the colours in the, 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 I'm not quite sure what you call what she's wearing. It's a garment, it's a, it's a, a type of dress, but the colours that, that tie beautifully from that throughout that lighting are, are just sublime. Sanjay, can you pull this apart a little and tell us what's going on here? The base of the image is just the power, the expression, her poise. And then it's slowly embellished with the garments, the colours. The, the lighting is, as Kelly says, kind of augmenting and reinforcing the colours that she's wearing. Then she's embellished with gold. And as a queen, her hair, the, the gold element going through the hair kind of represents the the crown of the image. So kind of taking it uh, step by step to actually craft the image, it, it's, this is how uh, it appears to me that this image is kind of layered through the image and is constructed in situation, but also when you look at the image, you kind of read into that depth as well. Natalie, some final thoughts? I mean, I, I'm really drawn into the earrings, the lips, the eyebrows, so I keep kind of circling around and then the element around her head, so I feel like I'm moving through just on the gold aspect. And I, I and appreciate what everyone else said, but I'm kind of following the gold and, and that kind of keeps me here and that's my lasting impression. It's, it's got a strong narrative about womanhood, but it's also got a strong cultural narrative, you know, which I find quite, quite fascinating. Next print, please. This has a title, Zebra. Natalie's smiling and nodding. So what's the first thing that's going through your mind there, Natalie? I mean, there's certain like rules. You don't like cut people off in certain places. However, I love that they cut this off in all the worst places. I, it's unexpected, so I'm really appreciating their uh, intentional crop on this. Just kind of a jarring impact. Yeah. Grabbed you, yeah. yeah. Kelly, can you unpack this for us a little? 
Yeah, the way that they have used light here to, to not only light the body, but also create those beautiful shadows um, that that create the pattern. The pattern is what's drawing us in here. So the way that they've done that and then with that choice, um, you know, as judges we're not supposed to, to assume, but, you know, looking at this, a projected um, pattern onto the body would definitely allow you to, to be able to mask out the, the top and the bottoms there and, and the hands and things like that areas. Um, so being able to set this up and project light onto the body like that to be able to really capture that form and that structure and then to create three completely different um, figures here for the the impact, It's it's been done and handled beautifully. And what I'm really enjoying is that texture in the skin Again, the way that that's been captured as well. Thank you, Kelly. Michael, some additional comments? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, the, I think the beauty of this one, uh, at least in the print, if you, if you take a look at it close, but then if you back up, it, you stopped seeing shadows and it almost just looks like actual slices and layers that have just kind of been applied and that becomes very believable. So it gives it this, this third dimension, which in photography, we're always shooting to give as much depth and dimension. This certainly nails it there. Can you just, one more comment about the trip, the fact that it's a triptych, what does that bring to the image? The fact that it's a what? It's a triptych? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I didn't see that actually initially. It was, it was when I walked up to, when the image came around and I looked at, at it, um, I initially you know, thought, well, like, wow, what an interesting pattern. And it was really only something that I caught later on. And then there is one other part to it, and, and this part also doesn't matter. I don't know if those are like some sort of stockings that are on that are going up to make that black, or if that's also done in the shadow. And so I, I love the fact that, that I don't know, but it also doesn't matter. Yeah, um, yeah thanks, Sanjay. I just the comment about the value of three. Yeah, I mean, if, if we just look at the organization of the image, you have the end images, which are the back, and then you have the front of uh, the subject with the face in the center, and they're just leaning in to the middle over there. And the power of three is that it's usually odd numbers. It's, it's also an architectural thing, which is kind of strange, like odd numbers work. Um, even numbers feel imbalanced, but it's kind of drawing your attention to the middle as well. But I just want to come back to the, the stripes as well, because they follow the stance, they follow the, the pose and the, the kind of the shoulder line, but they lean into that middle part of the triptych there, and it just kind of enhances what's going on there as well. Cool. Thanks, guys. Next print, please. No, that's good. It's good. We're just looking to unpack all those elements so you guys can see the value of why. You might be sitting there looking, going, why have they, why have they done this? Why have they done that? Kelly, what's, what's the first thing that hits you on this one? Oh, the pose, it's so delicate. Um, she looks, you know, really, really comfortable, but also awkward as well. But the curve of the, the middle of her body, the way that it sort of comes down and then her hips kind of kick out, it's got a very sensual nature to it. I'm really enjoying the way that she's positioned on that chair, which is sometimes not easy to do. Michael? Yeah, the, the softness of, of the light, the pose, the expression, uh, if, if you were to tell me that this is a painting from a different era, it's, it's very believable in that sense. Uh, it doesn't overcomplicate, just the, the I, I, love, I love the fact that, that I'm not quite sure, is that all one gown that's going around or is it, does it change? And, and it doesn't matter, but it's so flowy in itself. There's, there's the statuesque part of it, which is the chair, but then it almost becomes sort of fluid and liquid in the way that both the pose is handled and then the wardrobe, the expression, of course, just absolutely tops it with the light perfectly uh, highlighting the face there. Michelle, got some comments, Dad? Yeah, this is, to me, Renaissance, and I'm a huge fan of Renaissance art, and I feel like I could walk past this at the Met, and it, the two-third view of her face is absolutely perfect, and we don't normally talk about the different views of the face, but this is absolutely getting that so perfect and that perfect light pattern. Her right hand is so beautifully posed. Um, and even though we often say we don't like the back of the hand, it's perfect here on that side because that's where it would be. So this just feels like I walked past it in the Met and for that reason, I love it. Mm. Now, great comments, everybody. Next print, please. Yeah, that Renaissance feel came straight through, didn't it? Yeah. 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 
Natalie, what's the first few things you were thinking? Oh, wow. I mean, I'm almost kind of lost for words on this. I absolutely love the the strength of the pose, but I'm kind of like in awe of like the texture and how they brought the texture onto her, onto the wall, and she's like looks like living art on the wall. Michelle, do you want to unpack this one for us? Beautiful. Yeah, first, um, so to me now, it just feels like a walk past this in Piazza in Tuscany, right? Like it almost has that feel like it could be in the middle of a European piazza. But um, the, I mean, the texture on her body is really incredible. The, from the triangle between her feet up through her leg and then in the arm, the overall pose is just, it's soft, but maintains a, a tension. Like the way she's leaning on that wall, it creates a tension in the body, but then it's really soft through, you know, the softness of her toes up through the knees and then her expression. And that, to paint that texture on her body to sort of match that wall, almost as if she's literally coming out of the wall, like her figure just transcends and comes through that wall. So it's it's really beautiful and interesting. Like this is another one where I was like, dang, I wish I did that. <laughs> like, honestly. Kelly, can you use a final comment? I mean, I'm loving everything that both Michelle and Natalie have both said. The the way that that line goes straight through her body and then you've got that little shadow from the arm on her butt and it continues that straight line, it just accentuates all of her curves beautifully. But just to, you know, <laughs> like say this is something that's so simple but so well seen and captured. Well done. Yeah, great comments again. Next print, please. It really is a privilege to have the chance to look at the, sort of the top 10 in each category and have a chance to really dissect them and see why did they get this high? What was it about them that judges who judged them previously put them high enough in the scoring range to put them into the finals? It's great to see. Michael, what's your first thoughts? Yeah, the, the, the first thought is that, is that the image is telling me, like, slow down. Before you look at the subject, you've got this, this beautiful dimensional frame that's going around, which is providing a lot of the bounce light right back into the subject. And so you want to look right in the center, but, but it's okay. You're, you'll get there in just a moment. And all these frames playing within other frames, uh, very well done there. You know, architecture is about light and space. It'd be great to have an architect. Com oh, hang on. We have an architect here. Uh, Sanjay, would you unpack this and talk about this? If we're talking about the symmetry and the structure and we have the frame within a frame within a frame and it's drawing you in and then pulling you back and there's so much symmetry to the environment but there's a beautiful symmetry to her which is then just breaking beautifully just softly with her hands. There's a lot of symmetry in her form all the way down, you know, implied symmetry with the hair. And I think it's just that little breaking of the symmetry with our, with our arms that's giving the human element to the image. Yeah, nicely said. Just tell us a bit about how they've lit this. So um, just looking, I mean, there, was, there are so many clues in this. And as Michael was saying, that uh, the, the sort of the, the, the jams of the, the opening there are kind of bouncing the light back. And we can see the, uh, the highlight and the shadow just on the ledge that she's sitting on. So this looks like a light either side, left and right, that's aimed at the, uh, the vertical jams, basically, to bounce light back there. But it's framing her beautifully, because it's kind of, again, the lighting is creating that frame, that rim all the way around her. Thank you. But just a little offset of where she sat on the ledge, just to again give that little, that softness, just kind of breaking the rigidity of the image. Thank you, Sanjay. Natalie, final comments? Yeah, I mean, I, I really love the graphic nature of this. I love the, you know, the white mat and the dark border and you're going light and then dark, darker. So I'm just really appreciating the depth that that creates. Thanks, judges. Next print, please. Okay, Kelly, you kind of 
you, you went both ways and then you looked. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, well, that's, we're being challenged, right, as judges. Yeah. The impact of this is, is like, what are we looking at? Um, how has this been created? We instantly want to try and make sense of it. But I love that it doesn't make sense because it just leads you on such a journey through all of the, the different parts of the body and... I can see that some some have you know obviously been purposely left out of the frame here, but the parts of the body that have been left in have been you know positioned really quite well. I'm I'm enjoying the the unknown of this. Michael, tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, and 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 I'll repeat what I previously said about the image uh, in a different category, which is uh, I. I <laughs> First thought that came to my mind is, is you know, why would you get the outfit or who, who styled it for you? And then it, it just takes you a second because if you back up, you, it really does. It's, it's, it's believable that this could have been constructed. And, and then it makes you think like, well, maybe somebody will one day. Um, the, uh, it's, it's almost like a, a puzzle that's, that's been taken apart and, and, and is slowly kind of starting to come back together. You lay out those puzzle pieces and you've got this piece in place and that piece in place. And that's the beauty of it. It's like, is that the hip or is that the arm? I can't quite tell, but I can see the shadow. It's like, okay, well, there, oh, there's the arm, and then you find it, and then you're so happy that you got there. And, and it's one of those puzzles that you don't need to complete it, and I think it's, it's done right there. Did you want to add a comment? Thanks, Natalie. I, what I love about this is, you know, we're in a fine art nude category, and, and rather than it just be right in your face, you just see, like, the edge of the breast, and then you see that really sensual waist you know, the line down to the waist and the belly button, and you're just seeing a little bit of her lips. So I love that those three elements or four elements are really sensual and beautiful, and, and that's all that we're seeing, and it's just subtle. Thank you. Did you want to add a quick comment? Thanks, yeah, Sandra. Just, just a quick comment about the presentation as well. And I think what adds to this, it, everyone's seeing something slightly different, which is amazing, but also the paper choice. It's, it appears to be metallic paper, which is just giving it an additional depth, um, which really I think amplifies, you know, the, the whole concept of the puzzle. Like what's going on? You know, you you look at this and you start to piece together. What is her pose? How is she standing? What's the body part? Is this something she's wearing? Is this something that's just floating in front of her? What's a natural gap in her pose? Is it created by whatever that is creating this pattern? It just really adds to that depth and dimensionality. So I think you know, just a lot of thought's been put into how this has been constructed. Yeah. One more thing, I think that um, it's really interesting that all these very hard angles and lines are wrapped in a soft oval. Yep, yep, yep. There's a lot to unpack. Well said. Next print, please. First thoughts, Michael? Yeah, I can I can see that there's that there's story here. It, it, I, and I'm very curious about it. I, this is one of those images that, you know, the tones, the warmth, everything comes together. I love the elements, and obviously, you know that that it's not everything is showing immediately. It leaves a little bit to the imagination. And this is one of those images that that if I run into the maker at the conference at a bar, I'd be like, you know what? Let's chat. I'll buy you a drink. Let's chat about this for a little while. Tell me, tell me, tell me what was going through your mind when you made this, Kelly? Construction and and like technique, craft. What's going on? Here? A lot of thought has gone into the setup of this. There is a story here, and we're we're obviously trying to to break down that story and read into it. But when you come up with a story and then you try to present that in a way that catches the judge's attention. This is a really great example of how much thought's gone into it. The lighting um, has lit this, you know, equally throughout. We've got um, light in all the right places drawing us in. The placement in terms of the pose, the offset to the, the left-hand side there with the subject leading us back into the right-hand side and the positioning of the knife and the fork and, and the apple and, and all of that. It, it all sort of works well to create beautiful... I want to say balance within the frame, but it's also got a very sort of starkness to it as well that, that makes us feel a little uncomfortable because we want to know a little bit more about this story. Michelle, you got anything to add? Yeah, I'm just fascinated by it. I really, like, I just want to know more about it. Um, 
the apple, the skull, you know, the, the, it looks like up close, you know, there's a, like a, almost a pink tone in there, like almost kind of close to the apple and the eye sockets of the skull. Like it just, her foot placement, I, I, yeah, I want to know more. Yeah, go ahead. I'm looking at her expression down, and she's dining alone, and it's almost bittersweet. It's like she's like, am I happy I'm eating alone? I'm not sure. Is that her husband? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's the apple a day keeps the, you know, and the other, the other person didn't eat he healthy. I, I just I see a duality of self-image over here. You know, it's, she's about to tuck into this apple with a knife and fork. And, and she doesn't look happy. And is, is this what she's aspiring to, to be so thin that she's a skeleton? You know, is it a celebration of female form or is it the opposite? Yeah. You know, it's, it's raising lots of questions and everyone's seeing different things. Yeah, yeah, now we'll see. Next print, please. Again, we're starting to see that some narratives are very obvious and very clear, and some other narratives, while they're not as clear, they're still very strong, but they're different for each, uh, each photographer. Okay, first thoughts, Michelle? First thought for me is uh, I, the hand posing is really done well, and it looks like she's going to take off with these beautiful... Um, these beautiful feathers, I think that it ha it just has a nice energy to it. And like, she, she's moving. Like, I feel movement in her. Okay. Michael, can you unpack how this has been constructed for us? Yeah, and, and let me go into the, some of the technical elements, which appears to be an on-location shoot. So, so much to control, aside from the natural environment, then you've got multiple lights that you're handling, you've got the wardrobe, the, I'll call them wings, uh, which is certainly not, not easy to handle. And then to make sure that the actual outfit uh, in front is, is, is perfectly aligned. So beautiful soft light that's coming in from camera right. And then, and then I've got to absolutely compliment the maker on just the subtlety of having enough of a kicker that's coming in on the left side that is not overtaking it, just coming right down that line of the leg. And it's really not impacting the, uh, the wings or feathers that would be in the back that could easily then overtake the subject. And then finally, the composition in terms of keeping the bulk of the, the subject right up in, in that sky, uh, arms following along with the mountains there. So you're also selecting where in that mountain range you're, you're gonna place the subject and wonderful choices. So, so many complex choices that had to be made for this to come out the way that it did. Natalie? Oh, I really love her strength and her expression and, and how she's, uh, you know, really raised really tall and proud. And of course, I love her abs. I mean, they're spectacular. It's just, you know, goals. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Next print, please. First thoughts, Natalie? Oh, gosh, this is just beautiful. Uh, it's the, t initially it's the tones, it's like the greens and the gold, like the red raven hair and her expression, I'm just, this is absolutely exquisite. To me, it's like the color palette and her, um, it's beautiful. Michelle, do you want to unpack this one a little? It's interesting because usually when we talk about portraits and we don't like to see huge shifts in skin tone, and we do have some here, but on purpose. Like, it's really interesting to me that, you know, her face is warm and then her body goes so cool um, into the green and the blue of the floor. It, 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 like, her face is bright, but then in a way, like, her body goes dark on her. Like, she's fighting with it in a way. That's what it feels like to me in her expression and in just the way the color changes and the position of her pose and how she's wrapped. Um, it feels, the, conceptually to me, to me, it feels like a fight with her body and the strong line in the background, but then the soft fabric and then the warm light, but then the cool light. 
it just feels like everything is opposing. And I just think it's really well done. And then that soft softness of the hair flowing behind her. And then there's just a softness and almost a sadness in her eyes. So I think it's really storytelling. Sanjay, a final comment? I'm seeing these two tones as something that represents her expression and her mood. Um, and her hair almost kind of unifies the whole thing. It's sort of kind of the anchor and the balancing element in the whole thing, which is fascinating. But again, you know, there's, there's a story of two here, two colors. There's a story of she, she's powerful, she's clearly powerful, but she's also, also um, uh, there's a, what's the word I'm thinking of? There's a um, fragility, yeah, vulnerability. That's what I was thinking of, vulnerability to her. Um, and I think that comes through, it's represented beautifully all the way through, but I'm just taken by the strength in her expression and in her pose in her arms as well. I'm just gonna add the great use of triangular co uh, composite, composition of elements, the cloth, the body, the hair are all three triangles, and all of them kind of are, are around that face. They're all leading us, including the two arms and the highlight on the arms. It all takes you to the expression. It's all about the expression, and it's almost the blandness of the expression is complementing the bland, or the background is, and the subdued hues are complementing the blandness. So it's, a, it's kind of an internal one. It's when you're thinking about where's she, in, rather than an external expression. Uh, next print, please. <laughs> This image has a title, Like a Dandelion. Talk to me, Kelly. What's, what are you thinking? What's gone through your head in the first image? My initial impact is, is wow, the, the shape, the form of this and, and the way that it's been lit to, to lead your eye around that beautiful body, it's striking. Absolutely striking. There's obviously a lot of, Michael, uh, a lot of lighting thought gone into this and construction. Can you tell us a bit about the, the text? Yeah, text side? yeah two, two big points on, on the lighting, and that is to, to play off that, that specularity and, and embrace really a little bit of like, where like the hot spots and, and glare are coming up. And then the other thing is that the light uh, is is handled in a way that I keep just going into these various pockets of light, shadow, light, shadow, and no matter where you go, you start on the arm and you get it twice on the arm, you go across the back, and then you spend so much time there because the the beauty is created when you give enough shadows to to the image, and, and the light is where we start, but then we need to move off into the darkness. Um, the fact that this is, what was the title? Uh, like a dandelion. Like a dandelion. It is, it is like a dandelion, and it's sort of like if somebody was shown a, a, a photo painting of a dandelion and said, all right, you photograph uh, what you feel inspired to do in it, and you can absolutely see that this maker has their own unique style and vision in how they did it. I like the narrative that's hidden because she's got floral tattoos, and using the dandelion theme, and the, her backbone becomes the stem of that dandelion. Mm -hmm. And I love the way that's been subtly just put in there as a, as a subliminal type of um, connecting her to her style. Natalie? Um, so what I love about this image is it's, it's a pose that I would never consider. I love boudoir photography, and it, it's, it's unexpected, you know, I would almost like naturally want to refine it if it was mine, but I love how unexpected it, that this pose is. Her leg position, her straight arm, um, it's incredible. And I think that's what strikes me about this, is, is the pose. Thanks, Natalie. Fantastic stuff, judges. That's the end of the uh, boudoir fine art nude. Some great commentary, yes. And again, it's a privilege. It's, uh, I don't know how you feel out there, but sitting up here listening to these incredible judges' comments, it feels like I'm in my own personal masterclass. And I hope that you're feeling that way, and I hope you at home are getting that same feeling here at the Icon Awards. Back to you, Melissa. Thank you, Tony. Thank you to our judges. Uh, so as Tony said, that concludes the boudoir and fine art new category. And I have to say, you know, I know I said before how much of an honor it is for Jerry and I to be able to handle all of your images, both in the digital competition and when they come in in print. Um, and it is because we're seeing them all up close. We get the privilege of being able to spend time with them as we're unpacking them and look at them carefully. But also, like, 
we spent so much time talking to you guys in the months leading up to it between questions and getting more information if we need it. So it's funny, uh, like I was, at the last few categories, I don't underestimate how nerve wracking it is, whether you're watching at home or you're here in person, to see one of your images come up. Um, and that never goes away. You could be entering for 20 years and you'll still get sweaty palms and your heart will beat. But what I have to say is, because I know who all of you are, obviously, it's really amazing for me when I, I'm like, oh, I hope they're here, I hope they're watching. And when I see you and I see the look on your face, just know that I, my heart's beating with you. Like, I'm like, oh, like I'm very nervous for you as well because we've had these conversations and I know how gut-wrenching it can be and you're just the pit in your stomach and just know that we feel that with you. And that is all part of the experience and I'm just very grateful that you guys go through that stress and nervousness and still let share your work with us so that we can all be inspired by it as well. So thank you to you guys for entering the competition. Thank you. Um, we are now going to take a quick break because we're going to let our judges get logged in to their judging console. Uh, so that's only going to take a couple of minutes and then we're going to reset in front of the gallery here where the judges are going to take a look at all the images one more time and see who they would like to have as the winners in this category. So we'll be right back. Managing your business can be overwhelming. At Lead Savage, we make it easier by helping you get more leads, book more clients, and make more money. With Lead Savage, you'll have all the tools you need to get more leads. Our drag and drop system helps you quickly build funnels, landing pages, and marketing emails to attract new clients, while our social media scheduler helps you be seen everywhere. Follow up is key to booking more clients. Our all in one inbox lets you see and respond to inquiries no matter where they came from. Automated workflows can send personalized follow ups and reminders, ensuring no leads slip through the cracks. You'll turn more inquiries into bookings increasing your client base and revenue. Lead Savage helps you streamline your business, saving you time. Our analytics provide valuable insights into your marketing strategies, helping you make informed decisions that will drive your business forward. It's like having your own marketing team. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your business to the next level, Lead Savage is your all-in-one solution to getting more leads, booking more clients, and making more money. Welcome back everybody, thank you so much for being here. We're ready to actually rank these images in the order in which the judges would like to see them, whether they place first, second or third. Judges, we have an incredible variety. Thank you for your comments, take your time. Go for it guys, go nice and close to the prints. Soak them in.
So the judges, just so you know what's going on there, guys, the judges are looking at these images on their console and they have every single image represented. They simply tap on a photograph they would like to prioritize and they repeat that process, obviously, for all images. And then we get a clear and definitive winner at the end. And you'll actually find out who the first, second, third place winners are, including all categories, all grands, tomorrow night uh, in the Grand Ballroom, which is very exciting, at 8 o'clock. And if you're watching at home, certainly they'll be live as well. This always excites me, Michelle. Thank you so much. There we go. And for full transparency as well, just so you know, when the images are ranked and when they're, what they're doing on their console, there's actually two steps to, to reconfirm that that's exactly what they want. So there's sort of no way of submitting the actual wrong entry. I believe in you. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that does it. The judges have chosen uh, the winners for this category, first, first, second, and third place. We will all find out who that was tomorrow night at the awards ceremony, so make sure you come join us. Huge thank you to Lead Savage for sponsoring this category and also sponsoring the awards, uh, the after party that's happening after the awards night tomorrow night. So it'll be a really fun night. Now, we do have a couple more categories in the portrait division, but we need to feed our judges uh, to make sure they're nice and fresh and refreshed for the next set of images. So we are gonna take a quick break. We're gonna ask everyone to leave this room so that we can lock it up. We will be back uh, and plan to go live again at 1.30. That will be with the animals and pets category at 1.30, right back in this room. In the meantime, we're gonna ask everyone to leave so that we can lock it up, keep everything secure. And thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you guys.
Welcome back, everyone. We're going to ask everyone to find their seats so we can get started with our next category here in the portrait division. Um, we are so excited. I hope you guys had a wonderful lunch. I know that we enjoyed a little bit of a breather as well, and we're ready to get right back into it. Uh, as a reminder, we are currently looking at images that are in the portrait division. Portrait division is sponsored by Westcott, and it covers a variety of different genres. So we've broken them down into eight different categories. And the one that we're going to be looking at now is a really fun one. Really adorable images that we're about to see. Beautiful images in the animals and pets category. Uh, so we're going to get ready for a lot of cuteness here. The category is sponsored, the animals and pets category is sponsored by Hanna Mula. And they are a name that is famous all over the world for all of their beautiful premium fine art inkjet and photo papers. They've been doing it for a long time. They've been doing it since 1584. So if you're going to trust anyone to, find, to make papers that you can print your images on, you want somebody who's been doing it a long time and has a lot of experience doing it. So thank you so much to them for sponsoring the animals and pets category. Now, without further ado, well, actually, let's explain the process a little bit. As a reminder, these are images that we started this process back several months ago. Images were entered into our digital competition. Those images were scored by our judges. Feedback was offered. And now what we're looking at yesterday and today are the finalists in each category. So the judges do not know what score they got, except that it scored above an 80. So an 80 or above made it eligible for the final and then what we did was we chose the top 10 scoring images in each category. In some cases, there was uh, several images that scored that bottom score, so we have a few more. So it's top 10 and equal 10th place that we brought back. The judges are now looking at them, having a wonderful conversation about them, and Tony will tell you a bit more about that. And they are determining who they would like to see win first, second, and third place in each category. So without further ado, let's get into the animals and pets category sponsored by Hanamula. And I'm going to turn it over to Tony Hewitt, who is an icon grandmaster and chairing all of our judging panels for yesterday and today. So thank you so much, Tony. Thank you, Melissa. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, just a reminder that we are, as um, Melissa suggested, looking at the best of the best. And that to be in that group, if your image is in this room yesterday and today, then congratulations to you as a creator. Uh, your work is at the highest end. And I say this respectfully, th there's an element of luck. When you're in the top 10, you know, what your image could win one week and the following week, different set of judges, it might not get there. So that's not meant to sound disrespectful, but it's what, it's try what I'm trying to say is if you're in that top 10 or top 12, you've kind of made it to that high end and that's something you should pat yourself on the back for. So it's not just about the top one or two or three, it's that, it's that top bracket that you're moving up in there. And I have a couple of people that I've coached over the years and somebody, somebody I, I think of often when it comes to awards is they got really excited when they got a silver or a gold or a high score and they'd be ringing me up and they're jumping out of the phone and they're all excited and then a month later in a different competition they ring me up and they're in tears and they're crying in their coffee because they got a 72 and it was like this yo-yo roller coaster ride and I, and I said you know you don't suddenly become a great photographer because you won some awards and then you don't overnight become a crap photographer because you didn't so I suggested that you just look at the average I said what did you average last year and you know they point out the score. Say, well, next year in that competition, if you enter eight images, see what your average is. And all you're trying to do is push your average up like a golfer. Hey, I'm a hack golfer, but I can go out and, and hit us, you know, close to par. Well, not that close, but closer than some. But, you know, really, I, I'd bat off a, a really long handicap. But I look at it and I go, well, my average over a period of time is coming down by one or two. I'm improving. I'm getting better. So how you approach awards, there's different ways to do it so you can see every step is a success. Icon Awards is about that sort of philosophy. Every step is a success. Just by entering, you are successful. Think about if you've entered, think about what you went through, the curation, choosing your images. You know, nobody goes and enters the awards and says, now how bad can I make this? Well, not all of us. Hey, Jerry. But most of us look at it and go, what's the best I can do and can I make it even better than that? So just the process of entering forces us to make something better. So we become a better photography, a photographer. And from my point of view, I look at it and think, if I enter, irrespective of what happens next, I've already got 75% of the value. You with me? So think of it like that. 
Again, we have incredible judges who are given their time to come along and share their expertise. All award winners in their own right. All of these people give speeches and presentations and workshops all over the world. And what they're doing here is giving you that free masterclass on what makes an award-winning image, what makes a finalist in an award competition like the Icon Print Awards. So here we go. Well, the Icon Awards, the print se section. We're looking at pets and animals, or animals and pets, and our judges are going to give us three comments generally, sometimes maybe one or two more or less, but aiming at three. The first one's going to tell you as an audience, what's the first thing that grabbed that judge's attention? What sort of things are getting them to get up or draw them into my pictures? The second comment's going to open up that image. What are the details that they're starting to find? What are the strengths of the image? Construction, composition, um, how well it's been edited, paper choice, emotional content, energy, all of these things will be included you know, uh, in that second judge's think thought process. And the third one will add some other insights that maybe the first two didn't get a chance to talk about or that given more time, they've had a chance to sort of see as it sat in front of them for a little bit longer than it did for the first two. Well, that's enough from me. I think we all know what's going on. Let's have a look at the first print for animals and pets. Thank you. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> this has a title, The Mop That Rocked. All right, Natalie, first out of the gate. What hit you first? Gosh, I mean, I didn't even realize this could have been a dog. Um, <laughs> just like kind of mesmerized and I haven't even been able to collect my thoughts except to wonder if this is probably a dog. <laughs> That's okay. So sometimes the first impact is wonder. What, what is it? What am I looking at? And that drags you in. And once you get in there, Kelly, what did you start to find? What, what, how do you put an image like this together? <laughs> oh, there's so much. The, the fact that only one of these frames, you can see this dog's face, the rest it is, it's rocking it out. But the cleanliness of this, the simplicity of the black and white portrait here and being broken up into all these different frames to, to really kind of take us on a journey from, you know, kind of being quite still on the ends and then leading us into the center of the, to really show us the personality of this dog. There's so much here. It's been lit beautifully. It's been edited beautifully. Um, it's, it's just, it's simplicity at its finest. When we say edited beautifully, what do we mean? Well, do you know what? It actually starts in camera. Like this has been captured so well that the way that it's been retouched you can't even tell. Like, but it, the retouching has brought out all of the, the detail in that fur. You can see all of those strands of mop that, um, that is being thrown around by this dog. Thank you, Kelly. Nick, what's your final comments on this? Um, I would like to comment, I would like to applause for the maker, uh, for the presentation, the way that he plays all or the- Or she or they. Oh. They place the, the, the dog this way that when uh, starting from the low uh, energy going to high energy, the highest in the middle and on the way down and um, the way that, he present, that they present the story of uh, this uh, uh, moment of uh, the dog, it's amazing. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Uh, we'll have the next print, please. All right, Michelle, what did you see? First thing, what drew you in? Uh, wow. Um, the, the, the legs of the, the birds are connected. I mean, obviously this is photojournalistic. There's no way you can direct these incredible birds to do that. Um, the shapes that they create, the beaks just being, usually when we see that, the swan, you know, they make that heart shape when their heads come together, but the beaks are facing each other, and it is it is really cool. that It's printed really, really well. Um, there's a lot of detail in the whites and detail in the dark and the shadow, and just the way that it almost looks like the one swan has 
I think it's a swan. Is it a swan? They're not swans. They're not swans. They look like for bird oh, ignorant. I'm not sure. Is they're which what? One? I'm not sure if they're brogues or cranes or something in that field. Cranes? Oh, well. I may be wrong. It's okay. I'm bird ignorant, but um, but the the way it almost looks like they're about to embrace. It's just a really cool capture in that moment for the maker to be, you know, watching for these particular birds. You know, it's an art to sit and wait for something spectacular to happen, and something spectacular happened here. Cheryl, can you give us a bit more information about the actual print quality that was being discussed there and how it's brought out the detail, perhaps? Yeah, this is capturing such a moment in time that will never be repeated. Um, but not only the patience it takes to sit and wait for a moment and capture it, see it coming and capture it, but the crop here, keeping the elements in the middle, um, the shapes, and the choice of um, color, the lack of color. And just bringing our eyes straight, keeping our eyes straight on these um, the beautiful white uh, cranes, feathery puppies. Yeah. Uh, I apologize if they're not cranes, bogles, or swans, but we, we covered as many bases. Ever. I know they're not swans. Uh, I, I'd just like to also add that there's some very fine detail of the little droplets, which adds some indication of the fact that they're near water, on water, swamp, and it also adds a dynamism, dyna dynamism, dynam a dynamic element of the energy that's, you know, they, these ju they're jumping and they're splashing and so on. Um, great stuff. Next print, please. First thoughts, Nick? Um, the first thought when I see the images was like uh, some kind of reflection happens on their, from the environment on their feather. But then I realized that, that the original colors or something similar to their color. So uh, such a beautiful way of editing and present this moment of the two birds. Okay, Kelly? The snow. The texture that it's left on the feathers, it's just beautiful. When you first look at this print, it is like an art piece that you could have hanging on your wall. But it's, but it's nature and it's been captured beautifully. There is so much detail in every feather here and a really, really incredible moment seen. Um, the tension that is it's sort of, you know... I suppose the fighting tension within the feathers and the, the legs and the way that the bird is positioned has created this beautiful shape and it's it's sort of mirroring the bird and the base um, and creating this incredible shape that I think has been really well seen and captured by the photographer. But the snow texture is gorgeous. Natalie, anything to add? Um, so I missed the snow completely because I just look like art and I didn't even see that there was snow or white, but I, I think this is magnificent and I really appreciate an image that comes up that looks like it could be a fine art piece on your wall. So I think it was really well done and I'm so excited it's here. I'll just add that the behavior of the two animals or two birds um, obviously is something that might be um, common with these types of animals. But I also want to point out the paper choice in the situation where you've got snow and a lot of that snow can be completely um, devoid of any detail. By having a textured art paper, it adds a little bit of uh, inherent detail into the image so that the whiteness of the snow down around here doesn't detract from the detail within the two birds, um, you know, whether it's a mating dance or they're fighting or something like that. Uh, but that paper choice here is very important. Uh, well done. Next print, please. This print has a title, Sardine Run. We got five judges and they had five completely different expressions on their faces. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, I have to, Kelly, your face was like. <laughs> Sardine Run, so check it out. What's your impact? What's the first thing? <laughs> 
for me, the first thing that grabbed my attention was the black and white um, conversion here. It's the, it's just beautiful. The way that that light is coming through from the, the top right-hand corner down towards the sardines, and then our eye is, is continually drawn to the two dolphins there that are kind of rounding up those sardines. Like, it's just leading us on a wonderful journey, and the way that it's been handled um, is just gorgeous. I've never said that before. Uh, Cheryl, tell us a bit about the construction of this print or how, it, how the image is working technically. Well, just the shape of it overall. We start with the um, porpoises, dolphins, look at, almost looking like they're holding hands and the relation between them and what it is they're about to do and working together. Um, so it's telling a story, not just capturing um, you know, some random act. Um, and the paper choice, and this is very interesting and, and perfect, perfect, yeah. yeah. Why is it perfect? Um, there's a little bit of sheen, uh, but it's not glossy. So we're capturing all of those details, the fine line details. If you walk up to this print and look at it very closely, I mean, every little detail of those sardines is incredible. Um, and, and capturing an image like this in the dynamic range in the shadows is so hard to do, especially underwater, especially in nature. Um, and a paper like this will capture that without having the, the reflection, the sheen. Yeah. Uh, Nick, lasting comment? Huge impact of the, the first thought of the image. So I, I, can't, I can't imagine how the maker waiting underwater for a moment like this and create it so perfectly. So much effort to, to, to make it. Mm. It's, a, it's a nice perspective for us to be sitting almost like the third dolphin following them. And uh, yes, that they because the animals, their natural behavior is to work in teams and to have, you know, they have tactics and strategy to do this. So to put them together like this and give us that angle looking up into the light, using the sunlight in the way that they have. And of course, the technical difficulty, as was mentioned, underwater. So great print and uh, a great image. Next, please. This has a title, The Pug That Couldn't Catch. <laughs> Natalie, your first thoughts? Not that you were the you, only you, one laughing. Oh my gosh, you have to see this little baby's expression. Like, spectacular, quirky, like, eyes that he has. Oh gosh. It's just the expression. I mean, I've not seen a dog with the capability of this kind of expression. It's fantastic. So it's a sequence of expressions that grabbed your attention first. Let's break it down a little bit, Michelle. Tell us a bit more about how you, how you work an image like this to get it to this level. <laughs> so um, I'm a big fan of the, I um, believe, and I don't know his name off the top of my head, the German photographer does the pictures of the dog catching treats. And if you've ever tried that in your own studio, and I have with several dogs, it is the hardest thing in the world to do. And so I really appreciate this maker kind of giving us their fail on it, right? Like where, you know, you want to try to get that, you know, crazy dog picture of them capturing that treat. And it, it's so hard to do. But this dog looks almost like, why are you just throwing this at me? Like, what is happening here? And then then looking down like, well, I missed it. And then, then the last one is like, well, I just, I can't get it. And then just like, I'm done, I'm out of here. Like every single frame tells such a story. Like why are you throwing them at me? I'm trying to get it, I missed it. I just, I'm a failure, I'm out of here. Like that's the whole story. And when when you can do that, um, you know, with it's five images, one, two, three, four, five, and I come in and I go to the next and next, next, and then I walk out and I'm done. And that, it's just brilliantly done. And the, the lighting is so well done. I love the, that the, the white in the image perfectly matches that mat. And that almost never happens um, where you get the whites perfectly white both in mat and in print. So, and the paper choice is very close to the mat. So you get that same texture going through the print as well as the mat. So I just think it's really well done. Final thought, Kelly? 
Yeah, presentation. We're, we're judging prints here and that's what it's all about. The the This image could not have been presented as a single capture. The way that it, they've presented five frames to us to tell a story is what makes this so unique. And the... the <laughs> The fail, it's just, the <laughs> fail is brilliant. It, and, it, and I haven't got anything else to add. It's the fail that's success in failure. Yeah, yeah, success in failure, yeah, absolutely. And again, I can't um, iterate strongly enough that you must go and visit the gallery in the trade show after this because to see the prints as versus seeing the digital projection on the wall is another step up, another level, and you'll understand even further why these images have made the finals. And when you see or hear the um, ultimate results, again, the print quality and the paper choice and all that, that's going to contribute to that ranking that our judges will give these images at the end of the category. So just make sure you get in and have a look. Uh, next print, please. Thanks, ladies. Aren't they doing a great job? What's grabbing you, Michelle? I'm, I'm thinking to, to the moment where the the person comes in contact with this with this animal. Um, my husband hunts, and I, 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 to be that face to face, that shoulder to shoulder, that dead on with an animal like this, and. I mean, again, this is in the wild. It's not a composite. It's in the wild, right in front of you. You can't move an inch, otherwise that animal will be spooked right away um, to capture this. I mean, this is just incredible. And then the treatment of it overall, I'll let someone else handle that. But to capture an animal and the detail straight on like that in the wild is pretty incredible. And I'm assuming it's in the wild, but. Nick, tell us a bit more about the treatment and the construction of this image. Yeah, I really enjoy the way that the maker um, makes this monochromatic effect of the image and the treatment of uh, the editing is outstanding. Uh, he, uh, they separate they separate uh, the, the subject with uh, the environment, with the treatment, which is even that there are many of the leaves or uh, branches in front of it, we are not affected at all, but we are going straight to the viewer, or to the, to the eyes of the animal, which is amazing. Yeah, it's a good use of shallow depth of field to help that animal jump out of a very busy environment. Natalie, final comment? I mean, I was going to say the eye contact. I feel like the eyes are the window to the soul, and, and, th and this animal is just looking right at me, and all of us. It's incredible. You know, often if you, you know, and it's, uh, in America or North America, you've got certain animals that you see in the, in the woods, and uh, when that happens, something like this, you freeze, you don't want to move the moment, you hold the moment as still as possible. I feel like the maker of this image has created that for us because the image holds you still, you don't want to move because it's, as you say, it's just right in front of you connecting straight to you. Yeah, quickly. I mentioned very quickly, if you do get a chance to go and look at this in the gallery, please do, because the paper that this has been printed on, it has this pearl effect that's made it look silver. It is just beautiful. Next print, thanks. <coughs> what was the first thing you saw, uh, Cheryl? What's grabbed you first? Such an architectural image. The um just the texture itself, you can feel it. Um, the amount of detail here, it's been handled really well. Yeah, it's very striking. Okay. Um, Nick, do you want to break this one down for us? Tell us a bit more about an image like this. Uh, yeah, well, the first thing I, I saw was an animal, was it a spaceship, or what is going on? It's such a beautiful way to present um, <laughs> this alligator or crocodile, whatever, and um, everything getting monochrome except the eye which is yellow and getting st straight in the middle 
if you have a look, the eye is in the middle of the frame. So it's symmetry and compositionally perfect for me. Okay. A closing comment, Michelle? <coughs> yeah, when it first comes around, you're like, whoa. And you know you're in the pet or animal category, so you, you know, instantly like, you know, and then you feel that crocodile al alligator, but the detail in the detail in the blacks and the detail in the highlight, I mean, you can see every little speck of co like black speck in those white highlights. And even in the eyes, when you get up really close, you can see every single speck in there. So it's just really well handled in post to bring out all of those details without losing any of it. It's nice when we talk fine art and you start talking about nature and things like that, abstraction is of, often a channel or a, a route to get to that fine art feel is and minimize, take things out and leave the things you want people to really see. Next print, please. Um, this has a, has a, I was gonna say comment, this has a title, who cut the cheese? All right. Uh, Natalie, what's the first thing that sort of you noticed or grabbed you? I mean, the first row, the fourth dog, the expression is spectacular. And then you go through and you get to enjoy each expression of every little fur baby in this um, exquisite. I love them. How fun. Beautifully done. Now let's let's, let's pack, unpack it a bit. Kelly? I feel like I'm playing Connect Four. <laughs> the placement of the, the colours and the animals here has been so well constructed. The photographer has thought this through with from the coloured backgrounds through the colour of the animal and then to strategically place that one cat smack bang in the middle. My goodness. And it, it looks more mischievous, I think, than all of the dogs. They just look crazy. But there is so much expression, so much personality, and the photographer has gone to a great deal of effort to be able to capture each of these animals so that they, they fit proportionally within each of those frames as well. Um, and so that they, they all equally take up as much room as each other. So none are smaller than the other, none are necessarily bigger than the other. They're all there within their own right and the way that each of those colours balances each one out, you know, we're just led on a marvellous journey of so many personalities, regardless of which one cut the cheese or not, they all look guilty. Michelle. I, I can't stop looking at it. I, I want this in my home. Um, I, I just think you could get lost and, you know, we spent hours swiping and lifting, like I could just stand here in front of this and go through every single circle, every single frame and constantly find something different and joyful about it. This is just joyful perfection to me. Like I could just stare at it all day. So I have a question. This is multiple images in a map, which runs a risk, but I think a strength here, there is a question. Uh, there, one of the strengths is that every single image, would you agree? Uh, stands alone. Yes, everyone. So as judges, and maybe Michelle, you just can follow yep. that. Um, when you see multiple images, why does an image that's got mul multiple in this case stand up and, and what, what, is it, what challenges had, has it had to overcome to get to the finals? Because there's so many images in the frame. Yeah, this, this could be an epic fail in reality, right? Like this is a really risky thing to do. There's, you know, 12 different images up there and as judges, 15, 15 sorry, yeah. sorry, oops. <laughs> I've got Dayquil brain, sorry, 15 different images, but um, every one of them is so good. There's not one that you pass by that go, oh, that's the weakest link. Like there's no weak links here at all. Like every single one of them is just perfect. Like this had to take a lot of time. It is not easy to photograph pets like this. And so to find the perfect one and to really get that right every single 15 times, 15, I can count now, and to light it. And then the thought process behind the, 
the cool tone background and then the warm and then adding the warm tone pets to the cool background and yeah and the the gray tone it just wow i mean this is so well thought out it 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 has everything that you want it has imagination it has technique it has um, something we've not seen before. I mean, I've not seen anything like this before. So imagination, to think this through, and I mean, 15 pets and 15 different expressions, my hats are off to this maker for sure. Good, thank you. Next print, please. First thoughts, Nick? Beautiful chromatic palette and great executed, great framing and uh, superb editing. Cheryl, break this one down for us a little bit, if you will, please. Yeah, um, the story of a family. The three and the use of the three the connection of the, the two little ones, the, I'm assuming, mother looking, you know, looking out over them, um, the softness of them. These are obviously very powerful, dangerous animals, but yet I see a, a photograph of a family. Yeah. Yeah, the cheetahs, and the, obviously the mother's very protective. Kelly? Yeah. This is just an incredible moment that's been seen by the photographer. Um, the beautiful colour palette in the background, but yet we've got these beautiful warm tones within the fur. When you look at the detail here, it has been printed beautifully in terms of the choice of paper, but it's been captured spectacularly because the photographer has been able to separate the subjects from the background, but yet be able to capture so much detail in all of that fur. There is some tender, beautiful moments here. There's a little bit of movement going through the fur from the the breeze and the mums on the lookout like there's a lot you could read into this but yet it is like a family portrait just a beautiful family portrait and I think that it's been just yeah captured beautifully I'll just add that in this case as a lot with the uh, wildlife the use of shallow depth of field to push that background away and allow them to stand out is quite uh, important next print please What do you say, Natalie? Uh, it's, you know, very delicate. Um, I don't know, I, I mean, I love, I love how delicate this is. I love the muted color palette. That's what I see at first. Okay, so that's what's grabbed you first? Yep. Kelly, do you want to expand on that one? <laughs> that cheeky monkey, that far one on the uh, the right hand side chasing that other one. Monkeys just doing what monkeys are doing and again it's just been well seen. I love the composition, the way that the lines um, go horizontally but then vert vertically down as well that give us a sense of height within the frame and the, the choice of colours to keep it um, you know, so simple is it just works really well here. Like nothing is distracting us away from those three beautiful monkeys monkeys, everything's been positioned and placed really well. And there's lots of detail. The rope detail, it's so sharp in there. Cheryl, maybe a final comment? Compositionally, the use of threes. Three monkeys, um, three segments from, you know, top, bottom, middle, and then three over this way as well. Mm. Um, and, and to crop it in like this, whether that was done in camera or, you know, or beyond, it was a decision, it was a choice, and it works beautifully. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, judges. And on that, we've finished uh, Animals and Pets. Well done, judges. Some great comments in there. And so again, some lovely work. <coughs> <coughs> Which we would expect for the top ten in any category, and in no, no, certainly in this category as well. We're going to hand back to you, Melissa. Thank you.
you so much to Tony and to our judges for those fantastic conversations. I told you it was going to be a really cute category. It was adorable. Um, we were, I was watching some of the comments that were coming in from online, and it was pretty funny. Some people were like, I could never be a judge in this category because the number of awes coming from my mouth would be completely unprofessional, which I completely agree as well. <laughs> it is absolutely adorable. So thank you so much to your judges. Um, and... Thank you to everyone who's watching at home as well. Thanks to Nikon. I also want would be remiss to not thank um, our tech team who's over there at that table working hard. We have someone who's on our live stream making sure that everything is running smoothly. She's cheering on everyone who's watching at home and making sure that they feel the love from all of us that are there. So um, they're keeping it very lively in the comments as well. And we're so grateful to, th to them for doing that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just take a quick breather, just a couple of minutes. We're going to get our judges logged into their judging console, and then everyone's going to come on over here. We're going to reset here in front of the gallery where the judges will get one more look at all the prints together, and then they will decide who they would like to see win first, second, and third place. We won't find out who they uh, will pick. We're going to save that as a surprise for Tuesday night. We want everyone to be surprised. It makes it so much more exciting on Tuesday night, and we want you guys to be there to share in that. So give us just a couple minutes to set up, and we'll be right back. The Z8 is a camera that can do literally everything. Accuracy, precision, speed. I had the power of my Z9 in a smaller body. The new Z8 makes no compromises. Powerful. Magical. Perfect. Cinematic. If I had to sum up this camera in one word, what would it be? Effortless. The Z8 is absolutely essential for me as a wildlife photographer. It was easier to hold for long periods of time. It was easier to get to locations with. I love everything about how it renders skin tones. You can see every single eyelash. With filmmaking, it's fantastic. You can use it on a small gimbal and held. I can actually film 8K raw internally. This camera is packed with the technology of the Z9 and more. The Z8 totally revolutionized the way that I make my images. It's everything any filmmaker could ask for. The Nikon Z8 is the most phenomenal camera that Nikon has ever launched, and I think it's going to be a huge moment in Nikon's history. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. That was a fun category. In fact, my favorite. If it was up to Melissa and I, it would be all animals and pets. <laughs> Period. That's it. So judges, I'm sure you enjoyed that as well. Uh, take your time. Have a closer look. Please proceed. So we're now determining what we want to win first, second and third and so on. And you will not know who the winners are. You'll find out tomorrow night. Join us for the awards night, Dress to Impress, 8 o'clock in the Grand Ballroom. It's going to be a lot of fun.
Nick's not scared. Natalie's locked in. We have Kelly and Michelle that look like mother and daughter, just uh, <laughs> sharing the joy. <laughs> no, come on, sisters, yes, sisters, yes, sisters, siblings, young ones. So we mentioned before that no composites are allowed in this category. So just in case anyone's wondering why we see some images that have multiple images in there, when you look at it on the screen, it's a bit hard to tell. One of the allowances in this category is that you can include multiple images. You can include a triptych or you can include a sequence of, event, uh, of images, but they all must be single captures and they all must be matted independently. So they are all images that stand on their own. You heard the conversation that Tony had with the judges earlier where that is a big risk because now the judges are also gonna look at each individual image to see if they all stand up on their own as well. Um, so if you look, it's hard to tell on the screen, but when you look at the individual images in real life, you'll see that they're all individually matted, so it's not a composite. All right, we have the judges have chosen their winners. So that concludes the animal and pets category sponsored by Hanamula. Um, and we're so grateful to them for sponsoring this category. It's just a really fun one to do. We are now gonna transition into our next category, which is a new one for us this year. It's the portrait narrative category, still in the portrait division, which is being sponsored by Westcott. We just need a couple of minutes to get those prints ready and just to switch over. So give us a couple of minutes to do that and we will come right back to you. How amazing would it be to get image critiques on demand? What about the chance of learning from industry leaders in a genre that you're most interested in? And learning from someone, say, like Kelly Brown, Susan Stripling, Roberto Valenzuela, Peter Hurley, or maybe even your favorite Australian. Hi, my name is Jerry Gionis, Nikon Ambassador, Portrait, Fashion and Wedding Photographer and co-founder of the Icon International Photography Awards. When I look back at my career so far, I can clearly see that the most valuable education I've received has come from feedback on my images. Well now, there's an even easier way for you to receive such priceless video feedback from industry experts reviewing and critiquing your work. Now, check this out, here's how it works. When you submit your photo for a critique, your mentor will record a video, where you can watch as they zoom into your photo using annotation tools, pointers, cropping tools to provide detailed insights, all the while you can see their face and listen to their passion and feedback in their own words. You can get your own image critique on demand at critique.com. That's critique without the U and the E. Or when you enter the Icon Awards, make sure to add a critique for the best learning experience you've ever had.
Welcome back, everybody. We were just waiting for our people watching online to catch up with us. So here we are all together again, those of us here in the room here and those of us watching at home, thanks to Nikon. Uh, we are going to launch into our last category of the portrait division, sponsored by Westcott. Uh, if you guys don't know Westcott, then you should know that they are manufacturers of some of the best pro, pro lighting gear for professional photographers. They're based here in the US and they have some incredible professional lighting gear that photographers everywhere use. So thank you so much to Westcott for sponsoring this division for us. Our last category in this division is portrait narrative. And this is a new category for us this year. These are all story-driven images. So we're gonna be looking for the story that is contained in these images. Um, they, are, they can include a wide variety of genres. It's a bit of a mix. So you could see anything from birth photography to travel photography to street photography. You could see non-wedding events as well in there. So we're gonna see quite a variety here. It'll be really interesting and we'll be looking for the story in those images. So now I will turn it back over into the very capable hands of Tony Hewitt, our Icon Grandmaster, and to our esteemed panel of judges. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. I'm just making sure it came out. It's an echo. <laughs> Thank you. I, you know, I was st standing here while you were talking, Melissa, and I was thinking, we're about to put a print here. Now, here's how powerful a print is. Think of it like a ripple. The print comes out, and the first basis of the ripple hits these people here who are our judges, and they're going to start looking at it. And it's going to go out through you. You're going to start looking at it up there. But the beauty of this whole Icon Awards process with the live cameras is those people in that camera or whoever they are out there in the outside this room, that ripple just keeps going. And I can tell you that ripple's going and going. It's on the other side of the world. We, that's why we brought judges in from that parts of the world. But these images that we're looking at, people all over this planet are looking at them. And that's why it needed a, a title to these awards, which is as good as Icon. Do you think you like the name? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great name. Jerry, if you're lucky, Jerry might tell you the story about where that one was planted in his head because it's a great story. I don't know if he wants to share it. He might. But, um, yeah, the ripple effect. So with your pictures, you just don't know how far they're going to go. So when you create, start with a great idea, a great concept, you execute, then you put it on print at the highest level and we can show these images. That's where they've got to. You need to realise that whoever looks at that image and whoever looks at that print, that will go on and on and on and on. As Jerry said in the book, it'll last forever. The critiques, they're going to go on forever. They'll go, outlive us. But also to realise that when we talk about that ripple effect, we also talk about something else that's e even more important, that is community. And at the basis of the ICON process is the whole idea of community. The community of judges extends to you. We want you to feel like you're part of the family as we want the people out there in TV land or, or on the broadcast or watching the stream that you guys know that you're as much a part of the family as everybody in this room. So with that, let's look at the last category in the division, portrait narrative. We have Michael, Cheryl, Michelle, Sanjay and Nick. We've got Greece, UK, US, US, US. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, no, no. Let's face it. We're in Vegas. Let's go. Next print. This has a title, Four Horsemen. First thoughts, Michael. This is a, um, a great example of where the title can help just that extra half a percent in, in elevating the image uh, with uh, Four Horsemen, and, and we certainly know the power and devastation that, that, that these planes can, can bring, and certainly wouldn't want to be facing them uh, in my day-to-day -day other than possibly an air show. And so um, I think that, that a lot of the story kind of connects uh, in knowing that while it's beautiful to just look at these fly through the sky, uh, that there is this colossal power that's actually behind them. And there's so much more technical stuff that I'll let my colleagues speak on. Thanks, Michael. Sanjay. These 
these aerial, these aeroplane shots just fascinate me. They, they blow my mind. Um, what it takes to capture something like this, the speed at which they're moving at. I mean, you look at this image and it looks effortless. It looks easy. It looks static. But they're flying past us at several hundred miles an hour. Um, but the, yeah, just coming back to the narrative of it as well, the Four Horsemen, it kind of gives you this image of that narrative, but you have this image that looks actually incredibly serene. And what's interesting is the connection between the pilots mm -hmm. and they're all looking down at the pilot, the lead pilot there. Um, who is the, yeah, who is, who is the leader of the squadron basically, but it's kind of this connection, this harmony between the four of them and that harmony and that kind of the balance, the choreography between them, it just, there's a serenity to this image, even though we know what destruction the, these things can bring. So the closing comments, uh, Cheryl? Normally, usually, when you um, see an image that's taken, a photograph that's taken this masterfully of an airplane that's moving so fast, and especially in this formation, but the maker made the conscious decision that this is this this is a portrait. This is portrait of people, and this is the story of these people. And yes, they're in an airplane, and that's something that ties them together. But this is a story of people. That's beautiful. Yeah, connecting. Yeah, I just want to add the the importance of perspective here, because you could shoot this from side on, and the planes are actually slowing slightly different heights. So you'd lose that connection. And I, a subtlety that I think contributes to the, the tightness that a, a group of pilots have to be to fly this close together is the wingtip of each plane goes beyond the pilot next to them. So that pilot next to them is within their space. And that's how close they have to be. So there's a lot of subtleties in what looks like, as you said, Michael, at the beginning, a very simple uh, image. Next print, please. Okay, title, The Moment When Hours of Walking the Stairs Finally Kick-Started Active and Intense Labour. First thoughts, Nick. Point of interest, great composition. So maze, so complicated, but still so easy to realize what the maker wants to the viewer see. Excellent. Michael, can you pull this apart a little? Tell us what's going on in terms of the construction. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you, you first off have just a lovely architecture shot that, that works all on its own. And then you've got two subjects that are in there, which uh, I, I'm not sure that they're posed. It's they're they're just kind of doing their thing, and you've got them in in exactly the right spot. Which the difficulty of that is certainly something to keep in mind to have them just in the right spot, and it's off off in the top sort of uh, 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 third, and then and then on nodal point as well, and so. Just really lovely. It's it's that it's that extra little splash in there that that takes a, a good shot and makes it a great shot. Thank you, Michael. Michelle, any more? Yeah, the story in here is that um, she's trying to go into labor, and so you know they tell pregnant women if you've ever been there, exercise, walk, 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 and if you're late and you're close and you're tired and you're done and just walk, 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 walk and walking the stairs and she finally gets there and she's like, I think it may have worked. I think it might be in labor. And, <laughs> and like I can feel that story. Um, I just, and, and the composition, you know, that center cement pole that goes straight down the center, um, that pillar, and then the window that lines up perfectly in between the subjects. And then you have to get in close to see that she is very pregnant and walking to, you know, stimulate labor. And you can feel that. So well done on portrait storytelling. Can I add, I, I think it's important that they're at the top of the pitch, not the bottom, because we feel an effort to get to the top. Whereas if they're at the bottom, we wouldn't feel that effort, even the tension in, in his legs that he's had to push up. And it's all about that push up. And yeah, anyway, I've never had a baby, so I'm just guessing. Next print.
Grab a microphone, Cheryl, or get your first impressions on this one. Again, this is the category portrait narrative. Thanks, Cheryl. The first thing that grabbed me was the colors, colors, plural, um, the color palette here and the, the shape and movement, but the choice of those colors, the harmony, um, it just speaks volumes, yeah. Thanks, Cheryl. Sanjay. This, is a, this division is about the narrative of portraits. And this is one of those images that will ch challenge you. Um, and, and challenge you because, partially because of the abstract nature of the image, but partially because we then apply our own subjective perspective onto it. So everyone's gonna see something different. Um, I'm a geek, I see a scope. When I see this, a scope, you know, like one of these kind of graphical oscilloscopes or, you know, some sort of scope representing somebody's movement or the movement of a group of people. But, you know, then you, then again, there's, that's open to it. If I left that open and asked people to kind of speak about that, everyone's going to have a different interpretation of this. So a movement through life, a movement of um, mood, emotion, mental state physical state, whatever it is. You can just about make out some faces there as well. But I, th I almost feel like it would do this a disservice to try and break this down to actually get to the end point of what the narrative is. I think the beauty in this is that it's, uh, it, it is so abstract that maybe, this is not a cop out, but maybe it should just be left there, left open to interpretation because every time you look at this, it feels slightly different. And I think that's more to do with, that's more of a response of the viewer than the author necessarily. I'd love to hear everyone else's thoughts on that. Sure, you're nodding, so have you got a comment to add? Yeah, scopes, when you said scopes, um, and that everyone's gonna look at this in a different way and get something out of it. And I think we could sit here and look at it at a distance, up close, and get something different every time. You know, over time, something's going to evolve from it. Um, I just so appreciate the sort of risk that someone took that this is a portrait. This is a portrait. And when you think about traditionally what portraits were and what they have, you know, could be, um, I like where this fits in in that. Yeah, I think it's a service to all of us. It's a service to photography to um, create a portrait that has so much narrative and um, is something a little different to each of us. Yeah, so creative. It's tormented. Yeah. tormented. Yes. Yeah. It's, I, I feel, uh, when I look at this, I just, it's wild fire. Like the the red flame at the bottom, and then it goes up to that hot blue flame, that is just burning, and the energy and the movement in this person is wild fire, and just expressing that throughout the movement of this image. Is it possible it could be a group of dancers, like traditional ethnic dancing? It could be, it could uh, be a group of dancers. And the fire and the energy. Yeah. So yeah, there's a bulk of narratives that you could yeah, put it out could of be it. A so group. Yeah, a lot could of energy coming through one, the narrative. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Next print, please. So there's a title, Solace. Michael, what's the first thoughts? And what was the title again? Solace. 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 C -S -O -L -A -C -E. <coughs> Yeah, what what a what what a lovely use of of size in an image to to bring contrast in in that direction. Everything in terms of light is is somewhat similar across the image, and so the dynamic of of the tiny subject, uh, the tiny human subject, uh, with the building, and and actually the the subject appears slightly larger than than the vehicle just because of the elevation. 
Um, so I kind of like the the way the eye immediately just goes through the image. You you start with the the blocking of that of the building on the left, and then you're pulled right into the subject. So lovely lovely use of sizing there. Okay, let's have a Nick. If you can give us a bit more detail. Yeah, I would like to mention um, that uh, this is an everyday everyday life, everyday's life, um, like in a, in a. I see that the plate from the car is in Italy or something like that. So for me, give me a peaceful thought about how an ordinary guy can spend his day on a, on a coastline like this, going for fishing, parking his car next to the to the place where is he living or far away. So it's a great way to for the maker to present uh, an ordinary day of someone who lives in a, such a quiet and empty space. Anybody else? We'll finish that one off. Thanks, Sanjay. Without hearing the title, you know, three words came to mind. Is it solace, solitude, or isolation? But I mean, the, the title sort of gives it that sense of peace. Um, and, and I think that's that's the cool thing of an Im about an image that's so simple. It could be left, right, or middle. Mm. Um, and it's it's nice to know that it's solace rather than the other two. I, I think there's another hidden narrative here that the fact that the car's in the shot and parked so close to the wharf kind of tells us without us seeing anything else that there's not a lot of other people or cars around because you can't normally park a car that close in a busy port or anything. So it's obviously a very quiet, remote place which adds to that feeling of isolation and solace. And his head being down, uh, lost in his own little world, again, adds to that um, meditative, isolated feel. Great print. Next print, please. This has a title, The Ultimate Gift, Creating First and Last Memories for a Grieving Baby. <laughs> My apologies. I'll read that again. The Ultimate Gift, Creating First and Last Memories for a Grieving Family. My apologies. Michelle, can we have your first thoughts on this, please? If that's okay? Yeah. Um, this type of work is um, extremely difficult um, for every anyone who's ever done any work for, now I lay me down to sleep, you understand, or has been through this as a family. Um, to, to a family, this is everything, you know, and it deserves to be honored as difficult as it can be to see. And it is difficult um, for a family. This is really all they have of this child. And this image is, is everything to them. There's nothing that you can critique or take away from what this means to a mother, a father, siblings, grandparents, um, and it's hard work. It's extremely hard work. Yep. Um, and it just deserves a moment of respect, really. Thank you, Michelle. Michael, keeping that in mind, that this is difficult work, how do you approach the lighting and the, the, the technical aspects of something that is obviously emotional, but you want to create something that's got quality? Yeah, yeah, it's so easy to <clears throat> to um, constantly want to put uh, just our own vision and touch and signature on every single image, and sometimes uh, you are simply uh, capturing what's what's there and telling somebody else's story and maybe leaving a little bit of yourself behind. You ha you have this this strong, completely unflattering light almost begins to blow out in some places, definitely goes specular, and then it simply drops off to pitch, pitch darkness as you get out to the frames. And, uh, you know, that absolutely is, is, is the story here. And, and you, it doesn't matter, the corners don't matter. All, all of the other busyness that's happening in the top right of the frame, that doesn't matter either. 
you're, you're just simply caught in the story and you're not trying to completely change it to make it some artistic style of your own. It's just a memory that you're capturing for somebody else. Uh, Cheryl, maybe a final comment from you, Cheryl? What a service this photographer has done. Yeah. 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 yeah um, just a credit to all those photographers who do this work. In Australia, we have Heartfelt. And I've done, a, done this as well. And that's the power of the medium that we work in. Sometimes it doesn't need words. And simplicity is all it needs, is just an honest, an honest image can go so far and mean so much. Next print, please. Actually, can you take that print back from me, please? So um, I think it's important to recognise that, as we've said a couple of times today, the, the critical part that emotion plays in judging, and Sanjay... Uh, has a couple of times commented on the subjective nature of, of judging. And while, you know, purists sometimes look at it and say, you know, judging is too subjective. Well, judging is subjective. That's the whole point. We're all individuals. And that's one of the reasons we have five people, not one, because five people give us a rounded opinion. In a way, having a panel of five people, whether it's here commenting or whether it's online digital judging, we're getting a brains trust. We're getting a rounded opinion, a multifaceted perspective on that image, which takes into account some will be responding emotionally to an image, some will be responding technically to an image, and so on. And you will have noticed through the last two days, certain images affect certain judges in different ways, myself included. I mean, I've, I've been a judge for nearly, well, sounds a long time, 30 years, but, and when something you do or you, you can relate to, it does affect your judging. What makes a great judge is they can use that, that recognition, that connection to that style of work, but still be able to listen to other judges who come from it from a more neutral viewpoint and vice versa. Those who don't connect with the image can listen to those who have a connection and that's how we get a rounded opinion. That's why we have five judges. And that's why it's great to see that passion because I can tell you now, people who capture images, whether it's like the previous image or whether it's a totally different type of image, There'll be people who capture it who have passion about that style of work. That's why they shoot it. You know, we have photographers that shoot babies. We have photographers that shoot weddings. We have photographers that shoot landscapes. And they have a passion for it. We want that passion to be mirrored in our judges. And if you are passionate and, you feel, and you're ever judging anywhere, even if it's just a camera club or a local community, and you feel emotion, you think that's a weakness, please don't ever think that. That is an ultimate strength of a judge. And then being able to use that as one of your skill sets to then... Combine that with your knowledge and your experience to give an analytical and an emotional opinion. That makes a great judge. Just be honest. That's great. Next print, please. <coughs> this has a title. Shaka, as in S-H-A-K-A. -A. Shaka. S-H-A-K-A. -A. I'm not sure of the relevance, but I'm sure could have been the, could be the pilot's name. First impressions, thanks, Michelle. Okay. Oh, Goose. sorry. Sorry. Who can capture like a portrait of a pilot in a cockpit from like the air at that speed? Like, just it's just as soon as you think like, yeah, I'm trying to get a hang of this photography thing. You see this, and you're like, wow. Like, okay, I got to start all over. Like, <laughs> I, it's just it. I. It's extraordinary. So is the impact. Uh, it's all about perspective, isn't it? You're yeah. trying to think. How did you get that shot? Yeah. Sometimes like, that's where the impact comes from. Exactly. You know, I'm like, okay, is he in another? Is he, like, where, like, where is the photographer? How are they communicating? <clears throat> like, it doesn't even look like it's shot through any kind of glass. Is he hanging out of a helicopter? Are they hanging out of a helicopter? Like, I mean, 
are they in a parachute? Like, am I, how does this get created? Like, <laughs> I, I have no context for creating something like this. I, I'm, so I, I'm, I'm struggling <laughs> to think of a helicopter that can <laughs> no, keep I up know. with a plane. <laughs> I don't just, see, exactly. Like, I just don't know. Like, I, this is yeah. not my area of expertise at all. Like, you know, fighter pilot planes and like, how does this get done? So, but, but that's great. That's the impact, yes. right? Let's go to Michael. Michael, tell <laughs> us. I have my Cessna pilot's license, but I don't think that qualifies. Uh, that fast either. Yeah, no, probably not. Uh, yeah, all, all of those things. And, and what's interesting is that uh, I'll talk about the tones briefly in a second, but the fact that, that these images are still held to more or less the same standard. It's like we, we don't want to see blowing highlights. You know, you still need to handle your sky. Uh, the shadows need to have detail in them. So the fact that, that this is happening at, at 100 and something miles an hour, and that, and and that cool. you're, you have zero control over the situation is sort of not our problem as judges. And yet this maker was like, yeah, I could do that. Um, and then on top of that, the way that the tone and everything was kind of brought together between the actual aircraft and the sky in the back where it's just this kind of unifying uh, bluish, grayish tone uh, is, is, the, is the final touch, is what truly elevated it. Thank you. Tack sharp. It's so sharp. Nick? And, and add on this, on all of these, the, the, the timing of the photograph. I mean, I'm not sure if their communicator or the, the, the pilot talked to someone, uh, make the, the, the Saka to someone other, but how is it possible that the photographer had the ability to see that from a distance and take the picture on the same, on the time of, yeah, it's crazy. The presentation plus uh, and the, the, the cropping and the, 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 the matting, the, it's, it's brilliant. So. Um, Great job, great job. I don't know, I just asked Goose how he did it. Next print, please. Cheryl, your first thoughts, please. There's so much to see here, so much detail, so much story. It took a moment to figure out what he was doing. And now, you know, I see his stories painting a guitar. He's making a piece of artwork. And this is a beautiful representation of this person's story and what they do and what's important to them. The way it's been lit, the color. I mean, I'll, yeah. I could go on and on, sorry. But it, it, the, the impact for you was it just dragged you in and you started to it see it just story pulled unfold. me right in i wanted to know this story the right story. away yeah michelle can you talk to us about the construction of this image yeah so there's so much thought that goes into this because that room where he's in and the light on his face uh, this took a lot of planning this took a lot of thought process even the way the guitar is turned just enough so that you can see the face of it and the hole in front of it. You, we're seeing like almost like a profile of it, but we're seeing the front of it as well. The way his hand is positioned over his head. I, I mean, everything in here, the lines, the equipment that is in the foreground, the, the guitar templates that are on the floor, um, everything in here is really crafted so well. Um, even his stance, just the way he's standing creates that beautiful triangle and then you work up to his apron and then you can see his face and the, the paint spray coming off the sprayer. I mean, it's just really, really well done. Uh, Sanjay, what's your final thoughts on that one? He's like a, he's like a surgeon working in an incubator. Um, helping to give birth to this beautiful feminine form of a guitar. You can see the screen on the left, kind of looks like, a again, a, a, another scope. Um, it's just one of those days with scopes, isn't it? Um, you know, and it looks like such a, a technical process. He's so serious and, um, you know, and he's creating something that helps to bring creativity, art and joy to the rest of us. And you have this, what seems like a very clinical, mechanical process to create something so beautiful and artistic. It's, um, yeah, yeah and, and you're just drawn right into how focused he is in 
in creating this thing. So that, again, it's that sort of that duality. And just actually the hero f for me in this image is the little diagram of the guitar on the screen. Excellent. Thank you, judges. Next print, please. Michael, your first thoughts, please. Yeah, this this has uh, has has quite an interesting feel to it. So, uh, I'll 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 briefly just point out that I I adore the fact that that the layering is happening here in terms of we have a matte paper that uh, tends to soften the the darks, but which is what's happening with the subject. Then as you go back, you begin to really truly feel the layers. The first like little hill is still dark, then you go back further and it lightens up. And in such a simple shot, a colossal amount of depth and dimension I think is wonderful. Thank you. Cheryl, can you break this image down a little bit more for us? Break it down, like tell us a bit more about the what's going on to construct an image like this? Oh, the technical skill involved with this is tremendous. Is tack sharp? And when you think about the movement here, um, it's so much detail between the horse and the, um, the rider. Again, a, another beautiful portrait of a person doing what they do, um, telling us something about who they are, and captured that photographer could have put themselves anywhere and the low angle um, bringing us sort of more in line with that rider and the position they're in, the position of vulnerability that we can feel the power of the horse. Um, just beautifully done, yeah. Uh, final thoughts, maybe Nick? Um, such a difficult time of the day to to photograph because of the sunlight, it's a natural light, but still we can understand uh, what is going on. Um, and uh, I like the idea that the, the maker tried to, to capture some culture, I think, of an Asian community of uh, most likely Mongolian or somewhere because of the outfit I st from the stylized. So for me, it's the story behind the image which makes me, attracts me more the attention of, of the overall. Yeah, I, I just want to, yeah, get you, Did sorry? You no, I didn't have a title, I just, put, oh, go on, you go. I think what's really interesting about it is when you get up close, the, this is a very difficult move for this person to be like, not hanging because I think it's very purposeful, but whatever he's doing in touching the ground or picking something up, it, it, he's very skilled at it because his face is so serene. The the horse looks more stressed about it than the the man who's hanging off the horse. The it's incredible. Like just that it's something that obviously this is well um, rehearsed. And not it's something he does all the time. This isn't just like. But how it's captured is so well done. And and he just it looks. Like, I could try that and look just like it, it, but I would kill myself, but but he, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, but because it, it looks so effortless for the rider to be doing what he's doing yeah. and, and the, the strength at which the horse is coming at the fr towards the frame. I think it's just, it, the act of it is a little lost if you don't see how serene he looks in doing it. Yeah, I think an important part of the narrative here is the timing of the photographer has created a balance within the image. And the timing, to get an, a, a shot like this that's happening so quickly, there's a skill involved in positioning yourself both to get the maximum out of the light and composition. If you look at the clouds in the sky, there's two clouds, one on the right, one on the left, and the 
hold horse and rider a position beautifully. But the balance is created and freezes the moment that the, the rider leaning off to the, to, the, to, our le to the left or his right is balanced by the horse leaning the opposite way to counterbalance it. And then even the shadow of the horse's feet is counterbalanced by the puffs of white. So the whole image is each side of it is balanced. So all of a sudden, all of this moment movement is frozen and allowing us just to, to s tune in on this one moment in something that happens so quick. It's very clever. Uh, we might move on, but yeah, there's, there's lots to say about some of the pictures, but thank you, judges. Next print. This one has a title, Going Full Circle, a printed image of viewers enjoying the printed image. Let's have a comment from Sanjay. First thoughts. I like the, the, the play on the concepts and the title, you know, just the the kind of the whole sort of irony and meta-ness of us looking at a picture of people looking at pictures, you know, and it's sort of going full circle, kind of enveloping that whole that whole thing. Um, there's something really sci-fi sci about this. Um, this is like 2001 Space Odyssey sort of feel to it. There's a whole linearity. Just, it's been designed. You know, the concept's been designed, the presentation's been designed, and the whole feel of the whole thing has been designed. Mm. And then you're left wondering maybe what they're feeling or experiencing. Thank you, Sanjay. Michael. Yeah, you, you have this wide perspective uh, and and it's so easy to just get in there and and take an interesting uh, reportage shot of, of a viewer with a with an expression on their face and how they're gazing at the images but here the subjects as they're as they're looking just become almost essentially a part of the background and you're subjected to this like amazing uh, view of all of the images and so my mind really stays on on these images and I start looking okay Are they put there in a color pattern? Is this all a single maker? Or is this just an exhibition of, of multiple images and then it's it's in its simplicity I'm still questioning it so much and then finally in the presentation aspect of it keeping it very tight It, it almost begins to it gives you a lot of breathing room Horizontally, but it but it makes you feel slightly uncomfortably uncomfortable vertically because it starts to compress you in and the mat and presentation itself Tells you that this is the ceiling and this is where you're at So I love this this pulling in one direction, but pushing in the other direction. Thank you, Michael um, Cheryl perhaps a closing comment on this one I Appreciate the color the color is beautiful in the reflection in the floor. So the photographer has made a series of decisions that has led to this. This could have been done in so many different ways. And, um, and there's the mastery of getting the, the, um, the shot right, but the imagination that went into um, creating this beautiful piece of artwork. Thank you, Cheryl. Next print, please. It says a title, There Goes My Hero. <coughs> First thoughts, Nick. Uh, excellent use of monochrome and the black and white uh, with the shadows on uh, the bottom side and the uh, highlights from the smokes on the top. The maker deliberately chose to make it black and white, so he, he they create they create uh, um, the most important part of the image, which is the the speed and the the distance from the viewers on the button. So uh, I really enjoy 
his, uh, their effort for, for the final image. Thank you, Nick. Michelle? It just has such a, could be 100 years ago, um, the silhouette of the people at the bottom, um, they have hats on that are reminiscent of like a fedora or something that would have been worn 100 years ago. Um, it, it just feels like it could be yesterday or it could be my grandfather standing in the bottom of that frame. Um, the, the print handling is really beautiful as well. The, the paper is so nice. There's just this light texture in the paper which really brings out the texture in the, in the smoke, if that's the right word. But then the highlight as it comes up to the end of the, the airplanes, the jets, just really brings your attention to them. So it's like there's almost two different images going on. Like there's an image right there at the bottom and then there's an image at the top and then you marry them and then it's really something altogether different. Michael, any comments to add? Yeah, um, if, if you get a chance to look at this up close, the, the, the jets almost have a Banksy the artist look to them, if you get really close, they kind of have this almost graffiti-like feel to them, uh, especially on, on this paper. Uh, so really interesting that you lose a lot of the detail, but that's not important because the overall picture is what you're getting in the bottom. And with the bottom, what I'm envisioning almost is like, it's like when you try and get into like those booths to shoot on the show floor and you can't and it's packed. So just take a step back. Let's just get a shot of the entire thing and make it even better than whatever the, whatever these guys have got. So. Wonderful work, Maker. You'd have surprised a few people with those planes 100 years ago, wouldn't you? Um, it just has that nostalgic feel. <laughs> That's great. That was great, judges. Again, <laughs> again, you guys are amazing. Some great comments in there. Uh, you guys enjoying that? Plenty there? Yeah. That was the last image in portrait narrative, and I believe the last category in the portrait division. I'll hand, hand back to the amazing Melissa Guionis, and we'll see where we go next. Thanks, Melissa. All right, thank you to this current panel of judges. That does conclude the portrait division. So uh, we just need a couple of minutes. They still have to choose their winners for this category. So we're gonna just take a pause just for a minute or two to get them all logged into their judging console. Then we'll reset here at the gallery wall. We'll give them a chance to look at all of the images one more time all together. And then they will select who they would like to see as the winners for this category. Uh, we will not share who they choose with you. We will leave that as a surprise for tomorrow night so we can all be excited together. But uh, think about who you might have chosen to win first, second, and third place and then see how that compares to what the judges chose tomorrow night. So give us just a couple of minutes and we will be right back.
Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Uh, that was uh, incredible to listen to. I was, uh, it, it, what a privilege yeah. to be in the room while I was being discussed. Absolutely. So, guys, take a breath. Let it soak in. Portrait narrative. This is new to the Icon Awards and the, the overall process that we've been managing for the last decade or so. So, take your time and please proceed. So this is a new category. Obviously, we need support for this. If you want to see this particular category continue, you need to enter it. So let me describe to you what the rules say. And I should know them because we wrote them. Um, but let me tell you specifically from the website here. Featuring story-driven images of people of a photojournalistic nature, which may include birth, sports, travel, street photography, concerts, and non-wedding events. So don't confuse it with I've got a portrait, there's a story involved in it, therefore I'm going to put it in portrait narrative. The great thing that we've done, I thought that when I've entered competitions over the years, I get confused about which category to enter, and it can be really, really confusing and cumbersome mentally. So what we've done this year, and obviously we'll continue, you simply answer four questions. So when you answer four questions, it'll come up with a category and it'll say, we believe you should be in the portrait narrative category. So there's no mistake. And if there's a problem, you contact us and we'll fix it. But I think we got it right like 99% of the time. And usually when it was wrong, it's because you guys didn't read. <laughs> Let me just say that. All right, let's have a look. I know Jerry's mentioned it a couple of times, but what happens is, is we have three of us up here to take a look at the winners, verify the winners, so there's never um, any inkling that any of us are going to make any changes up here. We're all independently verifying who the judges chose, and um, that's how we'll know who to announce tomorrow night. Even the judges don't know. So that, the, that means that the judges have selected their winners. We'll find out tomorrow night who won. That concludes the portrait narrative category, and that also concludes the portrait division. Um, that was an amazing division, you guys. Huge thank you to Westcott for sponsoring that entire division. It's a massive one, and uh, we saw some amazing images throughout the day today. We are now going to move on into the creative division, which is also a very fun division. We need a few minutes just to get all the prints set up and get ourselves organized for that. So we're gonna just take a quick little break, get ourselves settled, and we'll be right back with you guys.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back and about to launch into our next category in the Icon Awards. We are on day two and just really having an amazing couple days, if I do say so myself. We are seeing some amazing images, hearing some incredible feedback on them. And right now, we are going to start the creative division. So this is, we did a couple categories in it yesterday, but we are gonna continue in this category, and it's a lot of fun. Um, we, the creative category is very different, uh, division is different from all of our other divisions because the photographers that enter this division get a little bit more freedom when it comes to their post-production. They get to use more tools and techniques that maybe might not be allowed in other divisions. They can illustrate objects, they can um, use texts and patterns and frames and that kind of thing. It's also the only division where you are allowed to include composites. Uh, that does not mean that every image you see is going to be a composite, but if you have a composite, it must be in the creative division. So that's, uh, we're going to see some really interesting pieces over the next couple of categories, which will be a lot of fun. The creative division is sponsored by Epson, a name that is very familiar to all of us because Epson creates solutions that we all use every day, from printers and scanners to projectors and inks. So huge thank you to Epson for being a part of the Icon Awards. It's, that's absolutely massive and we're so appreciative of that. Our, the very first category that we're gonna launch into in the, portrait, uh, in the portrait division is the portrait creative category. This is our biggest category in the competition. So remember, the finalists were chosen because they had the top 10 scores, but if that last score, as you go down, if there were several that had that score, we included all of them. So in some cases, like with this one, we have a bit larger category. Um, so we are now going to enjoy a very good discussion with our judges. I'm gonna turn it over to Tony Hewitt. Tony, thank you so much, and to our panel of judges for our next set of images in the portrait creative category. Thank you, Melissa. We have some of our judges back from before, some that were here not that long ago. We also have a new judge joined us again from our broader pool, and that's Mara Cantelmi, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Good to have another Aussie here, along with Kelly. And of course, Cheryl, Gary, and Joseph, all from the States. So with that, Portrait Creative, this is always an exciting one, and it, it is a different category, but I always look at it as there's, you, there's a category on one side, which is this, and on the other is you've got that in-camera artistry, and then the other category sit in the middle. So this is the one out on this side, where we get to see what people can do with the amazing tools available to us, particularly if they start their file with a Nikon camera or a Nikon camera. Anyway, they couldn't all have done that, but that's where you can start. Let's have the first print in Portrait Creative, thank you. This one has a title, and the title is Isolation. Uh, first Thoughts, JVS. It's, it's, the, it's that little tear in her right eye. Um, made me get up close to see the detail. Um, it's so emotionally. I, it, 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 yeah, I'm kind of like, not speechless, but it's quiet, but haunting, and but it's pastel, you know? So it's a bit of a, a mind duck, you know? Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful capture. Thank you. Gary, can you tell us a little bit more about the structure of this? Uh, yeah, holy cow. Um, <laughs> great way to start out. This has some really cool opposing ideas. Besides being, you know, the composition, the lighting, all the bones are there for like a great photograph. But the imagination that went into this and the detail I is, is really stunning. For example, a as JVS kind of alluded to, you have a very, the, the, the technique applied and the color palette are really whimsical, but the subject matter is really dark. And then, the, uh, the creator of this image also goes into some really cool little, p pardon the pun, Easter eggs <laughs> to, to make this image more interesting. For example, you have the parakeet, which is free, and the little girl is in the cage. And those ideas are opposite, should be swapped around. You have uh, the eggs laid in the hair, and you have the broken branch on the one side. And there are all these little things that hint at this sort of like uh, 
Tim Burton-y kind of like sweet sickness to it. And so it's got a really lovely sense of style and irony built into the image as well as the technical bones of, of solid image making. Lighting? Um, it's it's it doesn't match the storytelling, which I love, which is well done on purpose. So you have a very soft directional light, very soft shadows, and uh, I, I don't want to step on your toes here, Cheryl, but the paper is actually supporting that low contrast, which again is in opposition to the storytelling, which is all very very intentional. I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna get Cheryl as the third speaker to just expand on that paper choice or, or, or what you what you might think could add to it. Yeah, this is beautifully printed. This matte paper and. Um, and just the texture combining with the, um, with the texture of the little girl's hair and her outfit and then the backdrop, the background, as opposed to this metal cage, which appears more smooth and, um, and truly metallic and strong around her in, in, um, the paper lends to that. Thank you, Cheryl. Next print, please. Again, a reminder to the audience that we are looking at the best of the category, and as, as Melissa said, this is a huge category, it's the largest category in the competition or division. Uh, to, so just to make the final, you should be, you know, celebrating the fact that you got to this top top level because everything we're seeing here is, is of a top top standard, high standard work. Okay, first comment, uh, Mauro. What's the first thing that hits you? I feel like I'm in a movie. <laughs> this, this looks amazing. Just the. It, it's definitely evoked a lot of emotion for me just looking at the image, the way she's posed. Um, your eye is drawn dramatically, obviously, to the subject. Um, the animals are just, you know, they're there. They're there and they're not there, you know. They're there where once your eye sort of guides right across, you know, you can really see all that impact even from all the animals, but perfectly posed as well. It's a beautiful pose Thanks, too. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Kelly, a bit more about what goes into this image. Oh, the concept here from the photographer is really out there. Like, I mean, who thinks to put all of these different creatures together with this beautifully Marie Antoinette-styled um, portrait? The the placement of each of those elements within the frame just balance each, each other really well in terms of the composition. And the photographer has done an incredible do job to control the the direction and intensity of light on each of those elements that have been brought together. The, uh, I mean, there is just a level of dynamic range here throughout this entire print that, you know, has, has created an amazing amount of impact for all of us. We all went, wow, and that's basically what it's doing here for us. There's so much that you can read into it um, and, and come up with your own idea and, and concept of the elements that have been produced. Final presented. thoughts, uh, JVS? So overall, I feel like she also had a trip to the taxidermist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, seriously, I, I feel like she's another one of these animals, but a different breed, but mainly because of her posing and the broken wrists and the way her feet are dangling. I feel like she's just another element w with these animals. Um, it's like freaky in a really cool way. Um, I haven't seen it before, and I, I applaud the maker for just generating this much conversation over a single image. So twisting the narrative at the end there. Yeah, it's great. Next print, please. First thoughts, Kelly? The eye contact, the the impact that it has, and it just draws you straight into that beautiful face, and then you've got all of this textural sort of, uh, I don't want to call they're not elements, but they're shapes that create so much dimension. It just gives you such um, an amazing impact. Yeah, it's, it's quite breathtaking, really. Uh, Gary? Yeah, sure. Um, Initially, I, I sort of started to, you know, view this as almost a kind of Picasso-esque abstraction, you know, where you just take pieces and slightly move them out of the way. And so, you know, in traditional ideas of physical beauty, we talk about symmetry. And so this is intentionally taking what is an incredibly beautiful symmetrical subject and then making them just slightly asymmetrical to make you uncomfortable. And then all of the most exciting elements 
in the rest of the image are actually like a lack of. It's like an empty hole where something should be. And there's a really just a beautiful sort of abstract and weird design to it. Yet somehow, if you sit back and look at it all at once, it maintains a really perfect balance. And it's, you know, it's just weighted exactly how it should be, even though everything is slightly pushed out from symmetry. So it's just a really clever, tasteful design that at its heart is also a really stunning photograph. So great use of the creativity here. And just quickly, the light, because looking at the separate, we're getting this level of separation from those shapes to the cloth behind. Mm. Okay, was there a question? Yeah, I was just, just curious how you think that with the light, how it's affected this image, because you can see those shapes in the foreground on right. the material. Then there's obviously a gap between them, you know, the, the lighting is helping that. It, it almost might be, yeah, because the light does create that texture and that depth, but it almost might be the same image and then slightly smaller behind it. Yes. And so the lighting is consistent, so it, it's very believable, the overall effect, yes. which I like That's a lot. It. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, Mauro, last, last comment. What's, what's one thing you sort of final? The emotion it evoked to me was almost, you know, uh, religious as well, like an icon. You know, okay. When you go to the church, it's just amazing how even the expression is is sort of very very iconic in the sense of like when you go to a church and you see these beautiful beautiful icons on the walls um it's given me a very religious and it's given me goosebumps looking okay. at it really thank you. really really interesting thank you Mo. next print please this image has a title greatest show on earth All right, Gary, you're laughing, you're crying, you're wiping the tears. What's the, what's the first thing? <laughs> because this is what my house looks like at dinner time. <laughs> oh, man. <coughs> oh, man. I live this as my life. Um, yeah, this is, I think, a really great example. Ultimately, you, there's just so much to enjoy. I guess my initial impression of this is I'm looking for the seams, and yet all I'm doing is just enjoying the narrative. And so, like, I want to just go in there and start, you know, being a nerdy photographer, but I'm just going to sit back and, and enjoy the story as you go from top to bottom because there's 50 elements in there to enjoy. So right away, it's bright, it's colorful, it's whimsical, and I just want to sit and enjoy it a bit more. Cheryl, there's a lot going on here. Can you break it down to some of the basic um, techniques that have been done well? My first thought was, not my monkeys, not my circus. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all these different elements um, have been composited together masterfully and then the way the color's been handled. So we have these, uh, this cool background and then the warmth, the red, um, the fire <laughs> and, and the red, the passion um, of this mom here juggling everything, uh, the circus theme, it just all comes together really well. It was obviously just planned out and thought through um, and a lot of effort goes into something like this. So job well done. How difficult is it to light multiple elements and then bring them together so they look consistent? Oh, so hard. <laughs> so, so hard. And from our perspective looking at this, we're looking down at the appliances but up at her. So everything has to be photographed with that in mind. Those children have to be photographed looking, you know, at the angle where we are um, and keeping that in mind. You, you can't mess that up or you will lose the entire um, cohesiveness of the story. Excellent. JVS, last comment? There's all these little stories within the stories, like the pet hamster on top of the dryer, um, things are baking, things are on fire. Um, our house isn't like this. Sometimes I kind of wish it was, you know. Um, but I, I think the thing that's most impressive is when you get up on top of this print, like the resolutions match, the focal lengths used to put the items in the proper places are correct. Nothing was like shot with like a 50 and then something else was shot with a 200. So everything feels very to scale. And I think that's the hardest part of putting together um, a composite is having everything be uh, work in unison. Thanks, Javius. Next print, please.
Gary, I'm going to ask you for your first impressions on this one, or what hits you first. Sure. Oh, uh, <coughs> that mic's louder than the other one. I'll leg it up. The obviously, you know, this is very familiar. You know, as as the Last Supper. Uh, <laughs> But you just fall into it trying to figure out the story. And the closer you get to it, there's a thousand little elements in there to where if this was hanging in an art gallery, you could stand in front of it for an hour and just keep going deeper and deeper. Just not only is it technically exceptional, but it's also creatively just deep and, and uh, well worth spending the time going over every exacting little element so someone else can break it down. I'm just going to sit here and look at it for a while if that's okay. No, maybe break it down a little bit. Tell us a little bit about how this is sort of thing's constructed and what's, what's, what's done. Well, looking at the image overall, there's so much to absorb there, Tony, and I love the fact that you've got two counterbalances on either side of the table that keeps the eye drawn into the middle, although it doesn't take long for the eye to go immediately to the middle. And I'm not sure what the, what's on the top of the uh, person's head in the middle, but it's, it's mesmerizing, it really is. And then you've got all the elements of all the other characters. And even, I don't know what you would call those things, flying, drawing the intention to the middle. And, and even looking at the skulls on, on, the, on the ground, that sort of just tops everything off. It's, wow, I'm jealous, I'm actually jealous. It's that good. I'm jealous, so. Okay, let's go to Kelly, maybe another comment there. Who thinks to put something like this <laughs> together? There is a two-headed Cupid flying <coughs> in the air above them. There's so much to love about this. The balance is just exquisite. Each of those characters, whilst they have skulls as heads, each of them has their own personality. So the idea and the concept that has been created here and presented to us has all like has literally left left us gobsmacked because who thinks of this and as gary said you could look at this for hours and just continually pull out little kind of chunks of story and and try and make sense of it but i think that's the best part we're presented with a print here that not only has been pr printed beautifully but even just the framing of it um, has brought it all together and the light within the center and how it just radiates warmth throughout the whole scene there and then just sort of falls off subtly into the death that's at the base of this print it's it's masterful Entertaining and intriguing all at once. But yeah, another example of excellence and that's why this is a finalist as, as all the other prints in this category. Let's move on to the next one. This image has a title, Sleep Paralysis. Okay, Mara, you, as soon as this came around, you went like that. I want to know what brought on that impact. What, what was that impact? What was that sort of response driven by? I've had dreams like this. <laughs> you have dreams? A bit louder. <laughs> I've had dreams like this. Yeah. Um, <coughs> impact, impact, impact. Um, from the minute that, that turned, the image turned around, it just hit me straight away. The, the, you could already see the story behind it immediately. Now... You know, as photographers, we always strive to, to create a narrative for a photograph. Um, sometimes it takes the viewer a little bit longer than other times. And the reason why I said wow is the fact that, again, I'm getting goosebumps for this. I'm like, just amazing how the narrative can be told in, in a split second. Which is? What is the narrative? Well, for me, for you. well, for me, you know, it's a nightmare there big nightmare so okay. yeah and okay. just the way even on the other side of the door how you've got two opposites how I would look at it is real life on the right side holding back you know what what that nightmare is coming on the left and okay. even even just the way the the photographer has captured the hair flying and how not even seeing the person's face there you could really see how terrified they are just by the pressure of the hand and the posing that's involved for a photo like that. 
is, is quite amazing. You can't, you can't actually ask someone to feel terrified unless they've felt being terrified before in the first place. Yeah, no, well seen. That's so, you know, looking at the posing side, that's immaculate. Yeah. Absolutely immaculate. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kelly, can you maybe go a bit further into that? Yeah, I just want to applaud the photographer <coughs> to start with for being able to separate two worlds. You know, you've got the, the lifelike world that she's living and then you've got that dream state on the other side of the door. So when you look at this, there's two completely different scenes here, but they've been, you know, brought together beautifully by that red door. And the tension, as, as Mario pointed out in this, has um, been captured really, really well. It, it, is, it, it does make you feel uncomfortable, but it leads you into the story of the image, which is what the impact for us, uh, well, for me personally, really is. But, you know, the texture in the background is beautiful. It gives it this really, you know, beautiful grungy feel to it. And the way that it's been lit um, on the right-hand side where the, the real life is, what she's living has got, you know, a level of intensity that does draw you in and gives you that impact. And then you've got that softer sort of light on the other side of the door where it is that more dream state. So really well done in terms of handling that and then bringing them together. But that bread door in the middle, yeah, well done. Cheryl, maybe a final comment there? The use of color, that's what struck me, that red door right in the middle, that the idea of red being life, that dividing line between um, the living and the fear. Yeah. I'm just going to add that um, through two days to this point, this word has not been used and often it's the actual technique is overused, but I think in this particular image, the vignette actually dr sort of closes us in and gives us that pressure of being closed in in your own space, can't sleep and all of that. Um, we'll move on to the next print. What impacts you first, Gary? <laughs> Great example. Uh, obviously, there's styling, there's lighting, posing, expression. It's just all done on a really high level. So the next step is storytelling and telling the viewer what to look at and in what order. So I leaned in thinking, oh, it's an old-timey kind of explorer. The, oh, my God! And there's like, you know, so it's it's it, it lures you in with this sort of like goofy kind of like, you know, academic guys being nerds and setting up a projector. I'm like, what is this, a map of Europe? Oh, Jesus! And it's, uh, it's, it's just really clever. It's almost like a practical joke. Because on the left side is very funny, and the right side is nightmare fuel. And so I love being drawn in and given a little treat for that. So just very, very clever. JVS, putting this together, what, what some of the things had to be considered in terms of lighting and such and such? Well, you know, had the lighting had to... to um it's opposite, so there's actually a light source coming from the projector, and then there's this unknown light source that's coming from camera right. Um, I actually judged this image online, and the first time I saw it, I, I swear I saw like a, a prisoner in the corner, you know, with one eye looking at me, and I got up and studied it and realized it's another reel. But there's, just, there's so many little intricate details throughout the entire print that were handled so well that it's one of these, th there's a bit of a, a circle going on, and I think the fact that that bulb hanging from the top that's not on, but it's one of the brightest parts of the frame, is what keeps us going around and around and around. I also think like the reverse hands coming out of the wall is, is pretty freaky, and it was pretty successful. Okay. Any final comment? Just a quick one. Sure. Oh no, Mara, put your hand up. Thank you. Kudos to the author because all that detail is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing, and I'm sure they would have had sleepless nights just adding little bits of elements to each of this photo and to have it vivid in their head to then capture it. Um, I can see them having a lot of sleepless nights to get everything right there, no doubt. So, well done. Next print, please. This has a title, From Pup to Pooch. Okay, Kelly, why did everyone laugh when they looked at it? 
that work? No, it does. It does? Yeah. I actually have judged this image before and I'm going to stick with my commentary that I've previously given it and <laughs> This is a print that you really do need to go up and look at very closely because the detail, the thought process, I mean, the impact is obviously those two dogs in the middle that you get, but there's so much going on here. So I just want to really encourage everyone to go and study this because it is incredible. And what um, you will notice when you do look at it is that beautiful paw print in the center of this behind the two main um, dogs here. Well, the young and the old, but yeah, the, the colour palette, everything has just been handled so well and incredibly thought, thoughtful process. Okay, Gary, do you want to unpack this one a bit more? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of us are, are professionals and we're business owners, and as I'm enjoying this, I'm thinking, you could sell the absolute crap out of this, you know, which I really like. Is this is every two weeks a photo shoot with a dog. If somebody loves their dog that much, you can make a fortune. Um, so I'm looking at it. And, and if you read the text around the outside, it, this is a project over the course of a year. And so what's really exceptional about this is the consistency of the lighting and processing and the overall finish on every single image for a whole year. I don't know about anybody else, but I like change how I do things all the time. Every time I find out about a new technique on YouTube, I'm like, Boom. so like to commit to that and then the you know, the consistency of that as, as a craftsperson is, is really phenomenal. And the, it's geometrically pleasing, you know, it's emotionally pleasing, uh, and there's incredible storytelling. From, the, from, down, from down to the welcome home little ribbon around the puppy's neck, and then the same puppy as year old with a birthday hat on. I mean, and none of it is too distracting as much as it's there. It's incredibly well balanced all the way around and something that if you were to hang this in your home, you could just every once in a while you just stop by and just giggle and be so glad that it exists, you know. So just great uh, craftsmanship, great creativity, uh, great and the, and the technical excellence behind keeping it as consistent as it is. Try to take the same subject, yeah, try to take the same subject on day one and then every two weeks and just get the white balance the same. You know what I mean? Like it's, this is, the, <coughs> As whimsical as it is, there is a technical, like, like, complete technical badass behind this image as well as of somebody who's incredibly creative. And that's what is really so charming about it when it all comes together. Yeah. I, I like, there's a lot of little details. I'll add the footprints going around the outside, actually direct us which way to follow the story, things like that. There's a lot of thought got into it. Next print, please. JVS, what was uh, what, what's the impact on you in the first instance? This is a lot of layers. I just don't know how you even manage this many layers. But the like the thought process, like somebody had to like sketch this out and think about how do I photograph this and where does it go? Because nothing feels out of place. So as you go round and round and read the words and the, the body parts and the anatomy and um, each and every element could stand on its own. So like down here and here, these are all individual images that come back together here and the flame in the middle, it's it's a little mesmerizing. So um, I think if I had bad dreams, they would probably be this detailed. Um, <laughs> it's just, it, there's so much information there that again, Gary mentioned it earlier in another print, like you could hang this thing six foot high in a gallery and put a single bench there, and that'd be the only piece of art in the whole room. And yeah. people would come in one by one, and you would just sit there and... Look at that, yeah. That's beautiful. Is that? Is there a title? No, there's no title. Kelly, um, maybe just pull it apart a little further, what you think's been done, how, how it's been put together. A lot of elements have been photographed here separately, and combined to create something that has literally left us all jaw-dropping. Like, it's it's... 
to try and sum this up in a couple of minutes is, is going to be really tricky, I think, for all of us because we're, there's just so much to look at here and there's so many different elements that have been so well thought out and brought together. There is... You know, you've got the fetus in the bottom with the baby in it. We get a little sort of like insight into what's inside that that egg. And then you, you see the fetus in the bottom left-hand corner. And then you come to the top and you, you're seeing an eye inside the brain. <laughs> like <laughs> to try and make sense of this is, is what's so incredible about it. And I love that it's challenged us. But... Every single element and every single detail from the frames that each of those elements are in have been so well crafted and composited together. It is seamless. The retouching on this is, is absolutely seamless. And then we start to look at, you know, the, the colour palette and the tonal range that has been handled beautifully throughout all of these different elements. And then it's been printed beautifully. Like, there's nothing that you could do differently or even add to this like it's just been so well thought out but who thinks of this <laughs> like I'm literally like in awe Gary in a closing comment we're seeing some images come through that are simple impact is obvious and yet we can still appreciate it as being an outstanding you know top level image but then there's images that even given we give you a couple of minutes, you're still sitting there as judges, experienced judges, thinking, so in terms of scoring, can you appreciate and score and, and qualify a print that you may still be understanding even as you're doing it? Yeah, and, and that's <coughs> what we train for, you know, is to be able to evaluate it. It doesn't take much looking to understand how excellent this is. It, it, as many elements as there are, everybody on this panel could find a seam, you know, in a second, because you just do it for so many thousands of hours over the years. But I, I put my nose on this almost, and there, there's nothing. And, and I would go so far as say, stop trying so hard. <laughs> like, it, you could you could have gotten a 90 with any one of the individual panels of this. So there's something wrong with you. Uh, it, like, why did you do this much? Uh, no, it, it's just... This is the highest level of, of what is done in this genre. Uh, and you can't say enough things about it. The hollow bones, obviously, in, and the angels are clearly from eggs. The lack of reproductive organs, you know, like the just, uh, there's just delicious element after. It's, it's like a celestial codex, yeah. you know, it's really yeah. just, that, that, by the way, you should have titled it that. Um, that it's, <laughs> Uh, no words. I gotcha. They had you at hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to move to the next print. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, this one has a title, Home Improvement. Don't we live in a wonderful industry? Isn't it amazing what can be done? Okay, Mauro, what's, the, what's the, your first impact? Very colourful. Colour? Uh, definitely the colour, yeah. impact-wise. Um, the photographers definitely use colour to their advantage. And I like the lady smack bang in the middle, where normally yellow, you know, when you compare yellow to blues and stuff, it normally doesn't tend to stand out too, too much. But the yellow jumper that she's wearing works so perfectly um, with the whole composition and then your eye just runs around everywhere else the the little girl you know hanging off the chandelier sort of feels like you know she's ready to jump on me as the viewer that that right at that moment looks beautiful well I just hope dad's got that saw right because I don't want him sawing anything off of <laughs> the uh, of the little one there but um, you know it really makes it all come alive and so happy you know so um, energy. it's the energy here that I see is just a beautiful happy family and and it's starting to actually make me feel old because I miss I miss my children at this age you know <laughs> so it's actually brought back a little bit of emotion and probably one of the best periods of my life good that's for sure Cheryl looking at all the shapes here the triangles this circular motion, you know, my eye goes around in a circle, um, the staircase going up, and, and the use of color. I mean, the use of color is masterful in this. Um, 
but all these shapes are really interesting, pulling this all together, keeping it cohesive. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the, even the blue, red, and yellow on the stairs are important because oh, yeah. if it was one color, you'd be leaning towards one. It, it, yeah, well balanced. Next print, please. This has a title, Modern Family. Okay, judges, let's get a first impression from Kelly. It's definitely a unique way to present a family portrait and the colour palette is beautiful. I love that each of these, you know, these, these family members have their own little frame within this family tree um, to help portray their own personality it's been presented beautifully and printed beautifully for me yeah thank you gary uh, thank you uh, so much storytelling in here from going to the bottom right where there's clearly a baby who's supposed to be there but they won't let you put him down you know so the baby's up with mom above there like that's that's real life you know you got the one sibling who's just Still not married yet, you know, and then you got the one sibling who's clearly the oldest and most responsible, but is also asleep, uh, you know. Uh, but, and it's all the little details. So this is a, just in, in, in terms of being a modern family portrait, as in this is what a modern family looks like, it's also a very modern way to display it using the kind of bedrock of a, like a really old style illustration. And then finally closing off with these beautiful little details like the double key line around the outside. And then in the top left, you'll notice that the creator has made this really silly little coat of arms that says lots of things about them. It's like a glass of wine and a golf club and like a cat poking out of the top. You know, uh, this is, again, an extremely sellable product, but you could just enjoy this for a good long time. And I, 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 if, if you're here, I'll, I'll hire you to do this for my family. Uh, but just delicious all the way through. Beautiful lighting. Again, the bones of it photographically are, are fantastic as well. Thank you, Gary. JVS, final comment. So I think the overall presentation is beautiful. So if you squint, you can see how everyone is slowly darker on the edges that still lead up to the leaders. So the outer family is darker. We get to the center of that single sun. But as we go up, it's actually lighter at the top. So we know where this family started from. And I, I think it's really cool how like dad's reading or doing book keeping and mom's just kind of like, do whatever you do, man. <laughs> um, you got this, look at, look at what we did. Um, but yeah, I think it's the kind of thing that like any family would be honored to have. And uh, the author did an amazing job. Thanks, Javi. Yes, next print, please. This print has a title. Print actually doesn't have a title, sorry. First thought, Cheryl. This is a masterpiece. Looks like a Renaissance painting, but it's created um, with photographs. The color, I mean, the color palette, everything about it is just, um, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, Mauro, if you break this uh, down a little bit more, the construction of it. Breaking everything down, I guess, you, you always, I guess, have to start from, you know, the biggest portrait part, which is the middle of the image. Um, the usage of the way, which I can't really, is that a tail? Is that, guys, help me out there, is that a tail um, on the, on seahorse so there you go the tail of the seahorse um starting i guess whenever anyone is breaking down photographs and, and looking at or even create like thinking the idea in your head um you need to have a uh, your absolute best image in the middle and they've definitely done that the way the seahorse comes across the pose 
again, um, just the emotion in, in the pose there sort of draws your eye there first and then guides its way down to the um, map of the brain, which is on the left side. And the right side, I, I, can't, I, I can't get a grip of, of how beautiful the tonal quality is in the blues. Normally, I try to avoid blues because I find it cold, yet this photo is quite warming. So who does that? You know, that's that's who does that? I can't I can't think of anyone who could do that. I know I couldn't. So, but then breaking it down a little bit further towards the bottom there and and the tail and the and the webbed hands, it just says such a beautiful story. And then the skull again on the left side, um, absolutely absolutely love it. Whoever photographed this, whoever created this in their head is definitely someone I'd like to meet. Thanks, Kelly. We're sitting here and tr we're trying to make sense of this. Uh, you know, as Cheryl mentioned, it's masterful. We're trying to make sense of it, but the photographer is presenting us with almost like a, a microscopic view of these sea creatures. And there's multiple sea creatures here that have been presented to us. So when we're trying to make sense of it, you know, we're trying to make sense of it from the photographer's perspective, but the photographer is, you know, presenting something that's so unique, so different, and breaking down something that's not real. So the imagination that's gone in to create this, um, and then their, their skill and technique to produce this, it's out of this world. Like, I mean, there's so much depth here. When we look at the foreground, we see the different elements that we're, we're made to look at because they're framed. We're then drawn into the background of this image, which is the bottom of the sea. Like you've got little bubbles coming up, you've got coral, you've got the bottom of the ocean. There's so much to see, there's so much to love. And as Morrow said, that the control of the colour tones throughout this is just sublime. I just referenced too that we're looking at a biological illustration of mermaids and sirens, um, so mythical creatures, but if they were real and we did have a biological recording of them in some bio, you know, biology manual about underwater creatures, this is the sort of thing you would find. So that takes imagination and it also takes an attention to detail and there's almost an element of science knowledge required to create something like this, then put it into a photographic piece of art. So yeah, well done. Um, next print please. This has a title, In Dreams You'll Find Me. Hi, Gary. I'm sure your kids say in dreams they'll find you. What you got to turn your brain off for a second as a, a judge and stop looking at the all the little things and just look at it as presented. Look at it like a muggle, you know. Um, and uh, it is so beautifully treated, but and it's supposed to be warm. But to me, it feels like it's about loss, you know, the sadness, the movement and the petals turning up and then turning into birds and flying away. And so I think that there's something deep underneath the the pastel beauty of this. And so I, I'd love to can't wait to hear everybody talk about that some more. JBS, explain a bit more about what's going on here. Yeah, so it's another one of those like plays, plays with your head. It's a beautiful pastel color plate but like I feel like she's even being pulled that way her dress the wind is taking her it's pulling her up and her chin is down and she almost looks sad and the detail in her face when you get on top of that print is just amazing but uh, you know I was born and raised Roman Catholic so I see like the Holy Spirit I see the doves up there in the corner so if you get up on top of it there are actually these little doves here and here and here I just think it's a really unique way of um, showing sadness from a different perspective. Cheryl, there's, a, there's an element of this that reminds me a little bit of you. So, like, what's your, you know, your closing comments on this one? Well, getting up close, it looks like a pastel sketch. Yeah. And this paper with um, a matte paper 
cotton with um, a little bit of texture, that adds completely to that feeling of, um, of this being almost illustrative, um, painterly, and yet it's created with a camera photograph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's an there's a excellence in the delicateness with which the pastel tone and the actual yes. you know, hues and opacities and all of that have been held to really move us around the image in a very gentle way. Those colours are completely cohesive. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's beautiful. Next print, please. <laughs> Gary, you're going first because as soon as it came around, you just shook your head. <laughs> what was it? <coughs> I'm just tired of all these pictures make me want to quit photography, you know? Um, yeah, I, uh, there is a really strong composition to this. Uh, and it's almost excellent that it came up after something that was so soft. It's a similar style, but done, it's a completely different theme. So I love the strength of the pose, the incredible lighting on the subject that shows form, the costume and styling. And then you start to get into the storytelling. And I don't know if this is sort of a Dia de Muertos kind of theme. Uh, that kind of seems where it's going. But you have this dress that's turning into these birds, these blackbirds, crows, that are the, you know, the symbols of death or the, the messengers between life and death. And so just enjoying and loving the story and impact of this. It's gothic. It's, it's, it's deep. And uh, it's just, uh, just stunning. Thank you. Uh, Mauro, do you want to... Maybe break this one down a little for us. Tend to definitely. Just looking up very closely to the image, just you know, let's just start, Tony, with the lighting on, on the subject itself. The softness but yet so contrasty. I really love. And then as you just scroll down and look through the birds, the way just the birds tend to create more shape as they're coming towards the end of the dress to really give the impact of, you know, who they really are. Because if you didn't have those two, three gloves, come, uh, two free doves or whatever, sorry, we call them ravens. Ravens, yeah. Yeah, coming, coming out. You could have been mis misconstrued what they could possibly be. So that in itself, because that does play a major role um, of, of the image itself. Um, for me, that, that's also very important too, the way the foot and the pose almost sort of like, oh, how could I describe this? This is almost like a ballerina, in a way. How's that? A gothic ballerina, you know, amazing. So, yeah, and she looks like she's on top of a mountain. The lighting, like I said, was great. The cloud just works so well in harmony with everything that goes with the rest of the image. Just well done. Kelly? Yeah, I'm really enjoying the composition of this. The way that those those birds come out of the tool, the fabric and the treatment, the post-processing that's been used to handle this, to give it that painterly movement effect. So they come back up and sort of lead you back into her headdress that's got oh, those yes. those wings on there. But the the cliff, as you said, the the height with the mount with the sky, the the very theatrical sort of stormy clouds in the background, all kind of uh, uh, complement the mood that the, the photographer has tried to create here. It's got lots of impact and the, the lighting, as you said, is just stunning. Yeah, good comments. Next print, please. These are not easy images to, to discuss, as you can see, because there's so much going on and the judges are trying to work it out. Um, sometimes it's obvious and sometimes not as obvious. But as uh, was spoken about a little bit earlier, um, a good judge can... can recognize excellence while still trying to decipher the narrative sometimes. JVS, what's, um, what's coming across your mind first things when you're looking at this? Well, I've seen a lot of Tinkerbell movies lately. And this is um, a, a, a breakdown of a fairy, um, I think. Again, it's, it's, it's almost like this was written to go into a, a medical journal. It's so detailed, but I love how the organ placements are different and how her eyes are so innocent and her ears are down, but look at the skull. Like, is that what's behind that face? Um, 
yeah, it's just, gosh, there's so much detail. And we talked about resolutions before. Um, every part of this picture has that believable resolution where everything feels like it's to the proper scale. Gary, yeah. you want to break it down a little more? Yeah, um, f uh, just clearly from a, a, a technique and technical standpoint, I think the, the post-production work has blended everything for the most part incredibly beautifully. Uh, you know, you've definitely got that sort of all the labels. There's a little quote down there which, you know, could be Shakespeare. I don't know. I just don't read that many books. And then uh, <laughs> there <laughs> it sounds Shakespearean. Um, and you've got the little taped notes on things. And so you've got the same theme kind of that we've seen in a, a couple of these other images. And I and overall as a series, the theme is coming together that it's science we'll versus... Just we'll just talk to this print. Yes, to this print. The theme of this that I'm getting is science versus, you know, fantasy. So what we feel about these things, the lore behind them is that it's all lovely. And then once it's studied and put under a microscope and dissected and cataloged, that it's actually very dark and kind of disturbing. You know, you look at the, the teeth and those only come in, out in nature for something that's literally like ripping flesh off something else, you know. And so there's, a, there's just an inherent kind of darkness underneath it. And it's sort of like peeling back no pun intended, the the layers of fantasy to get to the science underneath it. And I think it's it's just very, very beautifully told and technically very well put together. Mm. Along with all that mastery of technique, which is ov obvious in editing and so on, and, and the choice of paper, which again has been you know, perfectly done, there's, there's little, um, I think you call them Easter eggs in this, and one of them is insectus at the bottom left, which is one of the words, which kind of says to us without us being told in any other way that this is a small creature like a fairy, and it all adds in. So consistency. You see the size of the thing in their hands yeah. at the top, that's supposed yeah. to be like yeah, so all these little a fairy symbols. or something. Yeah, yeah, it's just wild. Next print, please. Amazing work. And that's it for this category. <laughs> there's some amazing stuff in there, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I'm, I'm going to go to Melissa in a minute, while, and while I, while I go to Melissa, we're just going to reboot the uh, judges to help them realise that they are really good photographers, and just because you're looking, <laughs> only kidding, only kidding. Okay, over to you, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you to Tony and to our judges for that incredible category, I told you. That is an amazing category. That was also our largest category in the competition, and as Tony mentioned earlier, those photographers that made it as finalists in this category, like please do not feel upset if you didn't make it as finalists in this category. Understand how difficult it was that like we just saw some incredible masterpieces here. Um, I have a very exciting announcement, by the way. Um, the creative portrait creative division is massive. So, ladies and gentlemen, Starting this year, we are gonna divide the portrait creative category into two. It will become portrait creative individual and portrait creative group so that we can then start looking at images that are similar to each other from now on. So I hope that makes you guys happy as well. That's gonna be a huge adjustment. Um, we are super excited about that. It's been something that's been requested for a long time from all of you guys. So we heard you and we found a way to make that happen. And we're really excited. And that is going to just bring some amazing images in the next many years, I'm positive. So that concludes this category, but we still need to decide, the judges still need to decide who is going to win this category. So we're gonna get them all logged in. We just need a couple of minutes to do that. Then we're gonna reset in front of the gallery. They're all gonna take a moment to take a look at all of the prints one more time all together. And then they're gonna decide who they would like to see win this category. And we'll let you guys know who that is tomorrow night. So don't move, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. I'm Lindsay Adler. My name is John Sun Wee. My name is Luna Hao. I'm Malva Soler. My name is Joseph. My name is Sean Moore. My, my name is Trish. I am Kelly Deezer and I'm a kid. Hello, I'm Loris Romano. And as you may hear from my terrible accent, I'm French. I used to run away from Flash. It was confusing, it was just extra stuff to carry around, and I never really got the results that I wanted. 
Off camera flash can seem intimidating, but with Profoto, there's just three buttons on the back. Time is precious, especially on a wedding day. Profoto's intuitive design and user-friendly interface allow me to focus more on creativity and less on my equipment. I have never had an easier system for controlling my flash than this beautiful dial. And whether I'm using eight lights on set or two, I can change all of the settings right from my camera. When I decided to turn professional, I wanted to get some gear which would follow me for longer. On set, I need to be able to rely on lights that are gonna fire at the exact same color temperature and power every single time. And this is where reliability is so important. This is where Profoto doesn't let me down. So they're lights that, that work when you need them to work, that trigger when you need them to work. It's just so fast, so accurate. I just can totally rely on it. I shoot quickly, I shoot often, I shoot high frame rates, and Profoto always keeps up. As a light shaper myself, I love having gear available to shape light exactly how I want. I also work on a lot of commercial sets, so it's really important that the lights that I use have lots of different options when it comes to modifiers. And even the system as a whole is so well thought out. There's no like weird adapters and clunky things. Like, no, everything fits. Whether you're on an A-series light or a B-series light, all the controls are gonna be all the same and they're really easy to use. There's virtually no learning curve whatsoever. Also, I like the extras to the A10. You have gels, diffuser, and the click softbox. It's magnetic, simple, and awesome. To be able to work with the speed at which I move, the only light I trust is Profoto. And it's an equipment that we cannot leave home without. And they're the only brand that I trust. I know our clients expect a lot out of us, and in turn, we expect a lot out of the companies that make our jobs possible. That's why we use Profoto. Thank you so much, guys. Welcome back. Uh, how exciting was that? Um, you have no idea. Um, when these photographs come to our house, literally here in Las Vegas, <laughs> the old saying, I don't know if you've heard this saying, there's no need to be humble, you're not that great. <laughs> because when these photographs come, all, all I say to you is this, don't be intimidated by what you've just seen, be inspired. And that's what it's all about. Follow the process, not the result. Judges? Certainly take your time. Please proceed. Take your time. Take your time. While the judges are doing their thing, I saw the pro photo commercial that went on and it reminded me to remind you guys that we have the pro photo luminance award to give away tomorrow night. And if you don't, haven't heard what that is yet, we had a separate panel of judges look at the images that were entered into the competition and decide and pick who they thought, what image made the best use of light. And this is an, a, a prize, an award that Profoto wanted to give out. And it doesn't have to be a particular source, a light source. It can be artificial light. It can be the best use of natural light, whatever it is. So the judges just looked at the entire body of work that was entered and they've made a choice, and there's going to be a winner that's gonna be announced tomorrow night. So as you're looking at all of these images, 
throughout all day yesterday and today, pick out what might be your favorite and then see if it matches what was picked by our judges when we make the announcement. And the cool thing is that the winner, whoever that is, and no one knows, is going to win $10,000 worth of gear, pro photo gear. So that's huge. So it could be somebody in this room, might be. Guys, we're honored here as well. We've got three grandmasters actually judging this right now. Three grandmasters. And now you're wondering who the grandmasters are. <laughs> Kelly Brown, Cheryl Walsh, Mara can tell me. Yes. <laughs> In case you're wondering as well, AI is not allowed. <laughs> Yeah, nor stock imagery. And just so you know how we prove that, um, raw files are sent to us. I love this. It's really important to note, guys, that when you're actually entering, um, it's important to keep your raw files because you, are, you need to submit them when you're submitting your imagery. Otherwise, we can't verify it. And certainly with the technology that's happening at the moment, we need that to happen. So make sure that when you photograph, if you dispose of your raws, if you have potential award files, put them in a folder, park them there, and then when you enter, you've got them there ready for you. So guys, if you've actually judged Go for it and you can take a seat. That was an easy one, wasn't it? It's easy. Wouldn't you guys like to be us right now? <laughs> so mean, is that what you just said? Yeah. We're just verifying the winners. We're screen grabbing everything, make sure we're all good, which we are. Okay, so the judges have officially uh, judge the winners of this particular category. First, second and third place will be announced tomorrow night at the awards ceremony for the portrait creative category. So we're going to transition to the next one. So take your time. It's going to be the fashion and beauty category. So we'll need a couple of moments. Be patient. We'll be back shortly. Thanks so much. <laughs> My name is Brandon Wolfel. I am a freelance photographer currently based out of Brooklyn, New York. I mainly shoot creative low light portraiture, but anytime I get the chance, I love to incorporate bright pops of neon and color into my work while still keeping it all a bit dreamy and soft. Really nice, yeah, that looks so sick. My shoot for the Nikon ZF was inspired by mixing light and atmosphere. I feel like when these two things come together, it makes for a really striking image. I really wanted to build my scene from the ground up, so I introduced various light sources like flashes, projectors, and even lasers. Let's do some without lasers. I tend to find myself in 
a lot of challenging lighting situations and it's really important for me to bring along a camera that I can trust to capture the image exactly as I see it in person. A lot of these scenes I was shooting were only really lit by one light source and I feel like the ZF did an amazing job at keeping the grain across my images really low. I feel like the Nikon ZF is a camera that really caters to all kinds of photographers within tons of different genres. Whether you specialize in concert or portrait photography like myself, the ZF offers a ton of features that I know will match all of your needs as a creator. Okay, we are officially back. Welcome to everybody who's watching us online as well. Thank you to Nikon for sponsoring our live broadcast. We're making that possible. Uh, we are back to look at images in the creative division. Just a reminder, that's the division we're in, where there is more latitude when it comes to post-production and the tools and the techniques that photographers can use. Composites are allowed in this 
division in this, these categories, although that doesn't mean that they are all composites, many are not. Uh, and as a reminder, there is no AI that is allowed uh, to create these images, uh, nor is any stock images allowed. And when you see multiple images that have multiple elements, they all must have been photographed by the photographer. Uh, and so and we ask for evidence of all of that. So that is how we verify everything. So in the creative division it, that is being sponsored by Epson, we are about to begin the fashion and beauty category. In this category, we're about to see images that focus on the face and the clothing and the accessories, the fashionable elements that uh, make up a fashion shoot or a fashion styled image. This category is sponsored by the Omega Reflector, which is a, the world's first 15 in one shoot through reflector, amazing tool that combines the traditional feel of a reflector with the luxurious look of a beauty dish. It's really phenomenal the way it works. And as an added bonus, every single third place winner in all the categories in this competition are gonna receive their very own Omega Reflector. So that is uh, amazing that, they're, that we are re sponsoring this category. So I'm gonna send this over to Tony now with our panel of judges so we can begin our discussion on the fashion and beauty category. Thanks, Melissa. Another really cool thing for the community-based feel of this and, and the inclusiveness of it, and another way to use the tech that's available to us these days, is realising that all of this streaming, all this judging, all the comments is on YouTube, which means Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not only can you go in and spend some time in the critique rooms listening to judges in, in pairs have a discussion around some of the images that didn't make the finals and what could have been done to bring them up to a higher standard, but you can go into the gallery of prints and have your ear pods or whatever in your ear and have your YouTube and you can go back and actually put yourself in the seat as if you were the judge looking at that print and listening to the comments of your fellow judges so you can see what they're talking about when they talk about the print. Because you guys back there and Scott, you back at home with your Guinness and all the rest of you in the rest of the world, you're all looking at the screens or on your iPads. Whereas these guys are looking at this incredible piece of art where you get to put yourself in the judge's seat in with the headphones. So tomorrow we're going to see all these people with their beatboxes and all stuff sitting there with their iPads and just sitting there like, I'm a judge. I can do this. Okay, listen to the judge. I don't agree with you. Oh, that's, yeah, I agree with that. That's fantastic. Yeah, so talk to yourself and we can take video and make a really cool tearaway reel. All right, let's get on with it. Fashion and beauty. Um, creative division. We have on our panel now, and as you'll see, we're just sort of mixing it up and stirring it up a little bit each time, but we, we're drawing from a finite pool of about 25, is it, Jerry? About 20. 36? 26 judges, 26 judges uh, who are all contributing in, and we're creating panels that have some expertise and give us that broad opinion, that well-rounded perspective. So they operate as a brains trust. And in my brains trust right now, I have JVS, Joseph Victor Stefanjet. Did I get that right? Yeah. Michelle Celentano, Kelly Brown, Mara can, can tell me, and Sanjay Chogia from the UK. Let's have the first print. This is fashion and beauty. Okay, Mara, first impressions. Moody, moody, moody. The way that this image is lit, the instant impact I got was just purely the way that the photographers executed some amazing lighting there. Just a lot of the times as a photographer, when you're photographing, you're trying to remove hotspots. And yet here, the hotspot is what creates the photo. And looking at the way the gown, or it looks like even a veil, a black veil over the top of her, um, if you were the, the uh, designer of this dress, you'd be pleasantly happy with the tonal quality in the detail of, of the material. So I think it ticks all boxes there, definitely. Thank you, Mara. Uh, Sanjay, maybe pull that apart a bit more, some of the technique and craft involved in this. I'm, just, I'm taken by the monochrome, the handling of the, the monochrome side of this image. Um, that's masterful. I mean, it's the tones are so dark, apart from the highlights on the face. Um, but the, the tonal range 
within that is tight, but yet so defined and so beautifully reproduced. It's it's striking. It really is. It's it just pulls me into the expression there. Um, if this is about fashion, then the beauty of the subject's expression is just winning it for me. It's um, this is not an easy thing to achieve um, at all. It's not just a case of taking all the channel sliders and turning turning them down to zero saturation. Um, there's, there's a lot of craft and, and technique and skill involved in um, producing this digitally, but then reproducing it in print as well. So a big part of that is obviously paper choice. And looking at this closely, it, the whole thing is shot through a fabric as well. Just there's that, that layer of texture over the top of it too. So. Um, yeah, that's the thing that kind of has really drawn me into this image. Uh, Michelle, m maybe a, a final comment. Yeah, I, this falls right into that, for me, fashion, uh, beauty category. It's not so much about the clothing, but almost this unorthodox beauty and this almost hard expression and then those beautiful specular highlights. It's It's not your traditional beauty you know, makeup look, it has m a much harder look to it. And that that veil over the face, that texture is is really, it, it's incredible. So, yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Next print, please. This has a titled Empowered. Uh, first, first reaction. Thanks, Michelle. So I st stood up to get close to look for some detail in the black, and there's zero detail, which makes it so interesting. It's like pretty much a silhouette, and then you have that incredible circular, perfect circle of light just in the spot of her face that the maker wants to draw you to the red background, the red lipstick, the the fingers, the fingernail detail, the detail in that lipstick, it, it brings it all together in such an impactful way, uh, a, a beauty, a beauty shot you've never seen before in my mind. So it's impact, creativity, imagination right there. Kelly? I know. Yeah, this is bold. The shapes um, are really quite interesting here and in that the way that the background has been lit with that red light to counteract that lipstick, but the way that it's got that circular light and then we've got this vignette around the top and the bottom just draw you back in to almost create like a soft frame around that hard frame on the face, which is what the photographer is intending us to look at. But that silhouette with those shapes, it, it, as I said, it's just really bold and striking. Well done. JVS, a final comment? Yeah, so I, I almost, it has a sexy Dr. Seuss feel to it, <laughs> you know? But, you know, as someone who has a daughter that always likes to stick her face through those cardboard cutouts, it's so sharp there that I feel like she's peering through the hole. Um, it's done really, really well. Um, and because the light is isolated on her face, it almost feels like it exaggerates or enlarges that portion of her face. So when you get in there, look at it, it feels slightly enlarged. But mathematically, if you get in there, everything is just done so perfectly. Thank you, good comments. Thanks, judges. Next print. Just your first thoughts, Sanjay? Such an unexpected image in this category. Um, and it challenges us. Uh, it really does, because um, fashion and beauty and our perception of what fashion and beauty is, is, 
is subjective, as we've, we've spoken about all day long. Um, it's for me. That's the that's my initial impact is how unexpected this is, and it's drawing me into really sit and analyze and interrogate the image. Mara, can you take us a bit deeper into the image and the construction of it, please? Um, looking closely at the image, lighting's amazing. Um, I guess the statement it's making for me is, you know, really female empowerment there. Just the, it's amazing how powerful the pose is there and the expression. And for the photographer to come up with an I idea like this and breaking down all the material, all the um, clothing, headpiece, um, and then in the background, I can't quite make out whether that looks like a cemetery in the background or just gates of a cemetery. Um, just the, the balance between the two work really well and that the way the photographer can then think that creating a golden glow in the background behind um, the subject gives it, again, for me, you know, a yin and yang where it's, it's a pose that is sort of quite a religious pose, yet, you know, you've got quite a gothic look there. So I'm liking the fact that the, the author's played with opposites in the image as well and the way it's worked in harmony. So there's a lot of elements to this. So, you know, whoever's photographed this has got, got a lot ticking in their brain. There's no doubt about that. Kelly, I want to get you to give us a final comment on this one, please. Yeah, I don't really have too much to add because Mauro just sort of summed it up beautifully there, but the, the warmth and the detail is what's really caught my eye here. That glow behind her drags you into that face. I mean, this could be advertising makeup. It could be advertising a headdress. We don't know, um, or it could just be beauty, but the makeup that's been applied to her face and the detail and the texture in there is, has been handled really, really well. It's been captured beautifully and it's been printed beautifully as well. Um, add real quickly. I actually, I think that, I don't think it's a female. I think it's a male subject. If you look really closely, there's um, real masculinity to the face and the neck and the shoulders. And I think that makes it even more interesting because at first you're led to believe that it's a female, but if you look really closely, it might not be. Well, it well, it could be non-gender. We, right. we don't know. You're right. Yeah, so but you're getting I just a think, masculine feel. Sure, out. yeah. <coughs> but we're saying she when it maybe not. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just, just put a comment on top of this that um, executing a simple idea leaves also less chance of, of flaws. Executing complicated ideas, there's more chances that you get one or two things that don't quite measure up. So there is, you know, I said earlier that judges can often look at an image and not quite get to the full end of the story in the short time they have, but they can appreciate the, um, the, the sophistication and the excellence that's required to achieve that, uh, you know, even though they're only getting a small chance to look at it. I think the, the thing that keeps you guessing is the yeah. thing that keeps you coming back. Yeah, 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 good comment. Next print, please. What do you think in JVS? Just your first thought. Uh, the, the the first thought is like wow. You know, all this color and the beautiful eyes and the impeccable, impeccable like the makeup and the heart on the lips that are sealed and closed and I don't know who you are and how you think, but <laughs> this is, wow, this is really great. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Javius. Sanjay, you want to break this one or open this one up for us a bit further? The headdress is the thing that's dominating here, isn't it? Um, certainly visually, because the clothing kind of matches in with the background. So you, you're drawn into that, the neutrality and the monochrome if treatment of the skin is drawing eyes back to um, the headdress. I'm curious as to what the figure is in the headdress. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving a, lo a lot of the, sim the symbolism in what we're seeing today uh, and, and you know, what the author's 
fascination or interpretation of these things are. It's kind of making me question that a lot today. But uh, technique-wise, um, just looking at the catch lights on the eyes, a big single light source just to give us a nice, even, but directional light um, so that the focus is on the headrest but not the face. Quite close because we can tell the shadows are very soft as well. Uh, Kelly, have you got a closing comment? The colours have been handled beautifully in this and it's been printed so well. The, k the skin, I mean, it's just glorious. There's, it's so hard to achieve white skin, so hard. But as Sanjay just touched on, the lighting here, creating that beautiful big soft light is what's helped the photographer achieve this. But it's really, like, I, I just want to compliment the photographer for being able to isolate that headdress but yet still keep us so connected with the person that's wearing it by taking away all of that colour and then just leaving that little bit of red red on the lips there. Beautifully done. Yeah, I think also the neutrality of the background and the chewel in the foreground which allows the headdress to stand out. It has a secondary um, purpose and that is it's very similar to the colour of the eyes which allows the eyes to come out and gives a personality to the figure and not just leave us with the headpiece. So yeah, there's a lot going on. Next print please. First thoughts, Mauro? The best colour palette ever I've seen. Like, seriously. Like, looking at the image itself, even the skin tones have that sort of cyan tone, but yet still warm. Um, yeah, incredible, incredible. You know, so Tiffany Blue, is it? Is it? Yes, good old, wherever Tiffany is, you, we got that right. That's perfect. Um, JVS, do you want to... Tell us a bit more about this image. Yeah, like the, the, the attention to detail is, it's kind of beyond, like I imagine this photographer has always been an overachiever. Um, it just, and that's a compliment, I mean that in the best possible way. <laughs> um, like the puppet within the puppet, like, the dream within a dream. Um, there's so much going on here that, again, it's, it's one of these pieces of art too that fits in a very modern home. You know, like, can you imagine like turning the corner and this being your partner? A anytime you walked by it, you'd be like, "Damn, this is so unique and so cool." And the part that I kind of like the most, that freaks me out the most, is the disconnected head. Um, I think that's kind of what all ties it all in for me. Um, it's just like, even when you get up, um, the doll, it, mi it mimics the doll, the same hook and chain on the doll's neck, so bravo. Uh, Michelle, can you maybe just finish off with, with a reference to some of the lighting and, and things like that? Yeah, so it, the, I, I, I think the, the maker did a really good job at um, lighting just both subjects' faces, right? Because there's two subjects. There's the main puppet, and then there's sort of her little mini-me. Um, and I mean, just the shadow and the cheekbones and the little butterfly under her nose, um, that catch light in her eye is really well done. And the light pattern completely matches on the doll, except that doll's head is turned in a different direction. So the lighting looks different, but it's coming from the same direction, giving it a slightly different look, which tells a little bit of a different story. It's like, you know, that lighting helps tell the overall story of being disconnected and feeling like a talking head and being a puppet inside a puppet and li like living this life that is c controlled by all of this other stuff around us. But, uh, you know, just the, the fall off and that it's so even from her missing neck down um it's so clean but the face is so well lit both of them mm. okay thank you next print please
first comment, Kelly? This has definitely got impact. The colour, though, is really standing out for me. The subject is just glowing, and the photographer has done a beautiful job in lighting it from, from. I mean, there's multiple light sources coming coming through here to really create a glow around the body here and to separate it from the background. They've done a, a sublime job. Um, Sanjay, tell us a bit more about that lighting and some sublime job. Yeah, I'm I'm in awe of the, um, the, the the preparation that's got into this as well. You know, the the outfits, the styling, um, the the makeup, the just everything that's required. The the headdress. And then the lighting that kind of pulls it all together just to draw your attention to the face. And there's, what I love about this is just that really quite delicate sort of rim all the way around the form, the, 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 the form of the body, the, the headdress. And then just that really carefully handled controlled light on the face without that being destructive to anything else in, in the image, on the face, on the body, on the hands. Uh, it's just really beautifully, you know, delicately handled there. Mm. There's a softness in the curves in the pose, but there's also points of tension in the finger on the mouth and the hand, the fingers on the hand down here, and then the spikiness of the headpiece. So those three areas are almost in opposition to this beautiful slinky shape. Um, which is, you know, the warmth of the lighting complementing quite well. So it does have this sort of push-pull, you know, tension to it that makes it quite, yeah, quite grabs you. Uh, nice, next print, please. It's, um, yeah, nice work. And again, we're looking at the top of the tops. This is the best prints, uh, the best images from the category being, being printed in the finals in a moment. Our judges will go over and they'll make their final analysis of which one gets the uh, gong tomorrow night, or which ones. <coughs> Just to get here is an achievement that you should be very proud of if you've found yourself in the finals. There's something to be, uh, yeah, certainly a feather in your cap. JVS, first thoughts? Are you, are you kidding me? Like, no. Nah. So that's the first thought. What was the second thought? Damn. What was the third thought? What? Yeah, okay. Um. They're very highly technical judging terms. They, they, they are, they are. Are you kidding me? What, Dan? It's, it's its overall impact, you know? So it's one of those types of images where you walk up to it and you... Takes your breath take, away. Yeah, yeah you, you, you don't quite know what it took or what the vision was, but it's just, uh, it's a wow. Um, so yeah, it's, it's another like... Another wow is another one. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I'm, I'm getting I'm, the full gamut. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's <laughs> I'm trying amazing. to think of a, a, a new word. I'm not speechless. I just, in, in respect to the author, I just think that it, it deserves like just to be there by itself for a minute. Yeah, you yeah, know? No, and that's impact. Sometimes you know? impact um, is so powerful that so you, you can think about it a yeah, little bit more. But okay, we're um, getting it. Beautiful, Kelly. Talk about this print. All right. The, as we said, wow. Right. It's. This has got so much to it, but yet it's so simple and clean. There's a coldness to it, but yet there's this beautiful warm glow that comes from the subject. And she is a goddess. She is radiating. And the reason that she's radiating is because of the way that she's been lit and because of the way that she's been posed. And then she's got this wolf that's, you know, standing there on, on guard, ready to kind of protect. And, and it adds to the the mythical sort of storyline that we're being given here, but we have been taken, the choice of background, the choice of location that she is in m is taking us on a journey to that. You get a chill when you look at that background and all of the detail and the colours that just work in that beautiful sort of serene landscape that she's in frames her beautifully that continually draws you back to her. I love that subtle dark um, sort of vignette in the foreground that leads you back up into her and it gives you so much depth within this frame. But the styling, the posing, the lighting, everything has just been handled so well and it's been brought together beautifully. Michelle, you look like you want to give a foot. I, I, I've, 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 I've been biting. I, I, from back here, you look at it, you go, 
And then you get That's up another. close, and you just, it's indescribable. Um, the detail in every single stone on that dress, in her, her face, it, her face is very tiny, but I can see every single detail. I can almost see every eyelash. You can see the light in her eye, and the expression is, it, it's incredible. And the, the beautiful line in her leg that comes right up to meet those fingertips and into that soft elbow and around her head, it just, it's exquisite. Um, if Honestly, if you get a chance to walk up to this print, you must. And you must walk up closely and look at every single stone on that dress and her face. It's really beautiful. Uh, I'll just add, I think there's a couple of hidden narratives in terms of we often talk about jewels of that or gems as ice. And we've got an ice queen here. There's a power and a beauty that are owned by this person in their, both their pose, you know, the way the gesture that, and, the, and the hold and the power of the wolf which is standing next to them. So there's all of these little hidden subtleties and in, as Kelly said, in a subtle colour palette but so much power, so much emanating control in her and so much belief and confidence all coming through. Uh, yeah, really well done. Next print, please. I almost, judges always want to talk, I've got to tell you. Most judges always want to talk. But you know that sometimes they sit there and they're all going, don't pick me, don't pick me, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Sorry, Mara, you're first, let's go. What, what, what hit you first? What was the impact of this image? Hello, thank you, Tony. Um, my immediate impact here was definitely how well executed the photographer, you know, placed the subject smack bang in the middle with that arch in the background. My eye just was drawn to it immediately. It's like walking the street and seeing a hundred dollar note on the ground. Um, same sort of thing where, you know, the composition there, smack bang in the middle, a little bit higher, a little bit lower from there. But either way, my biggest impact, the best bit that I loved about this was the colour, the warmth of the yellow, and then your eyes leading all the way through the background with the different triangles and the squares. So kudos to, to the photographer because if they're able to draw the attention into the uh, subject's face first and the way it sort of leads all around the top end of the image, you know, great, uh, great execution. And you got all that in the first impact. That's yeah. good. <laughs> I've got... <laughs> ask, Sanjay. Ask my wife. I have quick eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sanjay. I'm a sci-fi fan, so this is this, this is very sci-fi, you know. And remember, we have to remember this is a fashion and beauty category as well. So um, this has been designed, you know. The outfit's been designed, the image has been designed, the treatment's been designed. We have all these triangles kind of drawing our eyes up and down the image. You've got this dagger element within the figure, kind of pointing down, anchoring the image, um, and then there's the printing, it's, it seems to be printed on um, a, a metallic paper as well. So it kind of adds to the depth of the, the warmth and the color and that kind of sci-fi high-tech feel to it. So, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of visual impact on top of the impact that all of the impact that Marrow managed to extract at first glance. Yeah, I, I think also the richness of the color adds a heat. It's almost like a palpable temperature that you can feel. So there's something hot and heat, which is complementing the red eyes and the, the whole almost uh, satanic, or not necessarily satanic, but that, that, that evil, evility, if you might like, something to it. But the richness coming from that paper, yeah, just quickly. You know, often as photographers, we want to try and avoid highlights. And when we look at a lot of the highlights that are in the background here and not necessarily on her, whilst they are bright, they continually lead you around. The placement of them has been so strategic that they draw you back down to her. So the, the structure of this, as you mentioned, Sandy, the placement of everything within the frame, it all works so well together. But yeah, so don't be afraid of highlights. Just use them well. Yeah, well. Good comment. Well said. Next print, please.
What hit you first, JVS? I always wonder, like, who thinks like this, and then who executes like this. It, it's the use of all the grays that we have access to are being used here. So it's kind of like, you know, you go to dinner and you, you take a bite of food, and then you're about a minute later, you're like, oh, there's, a, there's another flavor, there's another note. This print feels that way, this image feels that way. Um, it's slightly brighter at the top of the frame, so that pulls me in, but the overall impact is I, I want to know more, but it's so subtle on how perfectly handled the black and white file has been not only converted, printed, and presented, um, but I, I just keep looking top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, so it's a beautiful image. Thank you. Sanjay, talk to me about the lighting and the composition, the concept. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it, it, it's got a, this mix of kind of hard and soft light on there, um, quite a, quite a hard specular light on the subject's face, but soft enough on the fabric. On the I mean, JBS, you were saying who thinks like this? Who thinks like that to design an outfit like this? You know, it's beautiful and it's been celebrated in such an elegant way, and a huge part of that is not just the pose and the emergence of the face out, out of this garment, item, whatever you want to call it, whatever it should be called, I have no idea what it should be called. Um, but yeah, just to kind of, you, you can destroy the intent behind um, a piece, piece of clo clothing or any piece of design or whatever the thing is with, l with the incorrect lighting, or not, not the incorrect, but not the most ideal lighting. Mm. Um, if the light was softer on the subject's face, I don't think it would have quite the same impact. So that's been executed in a very elegant way, I think. So you've got a hard light with, with soft lighting, and they're not destructive to each other either. So in order for that face to stand out, because it's such a small area, footprint-wise, compared yeah. to the fabric, yeah. the extra contrast and that extra control of the light against that softer light Absolutely. is how you compensate. Yeah. But it's, it's also the control of the where the shadow from the face is falling behind the head so you can't see it. Got it. The moment you see, uh, the, I think lighting is a, a key part to anybody's style and intent and visual narrative. And if you can see where the shadows are falling, you can see where the light's coming from, and that gives the game away. And I think if you can conceal unwanted shadows in that way, it just retains a certain mystique to the image as well. Okay, we'll move to the next print. Thank you. This image has a title, as above, so below. Michelle, first thoughts. The impact on the profile is really strong. The neckline, the beautiful pencil light coming from behind her head onto that neck and her arm um, is really well done. I mean, it goes all the way around her head, but not so much so that it dips into the darker area at the top of her head. Um, that's, you know, that's control and lighting, which I think is really, uh, makes this portrait sing. It brings that face right forward. And then you get to walk around and kind of see the rest of it and the fashion that is in here and the hands. So I think that profile and that lighting on that profile is really the first impact. Kelly, can you take this a bit further? Please. Yeah, the placement of that light up above and the way that it's coming down to, to really create that highlight around the profile is, is what draws you in. It creates that impact. But then that beautiful fall off of light that comes across that bodice um, and highlights all of the detail has been handled so well. The posing, you know, when we look at the, 
the composition here. We've we've got her in the centre of our frame, but the placement of that hand sort of pointing towards that top left corner, it just draws your eye in and then leads you around. And then you've got the, the, the balance of that opposite hand in the bottom sort of left-hand corner there. It's all really working so well together. And, and I just want to say well done to the photographer for, you know, not only lighting and posing this beautifully, but also creating such a, a beautiful, um, oh, I'm going to say dynamic range in terms of, you know, all of the different shades that we've got here from black to white. It's just, it's really been handled so well and printed beautifully. Yeah, it has. Um, JBS, just on that finish, just to finish off, the detail in that is quite incredible, isn't it? Yeah, so I, I just think, like, if I was the designer, I would be, like, bowing to this photographer because I've turned my head away several times to look back, and it's like, you know, I don't know if you do casting or how you figure out who the model is, but this model is almost transparent to me. She fits so perfectly that I keep seeing the garment. And if this was the fashion category and you were trying to sell this, this is this is amazing because I see all the detail and the bodice and and the hands and the, the light on the arm and the detail that I think it's like perfect harmony with the absolute perfect model who fit this perfectly, who knew how to pose it to the point where she almost becomes secondary because it's such a beautiful merger between the model and the outfit. The fashion and the beauty. Next print, please. It says a title, not cut out for this. Uh, Michelle, first thoughts? <laughs> yeah, this, it's just, it's so interesting, right? Like, I mean, even though you're looking at her eyes through a comb, they're prominent. Like, I don't feel like I'm looking through a comb. Um, the Picking up the color in the scissor, on the inside of that scissor, and matching it to the background and the nails and the lips and that, bringing all that color together and then just a hint of that in the hair. Um, it, it's really cool. I'm, I'm hoping to get some more clarity on the shadow around the mouth. Maybe someone else can explain that to me, but um, I, I, I love it. Kelly? That top light, it's just been placed brilliantly to create that shadow with the top of the scissors across the lips there, the way that they've been pursed. And it's just created that perfect little moustache um, that, that simulates or sort of replicates the framing of the hair around the, the brow, the forehead there. And can I just say that the detail that's in the hair as it comes down and meets the forehead, <laughs> like it's perfection. There's so much detail, there's so much going on here in terms of um, a saleable piece. This is working in so many areas. Uh, Ma Mara, maybe a final comment? Uh, before I do, I must say, Kelly, I totally agree. Um, it's a sellable print. And if I was selling whatever that's been sold there, it would be perfect, you know. Um, Last comments for me, Tony, is once I m immediately saw this image, uh, th obviously the colour palette for me is really what drew me together. Um, uh, I know you, well, none of us have mentioned that yet, but um, it works perfect, absolutely perfect. Everything from the inner part of the scissors to the background, to the nails, to the lips, to the strands of hair, if you look closely, right? Yes, it's, it's uh, colour is is beautiful you know ever since ever since i saw um the wizard of oz going from black and white to color um i realized the impact and the power of color yep beautiful thank you well that's the end of that category and again another superb set of images that made the finals and hopefully you like our judges now understand why they made the finals you know, I hope many of you go home, or those of you at home have gone straight to the computer room and uh, started looking at your images again and saying, well, okay, if I listen to what they've just been sharing, um, 
how can I apply that to my work? Because I guarantee you, most of you, all of you will have something out there that's probably a little bit better than you thought it was, and often a lot better than you thought it was if you just knew what the judges were thinking. Well, guess what? At the Icon Awards, we're bringing you right into their space. So hopefully that's going to give you a few little things to help you get the secret sauce going and cook up an award winner. Judges, thank you for that. We're going to hand back to Melissa and then we'll move to that judging phase. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Tony. And let's say thank you to our panel of judges for that amazing conversation. All right, so uh, now that we've had that conversation about the images in the fashion and beauty category sponsored by the Omega Reflector, we're gonna take a pause for just a couple of seconds so that we can get the judges logged into their judging console and then we're gonna come back over here to the print gallery so they can take a quick look at the images and decide who they'd like to win. So don't go anywhere, we're gonna be back in just two seconds. My camera has always been my sidekick in exploring the world, my third eye and my favorite tool for expressing my soul and my creativity. So you wanna be a fashion photographer? In this course, I'm gonna be guiding you on how to become a successful fashion photographer. If I had to describe my style, it's very much all about that connection. I would say that connection is the main part of my style. It's the number one for me. The lighting, the composition, all these elements are a given. You've got to nail those. But when you nail that connection, that is when the viewer's eye really connects with your photograph. So we've moved her off the background quite a bit so that we don't get a bunch of spillover of the light onto the subject. So that creates that separation and that nice clean silhouette. Beautiful, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great, Becca. In a nutshell, style is how you shoot, compose, and process your images. That sounds so incredibly simple, but actually style is one of the hardest parts of photography, in my opinion. So basically, complementary means they're across from each other on the color wheel. They're directly diagonal to each other. And so, for instance, some examples would be purple and yellow, orange and blue, red and green. If you use these color combinations in your work, your images are gonna sing. They're gonna just pop off the page or off the, your social media account and look really, really impactful. And try putting on your shades for that shot. That look cool. Perfect. That's so cool. Look out the window. Perfect. Oh, that's amazing. I'll be teaching you lighting, posing, technique, how to set your camera, marketing, networking, social media. How to cast models, how to build your dream team. How to work with clients and attract your dream clients. All the different aspects of fashion photography that are so important. We'll also cover how to market yourself and how to build a business doing what you love. Hi, I'm Nikon ambassador, fashion photographer, director, author, Dixie Dixon, and I will be your mentor. <laughs> Sweet. Welcome back, everybody. I don't know about you, but I'm having a ball here. Um, it's been fantastic. Our team is doing such a great job. I've actually had some time to sit in the audience and and just enjoy this from a, a spectator and a fellow artist, so I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, thank you. Um, guys, it's time to choose the winner now. You've got your console ready, take your time, take a deep breath, let it soak in, and who would you like to represent this category? Go for it, judges, thank you. If you're in the room right now, you may notice obviously the ambience in the room is quite warm and certainly we have a daylight balanced print viewer and if you peer off this way after absorbing all that warm light, this might appear cold to you. 
It's actually daylight balance as well, as, as best as humanly possible under the circumstances. So just know that every image was looked at under the print viewer, and now we have as close as we can under the circumstances so we can compare them as well. And if in case you're new to the room, what the judges are looking at is a bunch of thumbnails on their, on their phone. It emulates exactly what they're seeing here. And it's just the random order. And as they're looking at the images, what they do is they tap one at a time, and then it will basically come up with a bit of a list. Then you'll press continue, and what they see is another verification that they are happy with what they've actually chosen. And they have another chance to actually change it. Once they submit, they're locked in, there's no going back. Kelly Brown's in. And if you don't understand the Australian accent, it's going to be a real problem for you, isn't it? <laughs> now, and colour, it means colour. Just letting you know if you hear that word. Nikon is actually the way you pronounce it. It's a Japanese company and they pronounce it Nikon. So I'm sorry, not Nikon, it's Nikon. <laughs> Very good. But Nikon icon has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? All right, guys, we have, we have a set of winners here. All right, we're going to screen grab everything for verification purposes. Just another way of doing an integrity check, make sure we're all set. You're right here. All righty. Well, thank you so much, guys. That concludes the fashion and beauty category, and we're still in the creative category sponsored by Epson. And we're now going to transition to the last category of our whole competition. It's pretty, pretty amazing. It's, all, it's sort of bittersweet. I feel a bit <laughs> funny about that. And that'll be the open creative category. You guys are going to freak out and you're going to enjoy yourselves here. We're going to go for a short break. Back in a few minutes. Thank you. Dixon. I'm a commercial fashion advertising photographer, film director, and Nikon ambassador based out of Dallas, Texas. When I picked up the Z8 from using the Z9 for about a year and a half, it was a seamless process. Everything was the same, the buttons were the same, and I think that really allowed me to just go in and create what I needed to. very challenging when you're having to shoot both stills and video in the same production, but I found that the Z8 really makes it pretty seamless. It's definitely a challenge mentally because you got to think about moving images as opposed to just still images. It's a challenge that I'm definitely up for.
Having a hybrid type of camera for this type of production is, it's everything. It's of most importance because when you're having to shoot stills and go from stills to immediately shooting video, uh, this camera allows you to do so seamlessly. The body style, the ergonomics of this camera, smaller body style is really nice for video because you can throw it on a gimbal and get to work really quickly. And I really love the fact that you can also take high resolution stills from the actual video footage and they look exceptional. For this production, the Z8 was a game changer. I loved every minute of creating with this camera. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And welcome to everyone who's here in the room with us to watch our last category, and to everyone who's watching at home uh, or wherever they are, just not here in Vegas, thanks to Nikon. Um, big thank you again to Nikon for even making this possible. This has never happened before in the history of the co this competition where we've been able to share this with you live. So we want to say big thank you to them as well as to Graphy Studio who sent us so many goodies here to just display and you guys can take the time to look at it in a relaxed environment. Look at those wall portraits and albums and um, take a look at them a bit closer. So big thank you to them. We are now uh, going to finish up the creative division, which is being sponsored by Epson. Um, and we have one more category in this division, and it's the open creative category. This category, a good way to describe it is uh, images that don't have a heartbeat. So we had all of our portrait categories where we saw you know, different ages being photographed. The open creative is a bit like, can, can include indoor or outdoor spaces. It can include transportation, cars, uh, trains, planes, things that don't have a heartbeat. If a human appears in the image, they just need to be a subordinate element in the image. So we're going to see some really amazing uh, variety of images here. This category is being sponsored by Capture One. Capture One provides a complete workflow for, for professional photographers to download images that you're shooting directly to your desktop and your device. You can edit the images and you can share them out right away. It's an all-in-one solution for photographers to get their images out to their clients, which is amazing. And we're so excited that they sponsored this category. It's a good one for them to sponsor. So now we are going to turn this over to our final panel of judges and to Tony Hewitt to uh, get started on this conversation. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Yes, we got that one. The echo's still there. And thank you guys for hanging around, staying here. This room's been fairly full all day, so I'm assuming that means you're having a good time and you're learning something. Is that right? So, so the people at home know what they missed by not being here at the Icon Awards rather than peering in like voyeurs from a distance. I'll ask you again. Are you having a good time? Awesome. That's great. That's what we want to hear. You know, we're going to squeeze every last ounce of experience and knowledge that we can out of our wonderful panel of judges. And our final uh, category today, we have Gary Hughes, Michelle Celentano, Kelly Brown, Cheryl Walsh, and Sanjay Jogia. So we've pretty much got corners of the globe covered here, with, particularly with Kelly and Sanjay coming from the different time zones. And I was trying to work out, yeah, the Aussies are all up and awake. The UK, well, Scotty will still be up drinking Guinness. It'll only be 1 a.m., so he'll be good. And of course, here in the US or, or Canada, you've got no excuses. You should be here anyway. So last one, open creative. This is a kind of an anything goes type of category in a way. But again, it's open and it's creative. And we have all of those tools that are available to us. So you guys ready for this? <laughs> okay, so right, you'll get over it. I'll give you a day or three, but you'll get over it. Next, let's have the print. We're looking at the finalists. To be a finalist, a, a print or an image had to score an award first. So everything we've seen over the last two days is an award-winning print. It's pretty crazy when you say it like that. 
240 or 237 images are award-winning prints and they're here because they made the finals. Now we're going to find out a little bit about why. Uh, first thought, Shell, what's the first thing that hits you with an image like this, impact-wise? This is so ridiculously good. <laughs> um, it's a found image, I would assume. It's, it's the photographer making a decision to capture this. Doesn't matter what it is, it has impact. The color, the composition, it is beautiful. So beautiful. Let's break That's it down a bit, Gary. Yeah, sure, happy to. So by found image, this is something that seems to or has the feel of it appears in the natural world. And what gives it that feeling, whether or not it is or it's something that's done digitally, is that there are no straight lines and there's no symmetry and there's nothing that, that looks sort of human made in it. There's no touch of mankind. I, I have a feeling it, it has the feel of an aerial photo to me. I don't know. That's more your area than mine, Tony. But um, looking at something in the world that's is seemingly random and that has so much the feel, though, of design and weight and balance. And I think that it gives um, just an incredible mood and flow with the, the color harmony in this scene is so brilliant. And the way that it's sort of, you can't say dissected, I guess di bisected there on the third line, and it's just beautifully balanced, beautifully colored, and and marvelously abstract with a lot of detail to enjoy as well. It's just well seen and well captured. Uh, Michelle, your final comment? Yeah, um, it hasn't been mentioned, but this feels so three-dimensional. It's a two-dimensional flat photograph. I feel like I can run my fingers along it and feel the texture in either the the branches or the water, wh whatever's happening there, it, I had to go up and look to see if it it was three dimensional, and it looks so three dimensional, but it isn't. So, hats off to the maker for creating that texture. That from where I'm sitting, I literally feel like I could reach out and feel the texture on it. Thank you, judges. Have some great comments. Next print, please. You're up, Gary. What? Oh, Hello to laugh. <coughs> this is is um, very very cleverly done, and I'm assuming in, in the creative division, just because it's so many different things put together, it's basically a collage of manhole covers. <laughs> like, how cool is that to see that in the world? And you've got very different styles. Some as many as a hundred years old and modern, and it's all very sort of something that you walk by every day. And there's even, you know, footprints leading you through it. This is something very man-made and very common turned into art. And so there is clearly this mosaic was put together by someone who takes great pains to see beauty in the mundane. And I think that's what's delightful about it. Sanjay. I'm just wondering what it's taken to document all of these over over however long, you know, just, and, and how. Um, just imagine standing on the street with a camera, photographing manhole covers to create this. <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that takes dedication just alone, um, and a massive lack of ego as well. I just, I love how it ends. Uh, everything is kind of, well, most, most of it is square on um, over the top, and then it just ends with this one that's open with this pipe coming out, this leaves it to interpretation as well. It's just fun, I, and, I, and I love kind of the footprints as well, um, kind of just to break the whole thing down. And, and the slightly uh, odd one there that says drain, just in case, you know, you didn't know. But um, Sanjay, just maybe address, like you mentioned the two of you that these are taken in lots of different places, yeah. lots of different conditions, different times. You know, what's in, talk to us about that, um, how you bring them together so they connect and, and there's, a, there's a uniformity, if you like, in terms of presentation. Is that important? And if so, why? Yeah, I mean, th if you stand back and look at this and uh, you've got what appears to be just a random collection of different shapes and different tones. 
but the images, the manhole covers that have been placed, you know, the juxtaposition between them, you have a you have a complementary color that kind of leads from one to another, so it doesn't jar. And every now and then they're broken up by a different form, the yellow that kind of leads you from left from left to right across the image as well. Um, but they clearly had, uh, Gary was talking about this yesterday, intent to create something like this to begin with. Uh, I'm not going to sit and count how many there are, but you know that it's there was a plan in this in terms of what to create, what the concept was, how to capture it, and then how to present it with a sense of humor. Thanks. Kelly? I counted them, there's a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst you were talking. Yeah, wow, this is, this breathes to me, um, you know, we're surrounded by so much art in our everyday world that sometimes we fail to see it. And during isolation, we had, we had a different perspective of the world. We weren't surrounded by hundreds of people beside us on the footpath. We had the time to slow down and look at the beauty that we are continually surrounded by and, and what we see. And I, and I just want to say congratulations to the photographer for taking the time but being persistent in, in presenting a very unique and different um, level of art to us. Thank you, judges. Next print. Cheryl, what's your first thoughts when this one came up? A lot of people think matte papers um, can't be dimensional um, or sharp, and this is both. You can feel the texture coming off of the paper is so dimensional, and it's handled the colors beautifully. Yeah. Michelle? Again, I'm astounded by the the depth and the and the texture, the shadow detail. The the eye is brought into this image by the bright forefront, that triangular forefront that moves you into that corner and then up that line and into the texture, which it, it almost feels like in a way three images that converge in the center. You know, you have that le the right side that's you know the bluer and more icy looking and then the left side which is green and warm and textured and shadowed in a different way and then that foreground it it's like three opposing images that somehow you know com come into the center and then just work but th I, I even standing up inches away from it I still want to touch it because I want to feel that texture and that's incredible in printmaking really yeah um, Sanjay, maybe a final, no, you went first, no, yeah, yeah, a final comment? I'm guessing, guessing this is an aerial photograph. Um, I'd love to know where this is because what a beautiful place we live in. Um, and we have extreme conditions. We have something that l from here uh, looks like it's sand and desolate and dead then you have something that's cold, and you have something that's growing, rebirth, um, nourished, and you have all these conditions meeting. Um, it, again, once again, this is about interpretation. Everyone's possibly seeing something completely different, but it sort of um, invokes different thoughts and feelings in different people, and that's what images like this are about. Yeah. You know? So thank you for presenting these, because it makes us think, it makes us feel. Often an image's narrative is to present aesthetic uh, as, a, as a snapshot or a small section of a larger piece. And um, yeah, I, I, this is an aerial. <laughs> um, and, and it's a celebration of aesthetic. So yeah, next print please.
Kelly, your first thoughts? I mean, well, this is an iconic location, isn't it? So we've all just gone, wow, we know the place, but what a unique way to present it to us. Um, we've got that, you know, little silhouette of a man down in the, or person, sorry, in the bottom right corner and then balanced beautifully by the bird in the top left corner. The, the symmetry in this is really beautiful. It's got such a lovely balance to it and I, I just think it's, it's got really great impact purely because of its simplicity. Thank you. Gary? Sure, I'd love to talk about it. Um, I really, really love the design here. This is a uh, this is a, someone who is really nerdy about design, and it's it's very nearly symmetrical. And so you have this subdominant subject, very dark, uh, with an umbrella or a very large hat, down on the the bottom right of the image, and and then just this little flourish. This is the kind of thing that just just blows my mind. The little bird is there in the exact opposite position on the other side of the image, and it just keeps the image from being too heavy on one side and gives you one more place to look. And so the creator of this image is not just giving you an architectural image, something graphic to enjoy. There's a little bit of narrative in here too. And that person with the umbrella and the bird take this fine designed architectural image and gives it a very strong sense of mood. And I think that that, in addition to the perfect tonal representation of what's going on here, I think that you've taken something that could be just cool lines, well laid out technically, and given it a feeling with just those two little flourishes. Thank you, Gary. Sanjay, final comment? If we weren't in a photography print competition, I'd be convinced this was a hand drawing. This takes me back to university. It's, it, has what, it has a feel of a, a pencil sketch with like, I don't know if you get them here, but like rotring pens, like they're kind of the graphic design pens. It's just so beautifully put together, it's so precise and clean. And then it has this kind of slight roughness um, with that kind of pencil texture. It's just so beautifully put together and made. It's, this is something that will just look amazing on a wall, um, 10 times its size. Mm. Yep, great comments, thank you judges. Next print please. Okay, Gary, your first thoughts when you saw this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a dork. The f my first thought is it, it kind of looks like Space Invaders. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you want my second thought. Uh, second thought. Right. All right. So I, I, I think that you can, again, this is something you could walk by every day on your way to work. And yet... You know, and I and I and I and I do this. And we're such dorks, photographers. It's like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. And you never take a picture of it. And this creator did. And not only do they do that, but they turn this into a really nice little story with all of these little vignettes and magnifications. And so I think you t again the the genius to sort of see something worth looking at in the mundane. That was your third thought, because the second was was that you're a dork. You're right, okay. Yeah. Third thought. And but you're a dork for works. pointing that out. No, that was my fifth thought, because I was thinking about what you had to say. Next, uh, let's go to Cheryl. Cheryl, tell us a bit more if you break this image down, and you look like you're scared. Don't be scared. You're an amazing creator. It's so detailed. Mm -hmm. It's so detailed. This is just magical, taking something, like you said, ordinary, every day and peering into these different pockets of it. It's very well printed. Yeah, beautiful. Sanjay. How to take something that appears so mundane and turn it into such a deep philosophical narrative. Um, if you stand back and look at it, it looks like a circuit board and, and you realize it's a building and then the abstractions make it look like a circuit board. And this is where people live. So we are living in, you know, the, the interpretation here is that this binary electrical circuit, we are made to flow in a particular way in life. You know, it's, it's a very sobering concept, but 
it's the author's particular point of view on society, perhaps, or life. But it's such a simple concept and such a simple execution that has such a multi-layered and multifaceted, na uh, multifaceted, multifaceted narrative. That's what I was trying to say. Um, and yeah, it's, it, I mean, actually, yeah. I could look at this for longer and longer and yeah. just, you just extract more and more storyline from this as well. So yeah, yeah. beautifully done. I think the, the earthy tones and the subdued hues and the hues of this image also bring it down to being that urban um, sort of yeah. ban banal type of image. Yeah. But it's that introduction of those quirky little circles of magnification that draws us into there's more going on in each of these windows than you think, even though we just assume that there's it's, it's forgotten, it's out of sight. It's so a nod to the matrix yeah, with that kind a lot of green of tone. A lot yeah. of narrative. Yeah. And well put together, in the, as I say, the hues and the tones and the printing quality complements it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, lot of stuff. Okay, next print, please. First thought, Sanjay. Just, just your first thoughts. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to look at it. <laughs> okay, that'll do. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, I, I, I am lost for words. Um, how? And where? Um, I won't ask why because it's beautiful. Um, this okay, Kelly. Just want to look at it. Go and give us a bit more. Do you know, as artists, we, we try to construct things, to photograph them. And I think this is just such a, a, an incredible reminder of how beautiful the world and the landscape that we live in truly is. And the photographer has seen something from whatever perspective that they have shot this with, and they have shot it incredibly, but they've seen something that is natural. It is there, it's beauty, it's created for us to enjoy it's almost like the heartbeat of our earth and the way that you know all of those sort of little lines and and textures kind of lead you into the the image it breathes and the color palette throughout this has been you know handled and and brought out so beautifully in the in the retouching and then it's just been printed on this beautiful subtle paper that's given it such a velvety kind of soft touch to something that's really quite harsh mm. but it's soft it's beautiful uh, michelle final comments stop shaking your head you want me to wrap it up but there's uh, there's no way to really wrap it up i mean there's i'm so intrigued at the treatment you know first the vision to see this particular image to capture it and then the treatment in post to extract that detail and create that feeling that the there feels like uh, this braided um, part of the image and then on the left there I feel like there's almost an eye peering at me and um, I, it, there's just so much going on I, I want to know more about the process um, and that alone means it's so mysterious and so beautiful, I just want to know more, which then speaks to the beauty of it overall. It's beautiful. Okay, thank you. Next print, please. Okay, Cheryl, you, you, you all chuckled, but Cheryl chuckled before she even saw it. Yeah, this is so <laughs> sweet so and around. funny, and it's such a beautiful little story, and I just want to root for them for their future. And it's a spoon and a fork, like some forks and, a, and some spoons and, and a triangle and a ring, and that's it. But it has my heart. So for the, the maker to 
masterfully use light and shadow to create a beautiful story about people who don't even exist. That's so beautiful. Yeah, such a good job. So, so the impact there is just, just mesmerizingly beautiful. That's great. And that is, that's a legitimate response that a judge them. might have, just looking and saying, wow, that is just so, so appealing, so beautiful. And then the, the second stage, which Gary will come into now, they'll start to think analytically and break it down and go, okay, is it, is it, is it, where does it go? Let's go, Gary. Analytically, you missed the boat on entering the wedding creative category because this is the dopest ring shot I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair. So breaking it down, obviously <coughs> the anthropomorphization of <laughs> flatware is, is oh, I'm sorry, the what? anthropomorphization uh, of flatware. So <laughs> it, it's pretty interesting. And there's some really beautiful little details here. Um, so I don't know why the triangle works, but the triangle works because it, it just does. But you've got some really neat little details like the you, the fork the head fork of the the fork who's proposing is bent back almost like you know how like if you slick your hair back before you go in to ask a girl to dance you know and big clumsy hands and then the <laughs> little response you know i hope she says yes um but on a technical from a technical standpoint this is lit beautifully mm -hmm. think about how difficult it is to photograph reflective objects and so to maintain that tone is just absolutely brilliant and to somehow get expression here. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just at the right angle. We're low yeah. with the proposer to the proposee, you know, and it's, uh, it's just very, very charming, but, but incredibly technically proficient and incredibly imaginative. This is the definition of the category, imagination, skill, and technique. And uh, it's very, very sweet. And I can't wait to see what the kids look like. Oh, man, that's what I was... <laughs> Did I take your joke? Did I step on your joke? Sorry, dude. Michelle, last comment? Real, really quickly, um, like, I, as soon as it turned, I mean, it just makes you feel joyful. And then the first thing that came to mind is a little Beauty and the Beast when they say, um, be our guest. And so I thought, be my bride. Like, I felt like a little, like, like moment of, like, this whimsy, you know, the, the you know the utensils talking to each other like that moment in Beauty and the Beast when they sing about it and like it, in my mind it says "Be my bride," and so I just love it. Again, I want to point out to the audience here and, and at home that you know when you can get a judge and panel animated because they can find stories, but at the same time, as Gary um, pointed out, you know appreciate the technical excellence. Um, that's that's when you get images that, that that judges want to reward, you know. Um, it brings a whole another meaning to the word spooning. Uh, next print, please. Sanjay, first thoughts, please. My first thought was that this was a photograph from a distance of a building until you go up to it and you have a look at what's going on. And you just have this intricate blending of one thing into another. Um, you know, you have the interference between all of the the elements, the stairs, the material in the background, the the bridge, the bridge over the top, the, the people blurring into the balustrade. It's, um, it, again, it's it's it draws you into what the intent is in the in the narrative of of the image. What's what's going on in this person's mind? What are they feeling? What are they thinking? What's the message they're trying to convey? And it could be any number of things. It's, for me, my immediate reaction is this is a little essay on um, the reality and dream world or reality and fantasy or you know, a construct meeting 
something else. You know, it's it's a very conceptual image and it's beautifully executed. And when you look at when, when you look at this closely, it looks like it's hand painted as well. Mm. Cheryl, hand painting that makes me think of you. Yeah, the um, when no. don't look up there. Look look, look at the print. print. Look at the print, print later. Print the color there's color and detail in this print that would never show up on a screen. Um, it feels very heavy and blocked in, and yet there's this sort of staircase in the middle leading off to where. So it's, you know, so many emotions coming from this. Um, and yet the unknown of what the intention is, and it's a joy. Final comment, thanks. There's, yeah, the, the graphic nature of this and then the beautiful texture that's been introduced to this. We want to look for something to m for it to make sense. But the fact that this doesn't make sense just takes you on such an incredible journey. I love the placement of all of the leading lines and, and even that line at the bottom of the frame that's just smack bang in the middle of the two subjects. And then that just leads you up and into that path and then you, you're led on this wonderful journey throughout. There's a really great use of imagination technique and skill here to present something that is truly unique. With the people so small in terms of real estate in this image, to, to create that surreal effect with the urban structure, which is so large, helps us stay with the people, even though they're separated. Almost, yeah, we're looking at, yeah, we're drawing back down. Um, next print, please. First thoughts, Michelle? <laughs> That's why I've asked you. Again, this is, you've got to get up close to it. It, you, it doesn't, the screen doesn't do it justice. You've got to see the detail in the green speckled color that lines yeah. the different parts of this image that literally look like they're coming off the page. I, I'm I'm underqualified really to um, to talk about this kind of post-processing and how this happens because I have no idea how to create that kind of texture. I just know as a, an image maker and a lover of photography that it, uh, my jaw is dropped every time I, I see something like this and we've seen a couple but this in particular where it feels like paint strokes. It feels like tiny flecks of white paint have been added to that green. It feels like it's been touched by a paintbrush and I know that it hasn't on the paper. And so that fascinates me. I think it's incredible. Cheryl, maybe take this apart a little bit. Tell us a bit more about the actual construct. Yeah, the composition here. And again, a choice. Um, the photographer chose this section and um, that line going through and that it looks like a tree coming up the color the white that eggplant color and the little bit of orange and then those specks of green and my first thought was, like she said those specks of green they look like trees when you think of the size of a tree and how tiny it is and and how big this world is and how small we all are. Um, you know, so many things coming from, we don't even know what this is. And the color harmony is just, it, it's just beautiful. Cheryl, you made a comment earlier a couple of times today about decisions, it's coming down to a decision. And often with an image like this, which is an aerial image, it's the decision of where to place a frame on a, on a, a big well beneath you. And uh, right. one of the beauties is that you don't have a, you don't have the problem of horizon, and it's one of the differences in aerial photography to normal landscape photography. You're worried about does it look straight, so you can mm -hmm. orientate to a degree depending on the angle of 
of, of, that you're viewing, you can orientate. When you look at an image like this, it's, it is a decision. It's, a, it's sort of a, having the ability to see something that you know can have a double meaning. There's the, the meaning of what it is, and then there's this perceived meaning, which you can contribute to the way it's viewed by your orientation, and you're free to do that because you don't have a horizon. And that's yeah. the decision that somebody who creates this type of work would be making uh, to reflect those beauty of the world around us. So I don't yeah. know if that helps you, but that's what's going on. And we hear over and over again, <clears throat> oh, everyone has an iPhone now, everyone's a photographer, but can everyone see, see. this, see this and choose, make these choices and then print this? This is not to be seen on an iPhone. No. This is to be seen in a print on a piece of paper that has texture and weight and is a physical object. Yeah. 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 Do you know if, you, if one sees this as much as one feels it mm -hmm. when it presents itself? I don't, I don't know if it's a seeing or if it's a feeling that happens and then a capture. Yeah, no, it's deep, but yeah, I think you could say that all genres, genres, yeah. the people who do it really well, you'll find that they have a feeling, you know. So. And this is a photography competition. That's we right. know that this is a, photo a photograph in one way or another. Yep. This is not created with AI. Yeah. We know there's a story here. There's a person who had a camera who captured this image, yeah. and that story is important. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Thank you, judges. And that is the last print of this competition. <laughs> and it was, it, it was very apt that we kind of finished on a discussion about the ability to see. Because at the bottom of all of the images over the last two days, whether it's recognizing something in front of you in a moment in photojournalism, whether it's having a vision in your head and being able to see it and then go and create it, or whether it's out in the wild, you know, out in the world in nature, and again, recognizing something, then having the skill sets to execute that vision and create it and present it in a way that other people can not only appreciate the craftsmanship, but can get the feelings and the things that you saw when you took it or you imagined it. Uh, <clears throat> talking about vision and seeing, I was sitting here as we were looking at that last image, and one of the most beautiful images that I've seen all weekend was happening over there when Jerry and Melissa were sitting together, and they were quietly sitting there, and Melissa put her head on Jerry's shoulder. And it was a beautiful moment. I was watching, and I thought, they look like a couple of proud parents who are feeling like they've got to the end of it, the, ki the, the kids, they've let the child out, they, it's gone out and everybody's looked at the child and said, oh, you should be proud of that little one. I think without going into it so much, and we'll probably talk a bit more about this tomorrow night, but I really feel like we do as a community owe Jerry and Melissa a massive round of applause because, and if you're at home, you should be clapping as well because... So while they, while they gather themselves, I just want to say a couple more things and save some of that applause for tomorrow night because I am going to blow smoke up their butt tomorrow as well. But um, one of the, the driving factors behind the Icon Awards has been the idea of community. And we still have a, comp, a, a category to judge, so I don't want to take your mind off that. But I do want to say this while I have the microphone. Um, community is made up of the entrant, and we see the entrant in terms of the print or the image in terms of in-camera. It extends to the judges, it extends to the wonderful handlers and volunteers and tech crew and all of that that we have here. It extends to you in the audience. It extends to the world through the cameras that are viewing us and sending it out into YouTube land and to all those people sitting, whether you're drinking Guinness or coffee or lying in bed at 3 a.m. and your partner's kicking you in the guts and saying, turn the telly off. Whatever it is, you're out there and it's just going out into space. This community today and yesterday has reached out and touched all corners of the globe. And we sincerely hope that now that you're part of this community, you realise that you're part of a family and you stay here. You don't go anywhere. 
couple of things were said today. We've been, we've been sharing with you, our judges have tried to share with you what makes an award-winning image. And I'm a big believer that what you focus on grows. And one of the shifts and the tweaks and, the, and the, the, the flips that we wanted to bring to the competition space was not to necessarily, in a space like this, when we've got winners and award, uh, you know, finalists, we want to focus on all those things that make them great. Because if we focus on all the things that make them strong, strong and makes them winners in terms of being finalists, then you can go away and think about those things and guess what happens? They grow. You're able to implement that. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to invite you into a room and say, hey, now let's get down to the nitty gritty because now that you've got the vision and you believe and you know the things that work, we want to help you understand the pitfalls. We want to help you see the weaknesses and the flaws that you need to work on. We're going to help you build skills. So make sure that you get into those rooms and, and get a little bit of that as well. This room is about aspiration, it's about inspiration, it's about community. The critique room will be about education, it'll be about being informed, and they all come together and allow you to have something that's so important. Knowledge, knowledge is power. You've got passion, that's why you're here. You've got, you're inspired, you love the game. We want to give you the knowledge to have the power to create that. Jerry and Melissa, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> And I want to thank the incredible judges who, you may not understand this, but they, a lot of these people have judged for many years and there's been a certain style of judging. And we challenged our judges. We said, we want to shift that a little bit. We want to get into your headspace and we want to drag out all that good stuff and all of that stuff that we as judges, the bits we love to judge about. Two or three, two, three four days in the, you know, this week, we're going to go into the other stuff. But this was about celebrating excellence. And I want to thank you because in the last two days, we did that. Melissa. Well, don't go anywhere because we'll let you know what the next process is. But for now, I do want to get those finals judged because this is the end of the open creative category. Um, and it was sponsored by Capture One. It's a huge thank you to Capture One for being a part of this. The entire creative division I'm sure you guys will agree, it was just mind-blowing. And so we want to say thank you to Epson for sponsoring the entire category because we just saw some amazing images that I've never seen before in my life, these concepts that I would have never thought of before in my life, and they've come through. So we have one more category that the judges need to look at one more time. We're going to get them logged in. This is a really quick process, so don't go anywhere. Uh, really quick process, we'll get them back over into the gallery so that they can choose the winners for this category, and then we'll come back and let you know what happens next. So we'll be right back. that can do literally everything. Accuracy, precision, speed. I had the power of my Z9 in a smaller body. The new Z8 makes no compromises. Powerful. Magical. Perfect. Cinematic. If I had to sum up this camera in one word, what would it be? Effortless. The Z8 is absolutely essential for me as a wildlife photographer. It was easier to hold for long periods of time. It was easier to get to locations with. I love everything about how it renders skin tones. You can see every single eyelash. With filmmaking, it's fantastic. You can use it on a small gimbal and held. I can actually film 8K raw internally. This camera is packed with the technology of the Z9 and more. The Z8 totally revolutionized the way that I make my images. It's everything any filmmaker could ask for. The Nikon Z8 is the most phenomenal camera that Nikon has ever launched, and I think it's going to be a huge moment in Nikon's history.
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much. At this point, you guys know what to do. Go for it. <laughs> All right, we have our placings. That was a tough category, that one, wow. Good. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, well guys, that does it. That concludes the inaugural Icon International Photography Awards here at WPPI. Wow. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. We started with nearly 1,800 entries uh, last year that were entered into the digital competition. From that, we had 226 entries that were finalists this weekend. We had panels of judges sit and have a conversation about all 226 of those images. And tomorrow night, you'll find out which 22 people won first place, then which ones won second place, and which ones won third place, and then which ones won the grand award. So that will be the big surprise. After watching it all unfold today, we'll see it all happen. I need to just take a moment to thank you guys those of you that were in the room, some of you were here for both days, all days. Thank you so much for filling up this room and giving us your energy. Thank you for entering your work into this competition. Thank you to everyone that was on the live stream the entire time. We had people from all over the world watching and cheering everyone on in the comments. It was absolutely amazing to expand our community like that. And thank you to Nikon for just making that happen. It would never have been something that we could have done on our own. So it's just a huge thing. Tony mentioned it earlier, but we have to thank our judges because if you knew that they agreed to come here on terms that they wouldn't normally, that aren't normal for a competition, but they said, we wanna be there for you guys. And these guys came from all over the world to be a part of the Icon Awards because they saw the value of helping our community and getting that feedback out there. So thank you to this panel and all 26 judges that have just been coming in and rotating and sitting in these chairs when they have massively busy schedules everywhere. Thank you to our amazing judges. Thank you guys. I 
I said this earlier, um, but I need to say it again. Our team of volunteers, the biggest team we have ever had in competition history here at WPPI, 40, over 40 people gave up their time. They came to WPPI early, way earlier than they needed to. They have been the unsung heroes behind the scenes running around making everything happen because we had to be here because Jerry and I couldn't be everywhere they're still working and they're going to be working late tonight to make sure all of these last final prints are picture perfect in the gallery you have our team that is in here that have been on their feet for two days we've all been sitting down enjoying the entries they've been on their feet the entire time we have our camera operators, our tech crew. We have John Michael Cooper who has been just running around getting all of this footage behind the scenes, taking portraits of all of our judges. It has been absolutely humbling to see the community come together to make this happen because it couldn't have happened unless we all pitched in and that's exactly what we did. Tony, I mean, Tony has been such an, an integral part of this whole process. I've known Tony since I just was introduced to competitions and he was always who I wanted to be. Whenever he was a judge in that room, I wanted to be in that room because I wanted to hear him. You heard all the gems that he came out all for two days. You just want to soak all that in. We knew that he was perfect for this job. But what you don't know is the hours and hours that he has spent over the last year helping us go through this process, brainstorm this through, make sure it's a success. We went through every scenario. This didn't look like this when we started brainstorming it. We would brainstorm different, what would happen if we did this? And what would happen if we went down that path? And this is what we ended up with. And man, you guys, we should be really proud. This has been amazing. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, Jerry, I mean, we really wouldn't have been here without you. Jerry was just unwavering and saying, if we don't do this, who's going to do this? And let's wait. Let's wait to see if maybe there's going to be another solution. And I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's wait. <laughs> and um, he never wavered. He said, this is this. We can't let it go. We can't let it die. It's going to be hard. You never said it was going to be easy ever. You said it's going to be hard, it's going to be a lot of work, and it was, it sure was, but I couldn't visualize it. I couldn't imagine what he was describing because what he was describing was very different than what we were used to. And, but I know we've been married a long time, and I trust him with everything, with my life, with our business. He, he has never steered us wrong, and I knew that if Jerry could see it, I knew it could happen, and man, these ideas... I mean, all of this, having a beautiful print gallery now that the judges can look at the images properly, these interactive images that you're gonna see in the print show, on the trade show floor, these are Jerry's ideas that he just had, that sounded crazy. And I was telling somebody else today, sometimes I just hang on for the ride because man, this man is just amazing to just witness what he does. And I'm just so proud of you that it happened exactly like what you said. And so thank you. Thank you for never steering us wrong and for doing this. Thank you guys for indulging me and letting me uh, say that. And I'm just so proud of you, baby. <laughs> How do I, how do I follow that? Oh, man. I'll make it really quick so I can get it out before I start bawling, bawling, like ugly cry. <laughs> um, Tony, you're the best at what you do. That's all I'll say. You are the best at what you do. And when I think of an icon, I think of you. I can't finish that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> All right, guys, so here's what's gonna happen. We are actually going to close this room now. There is a little bit more work that we have to do. Uh, we have to pick the grand awards for the portrait division and for the creative division. How that works is the judges look at the first place winners of each of the categories in that division. So in the portrait division, there were eight categories. There were eight first place winners. The judges will now look at all eight first place winners and decide which image out of those eight best represents the entire portrait division. We'll do the same thing with the creative ca division. That has, can you imagine that one? Creative. Five first place winners and the judges will choose which one out of the five first place winners in that division represents the division best and that will win the grand award. The reason why we're now asking you to leave and we're gonna close the room is no other reason we've said we will be transparent this whole time and we wanna continue that except we don't wanna ruin the surprise for you guys. We don't want you to know who won first place in the categories. So not even the judges that are not gonna be involved in that process, we're gonna ask them to leave too because we'd like them to be surprised tomorrow. So enjoy the evening. Come back tomorrow night so you can see the grand finale of this entire process and see who won the grands. That's what we're gonna take care of right now. Thank you so much, you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you.